Well, in English, it's on the red button on Sky Plus, Freeview and Virgin Media. If you're on Sky Q or a TiVo box, use the audio selection option. Any problems, then get in touch with our viewers hotline. Dewch chi'n drive felly am y sioe.
The Welsh whisky is the only Welsh whisky that's produced in Wales. <laughs> and of course, no visit to the Aber Falls stall would be worthwhile unless you have a bit of a, a sample. Well, it's quite a sweet whisky. It's not smoky or Pete. The Pete's a fantastic ear. I'm going to have them at the so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a, too, a bit too early in the morning to be drinking whiskey. <laughs> yeah, that's the taste that Nia was looking for. The, there's a bit of a caramel taste to the whiskey as well. Fantastic. <laughs> well, there's quite a few ways of being uh, following us here at the show. Eight o'clock in the morning, we'll be covering the uh, competitions in the main ring on the website. There's also English commentary available there. And, of course, we're broadcasting live on S4C from nine in the morning until five o'clock in the afternoon. Right, let's go straight back to the main ring and rejoin Rachel. Thanks, Gareth. It looks like we've come to the end of the ROR class and I can see the winner there is Miss Victoria Bertarelli. Just up the road from myself, Imbrin Cethin, Imbrin Um I think this horse has an unpronounceable Scottish name, which I always get wrong. Um, he is called... Sorry, my catalogue has decided. Yeah, Miss Victoria Bertarelli's Anne Cathar, 13-year-old Geldin. And I can see in second place there is Miss Abby Dark and Darker Dazzle, Abby from uh, Swansea. And in third place, it looks like it's Miss Katie Llewellyn from Cowbridge with her own Polly Damus. So uh, top three there, all from the uh, old counties of Glamorgan. And you can see there, eagle-eyed viewers will spot that the first horse... Um, has actually only got one eye. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened to him with Vic, but she's nursed him back after having um, an accident and having his eye out, but it doesn't seem to have um, hindered him in any way. There are quite a few top horses that have one eye for whatever reason and go on to show jump. We both um, Event and, and I believe even race. So... Uh, I'm not quite sure of the form of Victoria's horse um, in his racing days, which is a bit of a shame, really. It would have been nice to give out um, some of their form. Obviously, some are very successful, others not so successful. And I think what's important with promoting the racehorse classes is that you promote all thoroughbreds that have been bred to race, as obviously they all require a um, new life after racing, or in fact, if they didn't um, end up being very successful, they do need another job to do. And the ROR has done a huge amount of work to promote these classes, and it's excellent to see them all out. Hello, Gareth. Jobs. So, um, it is quite amazing, really, and they're very rewarding. As you can see, Victoria's horse is shown as really, I'd class him as a lightweight hunter. You can see that he's got a plain brow band. The other pony horses in the class, uh, riding horses and hack types, if you can see that they've all got the coloured brow bands on, you can basically show your horse in the ROR classes as any type. And sorry, we've switched over. Hang on, we've gone back. Our cameraman is um, having a bit of fun with us today. So there we are, Victoria Bertarelli from Bridgend and Cathayar, winner of the Tattersalls Open ROR class at the Royal Welsh Show. And we're back later with some Welsh cobs or even possibly some hunters.
Welcome back to the, back to the uh, Royal Welsh Show Ground. And uh, as has been uh, mentioned previously, the future county this year is Clwyd. They were due to be the future county, of course, back in 2020. And in the background, uh, Harry Featherstone Ho is the president, and the ambassador, Laurie Lloyd Williams, is uh, speaking at the moment. Um, and uh, this, of course, is uh, the official opening of Chair the Council, Royal Welsh Show. Guests, fellow members, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the President, I stand Harry Featherstone Hall. and honoured as being chosen by my peers to be President of this august and highly respected organisation is something you never forget. It has truly been a joy and a privilege to have made so many new friends through my 45 years of stewarding at the Royal Welsh. Welsh agriculture finds itself, due to the ending of BPS, at a monumental crossroads. But challenges are something that this industry has always accepted and moved to embrace under the banner of change. I think there were great misgivings about Brexit, but with positivity and help by healthy commodity prices, we have proved that as an industry we can more than cope. The ghastly war in Ukraine and its devastating impact on the global market only heightens the importance of food security. Remember that as a country, our food self-sufficiency has plummeted from over 60% in the late 70s to about 40% today. And we face an ever-increasing population and with a decreasing land asset due to development. Grass production has never been more important, and we in Wales are proud to be perhaps the most efficient producers of grass in the UK. To meet our carbon reduction targets and increase the carbon sequestration of our farms, we need to critically look at how we manage them. Livestock farming should be seen as a solution, not a cause to environmental problems. Regenerative and sustainable farming may sound puzzling to some, but it must be the way forward with a new focus on how we improve soil fertility below the surface rather than relying on inputs being applied from above. From my own experience of Coeco, we have started the journey. We've reduced fertilizer inputs to a small amounts on reseeds, have not bought a bag of cake, uh, concentrated feed in six years, and our stocking rate has increased by 25%, and profits without the SFP have risen dramatically. Despite missing the golden opportunity to leave from the front by establishing a truly viable accredited carbon measurement system, it's now time for work. So with Candithas, Samitha Dalgar, and Hindal Kemri, Harry Featherstone Hall. To remind you that uh, this is the future future county president, Harry Featherstone Hall. Gymdeithas, a mae hitha hefyd wedi disgwyl yn hir iawn am y sioe. A mae hefyd y mae'r pwysigion, mae prif wneudog Cymru, Mark Drigford, Leslie Griffiths, gwneudog dros faterion gwledig a gogledd Cymru, y mae hefyd. A Sir Robert Buckland hefyd. Ac wrth gwrs, felon ni'n sôn am Nicola Davies Cadeirydd y Cyngor. Mae hi'n olynu dau lewis eleni, ac mae dau yma hefyd. Felly mae hon yn sioe o fynd a dod. A braint y llywydd ydy dewis unigolion i agor y sioe ac yn y man mi fyddwn ni'n gweld dau berson ifanc oherwydd mae o yn gredinol mae cefnogi pobl ifanc dyna ddyfodol cefn glad a mae heddiw yn fore mawr i Rhys Williams ac i Emyr Jones. ...as well as our unique Welsh culture and the production of all important good quality food. Every farm and every field on every farm is different. So the SFS must be open to wide application and not be over-prescriptive. Farmers need guidance and not nannying, to, so keep regulations to a minimum. With the average age of Welsh farmers being 59, I would urge those of a certain age who are daunted by the prospect of radical change 
to consider a, a joint venture. About seven years ago, I realized without the BFP, my business in the long term would cease to, so would cease to prosper. Well, we'll leave the opening ceremony for the time being. And uh, that's the view from the drone way above the showground here at uh, Chanel with. In the meantime, let's head back to the sheep ring and uh, we'll join Gerald and Emma. We're back in the for the section and this looks like the yearling yearling ram yes back with the uh, badger face tour of these excellent turn out in this class isn't there there's uh, uh, a number of exhibitors there oh and we can just see now the uh, judge has requested that they are to be let off their halters now oh, that's quite we haven't seen the pen before, have we, Gerald? That's a great idea. They haven't got them in the pen yet, no, neither. No. <laughs> <laughs> they are uh, a, a hill breed, a mountain breed of sheep, so they're quite quite lively. Oh, you can really see them now properly, can't yes, you? you can. uh, yes, out, of, out of the uh, hand of the exhibitor. And some uh, cracking rams there. The majority said, of these uh, yearling rams then will be probably offered for sale in the autumn in the Breed Society sales. Yes. So there's a lot of people, spectators, will be watching to see uh, which will win it. And obviously then uh, it'll be a big plug for the breeder to advertise in the sales that this particular ram won the Royal Welsh or was featured in the top four to five in the Royal Welsh. Yes, well, with the numbers uh, entered, it, you know, coming, coming in the top five, as you said, is... Uh, Quite an achievement. And uh, increasing in numbers and popularity over the last few years. Uh, we see a lot more of these badger face now, which is uh, not a bad thing at all. See a young man there, 43, 40, from Cambanedd. Aaron Hemmins, his name is, and I'm sure he's watching with keen interest. He's got a ram in the, in the five there. So, a lot of people in our part of the world, breeding chiviots and Welsh, have, have a lot of small flocks of these. Yeah, um, they've become very popular yes, they have. with um, small holders as well because of their distinctive looks. And uh, we see more and more uh, designated coloured sales of sheep now for these uh, breeds that... Uh, were considered rare breeds, but it's good to see them increasing in, in numbers then. Still, the, uh, this is quite a significant sized animal after all, then they're not, they're not small by any stretch of an imagination. So, Ooh, well. And the, the judge there, <laughs> that ram obviously not agreeing no, then, with what the judge yeah. said there, I'm not sure what he said, but uh, he certainly has something to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been, either, he's been either ex excluded from the class or he's been selected in the class. He doesn't know yet, so we'll have to wait to see what happens. He's certainly uh, making his presence felt, shall yeah. we say. He either agreed or disagreed. We're not quite sure. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, still making his uh, selections there. A lot of work with these shepherds here. Um, so their horns have been polished and, yes. and shone and... See a little bit of trimming on the back I there. Gonna, I was about to say it uh, with some of these native breeds. A lot of them leave them sort of more natural looking, but these certainly have had a bit of uh, pampering, haven't they? Yes, indeed. Um, some of these ram lambs or some of these lambs, when they're small, then their horns can be uh, growing and stay in a slightly wrong direction. Yeah. Maybe growing in under their eye or something like that. Yeah, there yeah. is a little bit of... Uh, Situation oh. then on on the rams. Oh yes, the it, ram is in top spot yeah, at the moment. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, and that's young man. Aaron Hemmings from from Vanir. Giving them another check over now. Doesn't seem to have quite made his uh, decision yet. So hopefully we'll be back to rejoin the winners uh, of this yearling. Badger face toward the Ram Lam uh, Yearling Ram class later on. 
Thank you very much, Gerald and Emma. And uh, this, of course, is uh, the opening ceremony. And this is Chris Williams, one of the uh, two young people that um, Harry Featherston Stowe, the president, has chosen to open the show officially. And as we can see, as part of the uh, opening ceremony party, we can see the First Minister, Mark Drakeford, as well as uh, Leslie Griffiths, who is the Minister for Rural Affairs and North Wales. And this is uh, quite an honour for Rhys being part of the opening ceremony. And as I said previously, the feature county is Clwyd. They were due to be the, fe the feature county back in 2020, but because of the uh, pandemic, of course, they've had to be uh, very patient. But at last, um, this year's show is uh, being opened officially. And Rhys is just mentioning that uh, this particular show has a very important part to play. And I never once imagined that, that, that I would be in this honoured position. So thank you very much to the Royal Welsh Show, and in particular to Harry, for the privilege of addressing you today at the beginning of what's going to be Chase a fabulous Williams, week. Chase Williams, Inner Thai. I worked in Ivan agriculture all my life. And, and I can honestly say that I've not felt so Agenir positive Jones. and excited to be involved in farming as I do now. The reason for this is that I think now is a sustainable way forward for farming in Wales. I believe strongly that there are three pillars to sustainable farming. And I'm going to give you a lot of money. Firstly, profits. Businesses need to be financially sustainable without support payments. We have an amazing climate here to grow grass in Wales. And I can see a profitable future for low-income and pasture-based systems producing high-quality food. We have a platform for the forum. I'm sure we're all agreeing that we've got a responsibility to look after the environment. But I believe that we can go one step further in this as farmers. And even enhance the environment from two generations of farming practices. Thirdly, and probably most importantly to people, for farming in Wales to be truly sustainable, the people within this sector need to thrive. We need to develop skills, give progression opportunities and reward success. A vibrant agriculture sector contributes to the well-being of individuals and rural communities and safeguards the Welsh language. This amazing show has a pivotal role to play in connecting people. And it's really amazing to have it back. Therefore, it gives me huge pleasure to announce that, that the 2022 Royal Welsh Show is officially open. Well, there we are. <clears throat> this year's Royal Welsh Show 2022 is now officially open. We'll now return to the main ring. And here's Rachel Thomas once again. So back with the Section C riddance in the main ring today. And we've got a result for you. So standing top is uh, Lily Burridge's Huey the Enforcer. And I believe from what we saw on our monitors earlier, the pony uh, stallion has moved up from uh, the second row to win there. So um, obviously he's given the judge a very nice ride. 
I'm afraid we can't catch numbers on any of our monitors at the minute, but we believe the second pony is 1309, and it's the Piers Morgan family's blind killer Ruby. So good class there of um, section C's, and that's Terry Klein's in third place. Mm. And sadly, our catalogue is not in alphabetical order this year. Try and find. Uh, there we are. One, three, three, eight. The third, <coughs> Lorraine Thomas's Menai the Vicar. That's the Dun Pony standing in third, and I'm afraid um, we're struggling to get numbers. So, a good class of uh, Section C's there. Lots of ponies in there that have qualified for Hoys in the past and ponies that have qualified for the RA. A few ponies in there that have qualified in the junior ranks as well, showing the uh, all-round ability of the seas, being able to be ridden by adults and of ponies for uh, children as well. So Hiwi the Enforcer. I uh, believe this pony's uh, from Ebu Vale. So, a pony bred and owned by uh, Welsh Connections winning the Section C class there. So, uh, we'll see him back in the championship later. So, we'll see if we get a lap of honour now so you can uh, have a look at some of the ponies actually going under saddle, as I'm aware that um, we only actually saw these at a walk. So, off now for their lap of honour. Yeah, so there's Huey, the enforcer. Or a stevlema and a prive gilch and an odi my howi the enforcer. See the dodir breed. So hopefully when we come back we'll get a little bit more of the actual class for you and try and get some catalogue numbers and names as the uh, camera angles aren't being very friendly at the minute to us. So apologies for that. Thanks very much, Rachel. Yes, we'll be back in the uh, main ring uh, quite soon. Uh, we haven't been in the take ring for a while, so let's head over there now and join Gerald and Emma. Here we go, we're in the pig ring, the Welsh pigs, and this is the gilt, born in 2022. So the maximum age of any of these can be seven months, Ems, isn't it? Yes, absolutely, yes. So, uh, as be before, we saw the sows out, so gilts now are uh, uh, a female pig that haven't been bred from. And uh, some of the youngsters very well grown gilt here for. Yes, they are uh, exceptionally well grown, aren't they? But yes. As I say, maximum age could be seven months, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But um, pigs do grow fast, and uh, the Welsh pig then is a. Uh, a good sized, even though it's a native breed, they are uh, a good size when they are m mature. So, <laughs> so we're having some more wacky races uh, with these young kilts as well, enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> so these, you say about seven months, I suppose in, in pig age, you are looking at the teenage years of, yeah, of, of okay, pigs. Yes, yeah, yeah, so they're, they're, coming, they're, yeah. they're probably looking for the young people's yeah. village up here in the Royal Welsh <laughs> Show. <laughs> so good entries in this class, nine entries in, in the catalogue, which is uh, good to see. Mm. And, uh, Unfortunately, the pig industry has suffered a little bit in recent times here now with uh, the cost of feed to feed these large units of pigs and, the, and uh, yes. there has been a few issues involving them because... Uh, yeah, sort of supply chain issues sort of slowing down the whole, whole um, industry. 
Um, but, but good to see them here representing the best of the British pig industry. Well, the die-hard pig breeders are still going to come and show, aren't they? And show exactly what they have bred over the years and years to produce an animal which is is a, a very valuable animal after all. And uh, Absolutely. And uh, young guilt there looking, <laughs> looking for some breakfast or something there. Hmm. Uh, probably looking for a bit of shade around the edge of the ring there. Yeah, just at this present moment, it isn't that too warm out there at the moment, so they're okay. So certainly wouldn't want these parading around at three, four o'clock no, at the peak of the, not. A peak no. of the hot day. So just like us, they can get sunburn too. And we have uh, eight oh two seven, Corina Taylor. On Emily Paddock there, the Paddocks winning earlier on today but I think there's a fair bit of work for the judge there uh, to do in this class with the uh, nine gilts uh, out there I don't think we're quite going to have time ma'am to see the result as I say the judge has got a lot of work yet he certainly these has. little animals are on the trot on the run around the ring so we just can't get an orderly fashion and line them up uh, <laughs> stay stand there to have a, an assessment it's all on the move and quite ironic we don't see much hands-on on the pig judging it's all no they've got to catch them first haven't they yeah and then he saw him all over and he wears me pig of the year. I don't know, is it this case of the handlers trying to keep the pigs moving or is it the handlers keeping up with the pigs? Which is it then? Yeah, I think it's yes. But unfortunately, we'll have to come back a little while later and see if the judge has arrived at a decision. Yes, and hope uh, come back and join us.
Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Show ground here at the Llanelwyd. And there is a fantastic bird's eye view of the main ring here at Llanelwyd. And uh, if you are thinking of visiting the show ground, well, there's plenty to see here. We're going to head straight to the cattle ring and we will join uh, Gerald and Emma. And Will. Sorry, Will. Didn't see you <laughs> creeping in there quietly. <laughs> you know me. He won't, yeah, he won't be quiet for long, Lee. <laughs> well, it looks like we're back with the, uh, with the Welsh Blacks. And, uh, this time looking at the cows. Not quite a strong class this time. Just see, interesting to see that a couple of the cows have got their calves along, but it is only the cow that is actually judged. The calf has no bearing on the on the result of the class, but just basically the cow will behave a little bit better, perhaps. But the calf is alongside, knowing that it is alongside. And it's um, it's a little bit difficult to to judge as well because some of these cows may well be in calf as well. So, uh, of course, they're in a different stage of their lives and lactations. It's uh, it's uh, you've got to take it all into consideration, I guess. Yes, quite right. Might be a little bit of method in the madness, mind. If the calf is a good calf, maybe we'll see it in years to come. So just a little bit of practice. I mean, led round the ring in front of the crowds and uh, whatever. But uh, still, as we say, it's only the cow that Mr. Williams here will be adjudicating over. So these will be um, fairly mature cows uh, born before the 31st December 2017. Yeah, well, I'm going to practice on the ice. I'm practice on the ice. I'm going to 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 practice on the ice. i in the Rawal show is it's quite an achievement to be fair and the maternal instinct can uh, can quite easily kick in isn't it looking after the looking after their offspring yes indeed they will Gerald so uh, yeah you're right it takes a bit of time to get them uh, accustomed to to the show ring and actually then I don't want to be disrespectful to the herd but uh, of Welsh Blacks but Welsh Blacks temperament is not renowned for being because they are living on the hills on their own aren't they so they don't see crowds of people and uh, want somebody wanting to put their hands on them on a, on a regular basis do they well I guess the instinct is again to protect the calf from you know wild animals from foxes and, Quite right. and uh, other animals you might find on the hillside when the, when the calf is is young and vulnerable. It's nature at its very best, I guess. So, uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of doing to get these animals prepared for the show, but also, yeah, in the right temperament and the right mood for the show as well. That's quite right. Greg Goch, Kane Lees. Yeah. 3009. From Noakes Court Livestock Limited. Five-year-old cow. And of course, uh, plenty of strength through the front of that cow. Yes, indeed, a very deep-bodied cow, to be fair. Um, uh, and you mentioned it with the bulls, Gerald, making sure that they they are walking a straight line and uh, they, that they got the locomotion right. It's an important part, and maybe even more so with the females. The uh, Mr. Williams looks as if he's. He's pulling them in. And of course, the ability to rear the calf is what it's all about, and uh, we talked about maternal instinct, but uh, also being able to convert those upland grassland into milk as well. That'll be very important. You won't grow a good calf without a, a good drop of milk underneath her. That's quite right, and... Uh 
Arthur. So many more little interesting factors for Mr. Williams to adjudicate over, isn't it? Uh, perhaps if uh, every cow had a calf at foot, perhaps you could see the condition of the calf, and then you'd, it would actually tell you without looking how much milk she is producing. Then, but uh, it's a wow. so anyway. He's made his result, made his choice. Sorry, and the result is well, it's Taylor Jenkins with Karan Molly the 18th that uh, takes this particular class so we'll see her we'll again come back later, later and on. see her featured against the bull that we've seen earlier right Gerald I think you're going to stay with us here because we first visit to the sheep shearing uh, shed and I think this is the YFC second heat yes it is and uh, you see uh, members of the representing their clubs right throughout Wales. And, uh, obviously, we're not up in the uh, top end of the shearing as we should feature later on in the show in the open shears. These are young men that are progressing up the ladder of becoming and hopefully becoming very, very good shearers. And you see them shearing lambs, which is customary for competitions in their state. We do have... Uh, a competition later on for full wool sheep which are mature ewes that are in their full wool but as we are progressing on into the middle of July there ain't too many full wool sheep left to be shown in the country at the moment the aim of the young man here is to keep that right hand tooth on the skin and creating no second cuts and we see the judge there with an electronic instrument in his hand which will be recording second cuts which a second cut is if he cuts the fleece in half therefore it devalues the staple of the wool so uh, the judge will be there awarding a penalty point against him if he does deem that he has cut that wool in half obviously these sheep will be judged out the back as well on their finished condition and if there's lines and lumps of wool and that left on obviously there'll be points deducted as well so, so it's an interesting competition so, so, so Gerald I've been sat in front of the shearing stands and watched the shearing it's an exciting sport to watch uh, it's full of passion and speed but of course the judging how does the marking work in terms of uh, speed versus uh, quality and style I guess well, to be honest with you, I'm not too sure on the percentage of points and that that is deducted for speed but um, it is then as I alluded to then taking second cuts and cutting the staple of wool in half which actually devalues the wool would be one of the most significant penalties to uh, to face because once that wool is cut in half well, you can't stick it back together and make the product of whatever is required like but um, yeah cleanliness in young farmers and as we've all been through that then you are taught to shear correctly and and uh, tidily first and as I say keep the bottom tooth on the skin so you do not do not cut the wool in half but obviously as you progress and you get better and you get faster and you get more accustomed to doing the job and that also there is a serious penalty if you actually cut the skin of the sheep which which will happen and can happen and uh, so there is there is a grid actually then available then to show you and how the actual marks are deducted on that but it's not all down to speed yes it crowd gets these young men excited and whatever and they all want to finish first but finishing first just doesn't necessarily mean that you've won the competition so half a carpet is no good at all is it it's None a full carpet is what you need right, isn't it yeah, quite right the young man there is taking his time and has done an exceptional nice job but lamb looks very well shown and clean and this is in a series of heats as all competitions will be throughout the show and they will go forward uh, from this heat later on to be featured in the final right from the sheep shearing shed we return to the uh, pig ring and uh, I think uh, the judge here has made uh, a decision it looks very much like it and uh, he's been following him round the ring for the la for quite a significant amount of time he's going to catch up with one of them now em. <laughs> absolutely well, it looks as if he has caught up with the first prize he now has a second prize and, uh, in his hand absolutely 
Pan- hopefully uh, we will see who has. Emily Pandek took the second place there. I'm not sure if it was Tavy Evans who took uh, uh, the first place. Uh, we should get confirmation uh, in a uh, in a second. Uh, 8.035, they're taking uh, the uh, third place. Again, Troy de Rijer. Uh, Farms. And we have father and son exhibiting there together. And I think father took first and son took uh, third. There we go, indeed. Troy de Rijer. Uh, farms taking first in this guilt class, Welsh pigs. Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Showground and we'll head straight for the cattle ring and rejoin Gerald and Will. And yes, we are now into the continental cattle for the first time, Will, and yeah, the limousines. Limousine cattle have featured very strongly in the success here at the Royal Welsh. The major shows. We have the alluded to before. 
Very nice. Cow. Calf is here just for company. And is not judged at all. It's just the cow that will be assessed. Yep. Cow and milk uh, with calf and foot, born on or before the 31st December 2018. I think it says the 1st of January 2019 on the on the screen. But uh, we'll we'll give a day either side. Uh, Gerald, don't we? Yes, this uh, will be no problem. problem at all. And again, the, the limousine will be. The, lim the limousine will be one of the strongest breeds represented in, in not only the beef industry in the UK but in, in the showing circuits as well, I guess. A bowed in an Aberystwyth and that. Yeah, joy on that side. Yeah, we're merch fair, but of course, in Cadw Gwerth y Glymazan, sy'n chi'n ynddi chi, dyr a hanes y fiches i fi? Wes, mae fiches da ni o tia cant o warthau. Our uh, judge for this particular competition, Mr Jonathan Watson, down from Berwick on Tweed. Gath yn i lot o gwerth y cynt a ni o... A Northumberland farmer, farming approximately 600 acres, with his wife Jane and two teenage sons. Not only uh, into his limousines, but uh, Tweeddale Charlies and British Blues, of course, uh, are well recognised as well. So. Does look as if though we hasn't got too much work in this particular class because I believe there is only the single entry in this class. So. Uh, See the, a lot of uh, livestock producers have feared perhaps the, the climatic conditions in terms of the weather and that, so perhaps some of the exhibitors have declined because they think too much of their livestock to come here and put them under stress in this extreme heat that we are witnessing. But still he has to go through the process and examine the animal because obviously she win this particular section she will come through to represent the breed in against the male counterparts and younger versions later on well let, let me let me just correct myself firstly uh, Gerald uh, the, uh, the 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 guys the guys with the with the graphics and the screen are spot on and I was I was wrong I was on the wrong page in my catalog here for a second uh, <coughs> my mother always told me admit it when you're wrong and I was I was very wrong there so this is of course the cow with milk with Cafford foot on or after the 1st January 2019 and interestingly there were two there were two animals entered in this particular class both from the same uh, exhibitor, so uh, maybe he's already made a little decision at home over which one he would uh, would 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 like to, to to bring along. And Christopher White with Frogmore Petunia takes the red rosette. Thank you, Gerald. And uh, Will, well, Nia is back uh, in the food hall. <laughs> and uh, with a company from uh, the Aberystwyth area called um, Gwella. And uh, they've been visiting the show for the last three years. And uh, the reason for coming back every year is uh, so that the uh, general public who come here to visit can see that the produce that they have on offer. And uh, they use uh, lamb and, uh, and beef from the farm to make... Uh, cured meat. They started off with the cured meat, that's all they had initially when they uh, established the company back in uh, 2016 but now of course uh, they've expanded and you can see some of the produce they have on offer uh, on screen at the moment. It's a family run business uh, by Lori who's uh, talking to uh, Nia at the moment and Bryn her husband and uh, Started as a family business initially, just with Lori and Bryn, but uh, by now, Gwen Llian, the daughter, is also part of that company. And uh, the reason behind the Gwella is the name of the three children, Gwen Llian, Llian and Anna. <laughs> And he is just asking what role does each member of the family have in the company? 
Now, Bryn chooses the recipe of what they're going to to make, and uh, Lori is the one who uh, makes the produce. And Bryn's quite uh, good at choosing the different uh, types of spices that are included in the produce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A mutton cured meat there as well. So as well as the cured meats, there's a, a Italian beef meatball, some burger bites, lamb nuggets. Lamb tikka bites and kurma bites. And of course, as well as selling the produce individually, they do have like a platter box that they also sell with a selection of all the different uh, produce on display. There's turnovers, pies, cheese and bacon turnovers. Now then, that's an interesting question. Ian just asking if the if the lamb bacon tastes better than the pork meat, and yes, it does, according to Bryn. And uh, obviously, Nia's going to try the lamb bacon turnover, I believe. According to Bryn, it tastes much better. But it, it's a lamb turnover with bacon and cheese, and there's something in it that stops you from snoring. Naturally. Turnover. Turnover. Bryn should be on the stage. Whatever joke, while enough. And from that second rate joke. Yeah. I'll thank you all very much for uh, letting us uh, <laughs> film on your store at the food hall. Right, let's get back to the sheep ring. Here's uh, Gerald and Emma once again. Yes, we're back in the Yerlin Ram class, which we featured earlier on. And standing on the top there at the moment, the young man from Bryn Bethan, from Vanir, Aaron Hemmings. And there you go, he has taken the first prize. Yes, very well done to him. And I can recognise 3-4-3 three, three there in third position is the guy from our part of the world in David Harris, Turnbron. To see being presented there with the uh, shepherd's crook, and is that looks like that's part of the prize that he's won? Well, it looks like it indeed, yes. Um, and you can see the uh, actual badges yes. stuck to the stick there, so maybe it's a different to an a annual, cup. An annual trophy, yes. maybe? Yes, rather than a cup. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, I like that idea, I have to yes, say. Do, yes. uh, yeah, very, very good. So, as we featured earlier on, we've seen the we've seen the uh, senior ram go forward, and uh, we've seen the junior ram, or as yes, yearling ram. Yearling ram. So, uh, hopefully, uh, he will compete against. And and the judge, I noticed there, he's stuck to a type. This ram now, uh, with that Kemp or beard or lion's mane, then very similar to the older ram we saw earlier on. Uh, he said he'd got a type in mind, I would say. You would think so, yes. And there we go. I was just asking about the crook. <laughs> should have made it out of a black horn, though, shouldn't they? <laughs> they should have shelled to match. <laughs> to fit, match fit into the sheep, yes. <laughs> Ah, oh, there we go. Main is just having a word there with the uh, judge. Just saying that uh, they were very close, very, five very good lands 
uh, rams coming to the top and uh, saying that the quality of the class was very high. Went for a smart ram who was uh, good in the shoulder. Says that he show himself very well. Well, there we go. Just saying that um, the reason that he saw that he loosed him out in the pen earlier on was that a, a, a hill sheep shouldn't be in a collar. It, it should be loose. And that uh, for him, then, it was easier to, to be able to see him naturally and see which one caught his eye. And as he said, it took his eye and uh, caught his eye and it was hard then uh, to not put him on, uh, on the top. It's very good to uh, hear a judge explain himself so well and what he was looking for and uh, explaining his process in judging this uh, competition. And again, as we alluded to earlier, Gerald saying that you have to have a type and he's trying to stick to a type. So hopefully we'll see more of the uh, Badger Face Sheep during the show. Thank you very much, Gerald and Emma. Yes, as uh, Emma was saying, it's interesting to hear the uh, the judge explain the procedure and uh, how he goes about choosing a winner. Now then, let's get back straight to the uh, the main ring and rejoin Rachel. Thanks, Gara. So we've come to the other side of the main ring now and we're in the hunter section and we've got the first class of hunters, which is the small hunter. Uh, a really good entry here, 15, which is probably the biggest small class I've seen at any show I've been to so far this year, and that includes Horse of the Year qualifiers. Sadly, the Royal Welsh no longer have Horse of the Year show qualifiers for the hunters, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but several shows that ran last year took the qualifiers for Hoys. And obviously the shows in Wales that um, didn't run uh, doesn't seem to have got them back, which is uh, very sad, in my opinion, that we don't have qualifiers for platted horses here in Wales. So anyway... Nevertheless, a good entry of 15. Now, we've had a bit of a jig around with judges here, and we're trying to work out who they all are, but this, to me, is most definitely Mr. Jody Soul. Um, judging ride, Jody Soul was actually down to do the retraining of racehorses, but um, Richard Telford stepped in, who's judging the ridden Ds in the other side of the main ring, so I think... Probably um, we've had a few issues with COVID and injuries to judges. So uh, Jody's now come and stepped in to do the ride. And confirmation, the lady in front of us is Janetta Lafour. Uh, Janetta has had lots of hunters in the past and is also editor of the show in journal. So class of smalls there for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, they should be of a middleweight type ideally you're looking for a scale down middleweight horse but they are to be over 14 2 and under 15 2 in old money or 148 and up to 158 centimeters in the uh, in new terminology well it's not that new but it is <laughs> i still speak in old money i think smalls are the hardest type of hunter to find because they vary so much in type um, there were lots of thoroughbred horses years ago they would do various jobs show race um, and obviously then they were crossed with Irish draft mares and for me a draft thoroughbred cross is a lovely example of a small hunter obviously sometimes the smalls with a lot of draft can look more like cobs. Uh, some get shown as smalls to start and later on mature and possibly get hogged and then go in cob classes. Um, so it's not an easy horse to find. Uh, now there's a lot of foreign influence, warm blood influence with the smalls. 
good movers. Possibly their limbs, for me, would be a bit more sort of rounded compared to the old-fashioned horses with flat bone of yesteryear. But obviously, ideally, it's nice to try and find a miniature middleweight for your smalls, but they do vary in type and a very difficult animal to breed and difficult animal to go out and buy. Um, a popular animal and hopefully we're nearly at the end of that class so we'll come back later on and give you a result. Welcome back to the Royal Welsh Showground and we're going straight to the cattle ring and rejoin Gerald and Will. We're back in the limousine section. Maiden Heifer. Jonathan Watson. According to the catalogue, there should be 
seven entries in here. But uh, can't quite see seven at the moment in the ring wheel. Uh, maybe not, but uh, nevertheless, our judge, Mr. Jonathan Watson, down from Northumberland for the day, will have his work cut out. I don't know if you know Gerald, but he's uh, he's actually the vice chairman of the British Limousine Society this year. So uh, well done him, and I'm sure then he's got several judging jobs on his hands probably. A lot of societies tend to draw to the officials or whatever. Now the interesting thing about uh, our judge is that he's had a male champion here at the Royal Welsh Show in 2011, but not a limousine one. It was actually a British blue, so... Uh, oh, yeah. But he does say it's uh, his favourite show to come down to. And uh, he has, of course, Judge Limousin at Stirling, Carlisle, and uh, has been over the Irish Sea at Ross Cray, the Balmoral Show in uh, Northern Ireland, and the Tullamore Show, south of the border. She, Mr. Paul Dawes, owned Heifer there with in display. Paul Dawes from down there in Hereford. Quite interesting. And uh, will then we see some Thor Atkinson Steel Fabrications Limited a Heifer. We see then Stanbury Farm Partnership owning one of these heifers then I uh, think so there's businesses as well as just farming individual farmers are taken to the show ring with the cattle well cattle genetics is big business these days and uh, if you want to own the very best you need a few quid behind you and uh, money from outside of agriculture has been known to to float into the pedigree cat cattle sales from time to time so I guess it, we shouldn't be surprised that some of these animals are, are owned by uh, by companies, limited companies, but no doubt uh, owned by people who are cattle enthusiasts, and I guess that's the most important part of uh, owning and showing cattle of this calibre. I guess more than some of the other breeds, the limousine well known for its uh, confirmation, so the judge will be looking to ensure that the muscling is in the right place on, on these animals, and he'll be spending quite a bit of time looking at the back end of the animal, that's, where, that's the money-making end. Well, actually, these heifers then are born between August 2019 and June 2020. So, um, then what's that then? That they'd be 10 months, 10 months difference of age, and quite a significant difference in size of some of these animals as well, isn't there? And I guess if you're breeding one for the shows, you try and get one who's a little bit older. You try and uh, could you? Could you Manipulate the breeding so that they drop at the right time to. Well, uh, maturing is, uh, and uh, most of these continents, well, as is in all cattle, then they will mature at a certain stage. Perhaps some some uh, breeds will mature faster than others, but uh, obviously it's to catch the eye. You want an animal that is at its best, then, isn't it? And uh, with quite a, a ten month variation in in age in this particular class, then you could see quite a significant difference in, in how mature they are. Uh, 3127 there. Pabo Reitlove. This heifer then, see, would be born on the 12th of April 2020, so it would be close to one of the youngest animals on display. And would the judge be aware of that? I mean, would he no, be asking? No, he that? has to judge. No, he has to judge what is in front of him. Um, um, obviously, he would, in his own mind, think, well, this animal has done a little bit better, or is just a little bit more older, perhaps, than than um, than some of its counterparts. But uh, no, he wouldn't have no information to his. Unless he's got a very good memory and he'd been outside the ring studying it all before. But I don't think that would have any bearing. As we see the heifer there just in the right of shot there looks quite strong and a lot bigger than the actual animal which he's inspecting at the moment. And that's 
She was actually born and in August of 219, so there would be eight months difference between them two particular animals. So the isn't just a little bit weary of the judge. So we'll have to come back later, Will, and see what happens. I look forward to that. Yeah, we will indeed be returning to the cattle ring and coming up later on uh, during our broadcast here from the Royal Welsh. Some wool handling competitions will also be returning to the sheep ring as well. Well, things are getting busy here at the uh, showground at Llanelwedd. It's a fabulous view. The showground in all its glory. And as has been said many times before, it's good to be back here. Right, let's return now to the pig ring and we'll join Emma and Gerald. Thank you very much. Yes, we're uh, rejoining the uh, Welsh pig competitions and hopefully we'll get to join class 1262, which I do believe is the uh, championship rosette for the best female exhibit. So there we go. We saw a couple of these classes earlier, Gerald. We saw the senior sow and the uh, 2022 born gilt. Yes, quite a significant difference in size in these particular animals, but the quality is outstanding and that is what our judge will be judging more than size because obviously he re realise, and as you alluded to before, maybe this cell that's just crossed the screen in front of us would be quite heavy in pig, I would suggest. Uh, and then obviously the maiden guilt yes, hasn't and been in. Well, we, we're being joined as well in this championship by the winner of um, the guilt born on or between the 1st of July 2021 and 31st of December 2021. So we didn't follow that class no. earlier on today. So there's three different winners out in this female championship today. And uh, that's, that's the youngster we saw earlier on uh, from Troy de Rio Farms then. Very sweet looking gilt. Uh, there we go, the judge there then. He's got his cards ready, so it looks like. And he's gone, he's gone for the gilt that we didn't see earlier on. So that's from 8025 JNS Harmer. The middleweight pig of them all, then. So uh, <laughs> yes, if in doubt, go down the middle. Sound as a bone. Sound as a bone. But a lovely, a lovely uh, well, gilt there. Three very there. good animals. Good representation for the Welsh breed, aren't they? Absolutely, to be fair. and good to see them all there yeah, now yeah, in a yeah. row together. Yes, indeed, yeah. And uh, tremendous size on that sow as well. You really can appreciate her yes. size then when she's out with the. Uh, yes, indeed, fair dues. With the others, and there we go. Uh, uh, the off farm Jean the second, then the uh, winning guilt taking the female championship of the Welsh pigs. And it's uh, one quick hop, skip, and a jump from the uh, pig ring to the cattle ring. And we return back to the limousine heifer. And uh, our judge has been deliberating while we've been away. It'll be interesting to see. He started his lineup. And again, as I alluded to before, Will kept us guessing because several judges do start at one end and then finish. There is no hard and fast rule in the way that you select your animals. Well, a good judge, I guess, uh, enjoys a little bit of theatre as well, doesn't he? And uh, <laughs> likes to keep the crowd guessing yes, and uh, I guess the viewers back at home as well. So uh, don't give all your cards away, I guess, isn't it? At this moment, then, I would say, then standing there at the top is number 3128, which is owned by Mr Paul Dawes in the Dinmore Perfection. We will see if... The judge has decided that is the way to be, but he's having a, another uh, inspection. That's a difficult decision to make there when yeah, you look yeah, at the, yeah. the rear ends of those heifers. Are, uh, I would hazard to say, then, Will, that the heifer in second place there looked as if she could well be in calf to me. 
Yeah. So, but there is no stipulation that they are in Cabo or not. But most of the Tevyant, you know. Just look uh, a little bit stronger. Yeah, the judges keeping us waiting again. Uh, interestingly, the way they're using the judging sticks there to... Uh, oh, it's a common influence, common influence, I think, is, uh, is that's what they call in the professional world. Or a, or a persuader. A persuader. <laughs> but it's, ju it's just the way they use them to gently yes. get the animal to move its feet into That's the right place right, to, yeah. to show itself and, uh, up. But it looks like he's made a decision. It is then uh, it is Dinmore. Dinmore Perfection has come out on top. And we will see her again, obviously, in the in the championship of the limousines. <laughs> Incredible to think that that animal, I guess... Wasn't born the last time there was a show, was it? That's quite right. As I alluded to earlier on, there's a lot of animals are being exhibited here for the first time against one another, aren't they? So, uh, anyway, we hopefully we'll see her later on in the championship of the limousine cattle. Anyway, we return to the sheep ring and a different breed again. And uh, it's the Will Welsh Hill speckle face sheep, uh, a breed that is mostly kept up there in. Well, let's say North Mid Wales and up in San Edloy's country uh, up there yes. is probably a, a stronghold of this particular part of a breed of sheep, sorry. And an excellent entry in this class then with the uh, catalogue entries down as nine in the class of ram lambs. And the numbers of these uh, hill speckle then increasing over the years we've been doing this job then, Gerald, we're seeing them more and more. And they've done well in like the Taylor Lloyd competition and... and uh, uh, the group competitions and it's a, it's a shame we can't see their face we can see a couple on the left hand side there now uh, they've got the uh, white face with the black markings <laughs> have they got black eyes with a white face or white face with black eyes <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not sure but some uh, lively entrance in this class once again yeah. I, th I think all, I can say all all the animals are, are as happy to be back at the Royal Welsh <laughs> yeah, as the comment. as the people are. Yeah, fair comment. Well grown lamb, oh, ram lamb. very here. well grown lambs. To be fair, quite yes. Quite a quite a powerful lamb. Yes, indeed. Because these hill animals traditionally then wouldn't be born as early as some of the low lamb, lowland. No, uh, I would breeds. Hazard, I would hazard a guess to say that a lot of these lambs are not born till April. Yes. So they've come on very well, haven't they? Maybe the calendars are a little bit di different. Oh, no, they, have, they haven't missed many breakfasts. <laughs> no, that's no, what's no. wrong. Like they, so at yeah. the, in the shot there, we can see exhibitor 4760, which is Thomas John Roberts. I think, I think that Ram Lam knows how to work the camera as well. Yeah, he's he's knowing so, yeah, which yeah. Uh, camera to uh, look for. He's looking for a job, I reckon. <laughs> but quite a, a, a distinctive animal, quite eye-catching with the, with yeah, the black so very, uh, Yeah, they must be, I'm not too sure on the rules within this particular breed, but um, they are all a very, very similar. They are very, very similar in the markings. Yes. Quite enough of... Uh, Quite enough of years on that particular ram lamb, but see, we've got to remember one thing now, right? We've got to put all these tags in these years now, that's, so that's we need it, yes. we need years <laughs> of a significant size to put all these tags in to follow the European rules. But we're yes. not in Europe anymore. No. But never mind. No. Yeah. But they are quite them. strong year animal for a hill breed. For a hill breed, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. They all seem to be quite good bone on these animals as well, mine. Yes. Um, the uh, judge there, Mr. John Geraint Jones. From Caer Sous, Powys. It's a slight bit of camp, as we alluded to in the badges there, down in the brisket of a lot of these lambs, look, uh, yes, coming through, so it's, it's a hardiness within the breed. Yeah. But they are predominantly clean wool, as you would say. There's a big lamb, that is. That's a very, very powerful lamb there at the top isn't, isn't at the moment. It looks as if the judge has made his decision. I, I, the, the, there's something about that ram in first place. He's just got a little bit of that... A little bit more presence. X factor, isn't he? A little he? bit more little presence bit, he's got. A little bit more look at me, isn't yes, he? Yes, his strength is probably yes. has carried him through, yes. yes. 
than shy, but They're quite good confirmation, to be fair, on them on this particular um, breed. It does, yes. Yeah, it does look very good. good. And, and well turned out yeah. as well. His years are at quarter past and quarter two. Definitely. It's a feature in all different breeds of hill breeds, when Chiviots and whatever, the years are pointing north, and in a lot of yeah. this particular breed now, you would say, where are they pointing? South and uh, south and at quarter past quarter door, east and west, isn't it? <laughs> yes. No, it's it's a different character that uh, all different breeds can Absolutely. can thrive in the area where they were bred, and yes. uh, obviously they still be continued to be farmed in their particular areas because they survive under the conditions yeah. and the type of habitat which they live within. It's a different breed for a different job, isn't it? That's quite right, quite right. Oh, and there we go, indeed. Go. He hasn't changed his mind. 4760 is the winner. Thomas John Roberts. And it's uh, ex- exhibitor bread. I can't quite see who was in uh, second place. Yeah. I mean, you're just having a word with the, uh, with the winner there. Oh, they're not missing boys. Yeah, overhang. Beth, your problem. Do you see the board in the ski or the or the Oh, he's just saying he's not showing today because he went out last night. <laughs> so, so I, yes. I, be, I bet he wish he'd, he'd played the effort now. <laughs> obviously, he will feature again in the class later yes. on, so maybe he'll recover by then, perhaps, yeah? Uh, yes, a little bit more time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they've been doing very well at the show, taking many prizes already. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll see them again during I the hope show. So later on in the show, yeah. Well, if you want to keep up to date with all the results from the show, all the competitions, then uh, you can do so by uh, downloading the app from Google Play or Apple Store and it's all free of charge and for the rest of the information then you can visit our website s4c.com slash show right then a quick visit to the main ring once again and we'll return to Rachel Thomas so it looks like um, we have got a result in the first hunter class which is the small Looks like there's been a little bit of changing around there. Mackenzie Jones. And Ellis the winner Silver is Crest. Mackenzie Jones, Ellis Town Silvercrest, uh, ridden by yep. Carl Owen from Wedding. North Wales. Carnsdale Huntsman. Agon. By Castle Crest out of Ellis Town Nell. I'm guessing there's an Irish draft breeding in there. And second there, Catherine Roberts with her own Carnsdale Huntsman. Uh, I believe Catherine's quite local to the showground as well. And then in third place, we've got Victoria Bertarelli from Bryn Kethin in Bridgend with uh, Meadie Rebel. Again, another one with some Irish draft breeding. So there we are, first hunter class of the day. The small hunter winner, Mackenzie Jones's Ellis Town Silver Crest.
Kreuz on Orlichy. Well, Welcome back on this, the opening day of uh, the Royal Welsh Show. And it's a fabulous day here at uh, Chanel with, as you can see. And things are getting very busy on the showground. And uh, things are very busy as well in the sheep shearing shed. Joined by Gerald and... Uh, not only are they shearing, but there's there's a wool handling uh, competition going on as well. Yes, and as I alluded to before, there is a few full wool sheep still left in the country to be shorn, and this is where we see the uh, what they call in New Zealand and is a rousy uh, they are called, and they are the wool handling people that. Uh, keep the board clean and sort the wool prior to being put on the table and then which is then put into the press so we see the handler there cleaning all the little bits up uh, of second cuts and a little bit of loose and maybe a little bit of muck on the back of the fleece or dirt or foreign bodies of any form of fashion is all cleaned off we see there the handler then uh, sorry the shearer then taking the belly wool off and when uh, we'll see the uh, handler throw the fleece onto the, what they call the table and it'll skirt around the edge of the fleece and take as I say any foreign bodies dirt or whatever because all they want to put into the actual wool bales uh, into the press under the wool bale is the main part of the fleece so we see the handler there taking the uh, small bits of like I say second cuts or whatever and put into perspective buckets and as as is in the meat trade there is nothing wasted uh, it will be used and utilized in some form or fashion but it will not be the most expensive it's the it's the long staple of the fleece is the required pro product and as we see the handlers then therefore wrapping the fleece up they used to as of years ago make a, a band out of the neck and tie the fleece in into a bow which they do now but they do not twist the uh, wool because obviously then when the uh, fleece is is uh, taken out and uh, assessed by the grader in the wool factories then therefore um, it's no hard work to un manage the fleece to see what there is and you see the handler there just collect a little bit and put it back around and put it back underneath which it completes the fleece and the judges then will assess on their work ethic and how clean they keep the board and how clean they keep their workplace what they're working in obviously in the time that they take to do so well, this apparently I think is the second heat of the intermediate wall handling competition nearest the camera here is Ellen Prothero that's Lauren Morris and in the middle Gerald I believe there's a competitor from Chile Camilla Quinteros which just goes to show the international flavour of this Royal Welsh show oh yes they do and uh, obviously they have sheep in Chile as well and uh, I would think that very similar rules would apply out there to uh, to uh, work in the wool and a lot of these uh, competitors that are shearing at the highest standard now will have been in New Zealand and obviously there's competitions for the wool handlers as well out there so uh, well, it's nice to see that she has and there's the young lady yes from Chile yeah. so she has probably been working in this country in the shearing sheds anyway probably so anyway we'll come back to see if she makes the final later shall we thanks Gerald well, don't forget, you can also watch uh, the show on our website, which starts from the main ring at 8 o'clock in the morning. There's also uh, English language commentary available on that service. And, of course, we're here broadcasting from 9 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. It's great to have your company. Well, Right, let's pop up outside to the cattle ring. And here's Gerald once again. There we are featuring our uh, muscular breed, or the mus most muscular breed that has come into this country, and it is the British Belgian Blues. And uh, in this particular breed, well, we have animals of varying colours, and... Uh, 
whereas they were predominantly many, many years ago as only blue and white. We now have black and white, jet black, with a little bit of a mixture along the way. Yeah, an interesting class, this one, because uh, they've been judged in pairs, Gerald. Uh, this is a pair that have both been bred by the exhibitor. So it's a, it's a true... It's a true I, I, competition that, that shows the quality of the breeder, I guess, as well as the animal. That's good, right, yes. And uh, even though they say the colours of the two animals there are in feature slightly varies between dark and light, but uh, there is no stipulated, stipulated colour like uh, in the uh, British Belgian Blue. But there are obviously he's got to judge them and what is in front of him in terms of confirmation and locomotion and, and obviously a matching pair in confirmation rather than in colour. But Well, our judge, Mr James Martin, is, uh, doesn't want to hang around in the, in the heat. He's a man from Northern Ireland who's here to do a job and uh, is uh, presenting, presenting the awards. Yeah, as you say, both bred by the uh, same same breeder. Obviously, the sex doesn't matter neither. In terms of, we see we have a young bull and a young female bred by the same exhibitor there, Kevin Watrett. The Belgian Blue Society or British Belgian Blue Society has um, improved the uh, the breed significantly uh, since it graced our shores many years ago in in uh, locomotion because the Belgian Blue was all known realistically all just for its back end and uh, the the locomotion was dreadful they could hardly walk very tidy at all and they were very sort of stapled back and that but as we can see this current animals that are walking in front of us now have got good locomotion and good top lines because uh, the meat trade now is not all about the back end now there's more feature on on quality and the loin is an exceptional one of the most expensive parts of the animal and therefore they've had to improve their breed to compete within the current beef market and uh, they've done a good job to be fair very interestingly our judge was as a dairyman who uses blues and breeds blues as well so there we have it thank you Gerald and Will and uh, it's the final uh, visit to the pig ring and uh, Emma is about to join Gerald yes we're back again and we I think we're probably now in the... Yeah, we're on the uh, final championship of the Welsh pig, so it's the overall best pig. So uh, competing here, we have the female champion, which we followed earlier, and also uh, the male champion as well, which I can see has come from the, the Roberts family. Tremendous width in a little for a boar, isn't he? Uh, tremendous yes. weight. He isn't very big, but he is no, exceptional, in the conf shoulder there, except isn't he? exceptional confirmation for the, for the Welsh pigs aren't renowned for this uh, serious shape they're all for their quality, but that is good, good shape to be fair to that pig. Yes, yeah, very much so. Very much so. And a, uh, young, one of the young boars, I would say. Um, but who are we to say when it's the <laughs> judge... Uh, that has judged these classes all the way through and uh, probably, uh, well, has done, has assessed every pig by his own merit and all the way through. So it's quite interesting to see that uh, in a lot of judges of all commercial animals or all of animals, some have a preference for a female and some have a preference for a male. Um, and um, I think uh, every judge would be admit to the fact that... They just sorry to interrupt Gerald, we can just see the senior uh, sow there as well, so uh, the reserves come out in the ring as well, so uh, this is our first championship of the show actually, yeah, isn't it? It is indeed, yes. So, um, say if the um, the guilt won the overall championship, her reserve, uh, which would be the sow, could come in uh, and take uh, reserve champion overall, it could go to two females rather than it going automatically to the male and female champion. And likewise, the, uh, 
Yes, I, that applies in, in pretty near most of the yes. uh, show. And anyway, I know, but it but is, it's, it's unusual to see them all in the ring at the same time. I think it, I think maybe with it's harder with the pigs because to try and keep the pig by the gate in the outside there. Uh, be much harder rather than a, and a sheep on <laughs> <and> a halter. <laughs> yeah, <fair. laughs> but it's three years since the last show. I keep forgetting how these things <laughs> work. Right, yeah, right. yeah. But um, uh, that's the reason. Let's hope the judge gets it right that he doesn't pick second place in first place. Yes. Then, isn't it? Oh, and there we go. It's uh, the young guilt uh, uh, that takes the overall championship. I think probably a bit more too to tight uh, for probably the Probably so. I did allude that the uh, little boar had it. Yes, yes. A fair bit of confirmation, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see now then who he rewards the reserve to. Does he go to the senior sow or will he go to go, the young boar? the young boar. Probably will, but uh, who knows? No, it's the sow that takes it. So he's a female judge? Yeah, yeah he likes, likes the ladies. <laughs> yeah, fair comment. Yeah, fair comment. Yeah. I, I, I think possibly because they are sort of more... True to type, True to then, type of, of, the, the of the Welsh pig. Yes, fair yes. Right. I think if you were to get a, a a painting of a Welsh pig, I think that young gilt would probably be it. Fit She's, the bill. She yes. fit the bill, yeah. Very, very smart young yeah, pig, isn't she? Yeah. Very, very nicely done. And uh, well done to the pigs on the exhibitors and, and out in this warm weather. Yes, indeed. And, uh, go lounge in their pens in there now in their straw for the rest of the show. Very well deserved.
Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Showground at Llanel with, and we'll go straight to the main ring and join Rachel Thomas. So, back to the uh, other end of the main ring now, the members end, and we're looking at the section D ridden now we've moved on to. So I believe these are the ridden gelding class, class one for one. So, at the minute, we're just having an initial pull-in. So uh, I'm not going to be able to give you many numbers there. So I'll give you a bit of background on the judges. So we've got the Rye judge today, Mr. Richard Telford from Berwickshire, a very well-known face on the horse circuit, being a producer of lots of show horses. And Richard's uh, always worked with horses, well-known face. Richard's done just about everything, really. He's evented, hunted, I believe he was an MFH. He could still well be MFH. And um, an interesting fact is he learned to ski in his 50s and now tries to get a ski and holiday in every year. Um, from a horsey family, he's evented, pony club games, lots of showing under saddle, uh, he shows everything really, hunters, hacks, riding horses, cobs. A great rider is Richard. And he actually did spend a short period of time in Wales. Many years ago when I was a youngster, I remembered him uh, for a short time on the local circuit. So uh, a competitor, a well-known competitor on lots of different panels. Um, panel judge Hohack and Cobbs, ROR's. We saw him judging the ROR's earlier. He's also on the NPS panel, uh, the sport horse breeding panel, and the heavy horse panel. Um, I would believe he, he's quite a sort of tall chap, and from when I've judged you, you tend to go for something that you're used to. So maybe a bigger type of animal with a big front. Something nicely schooled, equal and level on both reins. Um, he wouldn't appreciate a horse that hangs. He'd appreciate a horse that's balanced, moving correctly. And in my eyes, appreciate a horse that could go on and do another job. There's no reason why you couldn't do a dressage test on any of these cobs if they're schooled and going correctly. Uh, we know they perform. Um, you know, many people event them, jump them, dressage, hunt. <laughs> and as we know, the Welsh Funny and Cobb promote this through their performance shows and their performance awards. So the traditional gallop, one at a time under the grandstand, slightly different year as uh, they do it individually. And the grandstand love it. Great atmosphere, lots of cheers. So Richard standing in the middle there judging. His confirmation judge is a Mr. Les Shaw, Dionneth Stud from Little Heath Dunstan in Stafford. And now Mr. Shaw started his career as actually an apprentice joiner and took an interest in ponies. When he was younger, rode lots of awkward ponies in the village, so decided with his wife that they would start a Welsh cob stud. Uh, they actually borrowed a book from Cheryl Firth and visited the Lanarth, the Lanarth Sales and started the stud in 1989, buying a yearling and several foals from the Lanarth Sales. Um, <coughs> he's actually a farmer, but has a keen interest in the Welsh cobs and his stud. So we are hoping we'll come back later on and give you uh, a close-up of Richard Ryde in some of the exhibits. Thanks, Rachel. <coughs> so let's uh, head over quickly to the sheep ring and uh, join Gerald again. We're back in the sheep ring and in the hill speckle breed. Looks like it's a female time. It yes, is. we're joining uh, the U. Two years uh, old and older. Yes. So a good uh, 
entry for for this age group of uh, sheep. We generally see more entries in the ram lamb and ewe lamb classes and as the sheep get older they stay at home to do their work of rearing lambs and breeding. And, and that's actually quite interesting you state that um, it says here that the two-year-old ewe or over that has reared a lamb in 2022. Yes, that's important, isn't it? Because of course, you, it's you, important. You, this is you, a working animal, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. You could keep a, 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 a smart-looking animal back, not breed from her, so that she looks at her, right. her absolute best. But then, what's the point in that, isn't it? These, these animals, right. yeah. their purpose is to breed and rear the best Welsh lamb possible, and. Uh, I, I quite like that uh, stipulation that they have. That is very good, to be fair. Yeah. It is uh, a working show, like, isn't it? A working animals, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, again, we see uh, Thomas John Roberts there at the head of the class. He, we saw him earlier on take the uh, ram lamb. Quite an interesting uh, look at these particular sheep here now on the side on. Do not see too many judges aligning the sheep no. with their side view rather than their rear yes, view or the front yes. view. Uh, but this gentleman now is walking down this yeah. side and he can assess. It's good, good, good for us. Well, fair <laughs> comment. Yeah, very good for us. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. But you really do get an idea on the scope of the sheep for yeah, overall yeah. there. But that you that is in first place at the moment then from that is quite a significant more yes. strength in that you yes. than the yes. other counterparts. Yeah, and would match the type of ram lamb that we saw earlier. And there you go. He's second prize thinks that he's already awarded the prize anyway. We haven't <laughs> seen it yet. Hand. but uh, so, uh, Murdin Jones there in uh, second place at the moment. And in third then Karen Jones. Well, there we go. Well, there be two animals from the same family there in the Hill Speckle Championship that we've witnessed so far. Yes, and uh, Maynard was speaking to uh, Thomas earlier on, and he, I think he'll definitely have to come out and do a bit of showing later. <laughs> yes, <laughs> somebody's got to hold the second animal. Yes, indeed. Yes. Lovely shot of the U there oh, now. Oh, lovely U, yes, to be fair. Very well turned out. Right. <laughs> Well, Tongue were had a vote in about the Ragor. Oh, there we go. I'm different now, I'm not even so you can read all the DVDs. I'm going to run around. Thomas Sean Roberts is having a very good show so far. Yes. So perhaps he'll have a bit more money to go out tonight again. <laughs> Certainly have to celebrate anyway with all those red cards. <laughs> Let's hope we come back later on and see if somebody can upset the John Roberts family. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the cattle ring and the British Belgian Blue Championship. Unfortunately, we missed all the process, Will, of all the way through and the qualifying classes, but there you go. It's number 3164. Let's come to the top. Kevin Watrett. The Sol Way View Kesha. She was born on the 23rd of the 4th, 2015, homebred. I'm reliably told, Gerald, that she won the Yorkshire show, so that well, was just last week, go, so uh, she's got a bit of form. Yes. As I alluded to before, then it's, he's ended up this particular class then of uh, of um, championship animals, and uh, the darker animals have prevailed. <coughs> Just to remind you, James Martin, our judge over from Northern Ireland, from County Down. Uh, He's been a member of the society since 1986 and one of the first breeders in Northern Ireland to import cattle from Belgium. So then you would have seen a significant difference, as I alluded to before, in terms of the type of animal and the uh, 
on the first blues that came over to this country. Well known on the showing circuit and judging the Royal Welsh 20 years ago. Oh, well, well. Well, have you a bet it wasn't as warm that day as it is today? Oh, well, we've had a few warm ones yeah, here over, yeah, okay, over the, over yeah, the yeah, years, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't recall that one. No. There's two very good cattle for him to judge here, and he's going to take his time. He's got to pick out every every little point. But I guess in your 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 favour in the heifer, Gerald, looking at your head. Um, yes, uh, I would say so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's a man who knows his stuff. <laughs> just luck, just luck. <laughs> Solway view Keisha is the winner. Yeah. Bred by and exhibited by Kevin Watrett, which of course is just that little bit sweeter, I guess, isn't it? Well, she's very well made. Very. Uh, they have gone as I stated before, then from this excessive back ends and whatever. Even though she's an excessive back end, don't get me wrong, but. They have featured away from that a little bit, and the animal is now judged for being a little bit more correct, then, is the word, then. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, Will. Well, we'll be uh, leaving you shortly um, for the news headlines, and things have certainly warmed up here in uh, Chanel with. Um, and we'll just have a quick... Weather forecast, it's 31 degrees centigrade at the moment and uh, it quite well be the hottest day of all time here, here in Wales with temperatures still rising. So if you are visiting uh, the show or in general, please be careful, plenty of water, plenty of uh, sun cream and try and stay in the shade if you can and there's the temperatures 37 in the northeast 35 here in Chanel Web. it'll be dry later on this evening it'll be very warm but tomorrow during the morning early morning dry and sunny but there might be a few showers appearing in Wales down on the uh, southwest coast. Temperatures reaching 36 degrees centigrade. And uh, there may we well be a few more showers come Wednesday. Well, that's all for the time being. Uh, we will be leaving you shortly for the news headlines, but uh, we'll be back shortly.
Plawn da ar ddiwrnod agoriadol y sioe frenhinol yn Llanelwedd, mae'n y rybydd amber am dywydd eithafol ar draws Cymru. Gyda'r disgwyl i'r tymheredd godin uwch na 40 grad Celsius mewn rhai ardaloedd yn Lloegr. Mae teithwyr rheilffordd hefyd yn cael eu rhybuddio i ddisgwyl oedi dros y dyddiau nesa oherwydd cyfyngiadau cyflymder yn ystod y tywydd poeth. Yn ôl network rail fe allai rhai teithiau yng Nghymru a Lloegr gymryd ddwywaith yn hirach na'r arfer. Mae cwest wedi clywed sut y gwnaeth bachgen yn ei arddegau a syrthiodd mewn i chwarel yn horfain cyn marw o anafiadau difrifol i'w ben a'i gorff. Cafodd y gwrandawiad i farwolaeth Myron John Davis oedd yn bymtheg oed i agor a'i oherio y bor yma. Fe fydd y pump o ymgeiswyr sydd ar ôl yn yr as ar gyfer arweinyddiaeth y cedwadwyr bellach yn cael eu cytogi i bedwar heddi, pan fydd aelodau syneddol y blaid yn bwrw i pleidlais yn y drydedd rownd. Roedd na ddadle tanllyd rhwng y pump ar ITV neithiwr gyda'r economi a Brexit ymhlith y pynciau llosg. Mae arlywydd Ucrain wedi gwaharddu bennaeth diogelwch a phennaeth erlyniadau'r wlad yn dilyn cyhuddiadau fod rhai o'i staff yn cydweithio â Rwsia. Dwedodd Vladimir Zelensky fod mwy na 600 hanner o chosion o brydychu'r wlad. Yn ôl ymchwil dyweddar, mae plant sy'n byw mewn clodi yng Nghymru tua dwy flynedd ar ôl i cydddisgyblion sy'n sefyll i aroliadau tygau. Mae adroddiad newydd gan y sefydliad polisi addysg hefyd yn dweud mae ychydig o gynnydd sydd wedi bod o ran cair bwlch dros y degawd dwetha. Mae'r gweinidog addysg Jeremy Miles wedi disgrifio'r adroddiad fel un digalon. Pil drod i gloi yn ôl Gareth Bale roedd hi'n deimlad anhygol cael chwarae i'w glwb newydd Los Angeles FC am y tro cyntaf nithwr. Fydd ath Captain Cymru o The Ar y Fainc am y deinaw munud ola, gan greu dipyn o argraff hefyd, yn i fydd i goliaeth o dwy gol i un yn erbyn Nashville. A dyna'r penawdau am hanner dydd bydd ein bulletin nesa ni toc cyn dau o'r gloch. Tan hynny felly, diolch yn gwylio a hwyl fawr i chi.
Welcome back to the, uh, the showground here at Llanelwedd for the opening day of the first Royal Welsh show since 2019. And Clwyd, the feature county, finally get the opportunity to host the show. It's been a wonderful day so far. It's been a very busy morning. It's also going to be a very busy afternoon. And it's so wonderful to see so many people here at the showground. The temperature's gone up a few notches. It was quite fresh earlier on this uh, this morning. But uh, it's uh, the temperature's reached around 31 degrees uh, at the moment. Nia will be visiting the food hall uh, later on. But in the meantime, we'll be... Uh, Heading for the uh, main ring. And he has just mentioned the fact that after an absence of three years, this is a fantastic opportunity to get together once again, meeting old friends, making new ones. And of course, we will be keeping you company at home. We're broadcasting until five o'clock uh, this afternoon. Right, let's head for the main ring then. And it's back to the Cobbs. And uh, we'll join uh, Rachel Thomas. Thanks, Gareth. So, we're just catching the uh, final result of the Welsh Cobb Gilding class. 1-4-1 one one under saddle. And it looks like it's a win for one at uh, 1380, Kate Williams from Cardiff, with her own ringside Zorba and ringside stud of bread, this gelding as well. And just coming into second place is Emma Burrows with Divrangri Sir Picasso. Um, that's a Welsh cob I'm familiar with. I believe he's won at Hoys several times as well as Olympia, very consistent Cog cob there. And Williams. just coming forward in third place, uh, tier nine on defender, um, belonging to L Baker, ridden by Claire Fitch. <laughs> so, big class there, 43 entries. We couldn't quite see how many were forward, but there was certainly a lot. The heat doesn't seem to be uh, affecting anyone here yet at the minute. Um, as you can see, everything is coping really, really well with the heat. So there we are, Gelding winner, ringside Zorba and Kate Williams. Well, Croeso Mawr iawn i chi yn ôl ato ni yma, yng Nghylch y Gwartheg. Mae wedi bod yn fore hynod o brysur o gystadlu, ac i ni gyda'r brydiau cyfandir. Back in the cattle ring and back to the limousines. And these limousine heifers here are born between the 1st of April and the 31st of May, so the age gap here will is a lot closer. Yeah, a little bit more like peas in a pod, this uh, class. And uh, our judge, uh, this is Jonathan Watson, uh, will, I'm sure, have his work cut out to split these, these fine animals out. Mr. Watson, of course, uh, down from Berwick on Tweed, down from Northumberland. And enjoying his day in the ring, I, I guess. He's, uh, he's judged with a smile on his face all morning and uh, has interacted well with the, with the exhibitors. And has been doing a, a splendid job, I would say. As we stated earlier on, then uh, the, uh, a lot of the animals would be new to this sort of environment, and obviously these had been very young animals would be their first time to be in front of such a colourful background of people and trade stands and noises and everything that goes on associated with the show, and give credit to the handlers that uh, train these animals and handle these animals to cope with all that sort of, all that environment then. Indeed, TNS Jones 
Sherry Sparkle is the animal being handled by the judge currently. And there we have it again, just you know, just making sure the foot, just a few inches to the left, it stands a little bit squarer. Every opportunity to this impress the, the judge has to be taken. This is the moment. Doing it again tomorrow. It's hours, days, weeks, months in preparation, yes, and, indeed, to be and minutes in the spotlight, isn't it? That's quite right. So these animals can be basically maximum of about 14 to 15 months old. Very well grown animals for the for their age, aren't they? Uh, a lot of these animals will be in that 500 600 kilo weight bracket. ML Howardson and Sons Goalie Smarties is the next one to try and impress the judge. Not quite the power of this, probably is one of the younger animals of the of the group and not quite the power as we do stated before and then uh, they tend to mature and, and obviously width and strength come with maturity very little belly with that animal oh, though, she's very it? well prepared very well tucked up yes yeah limousine has that uh, um, sort of the handle or the name of being like a pencil basically and no waste is the no big rib cage and Oh. Tremendous animal to die, but high, very percentage killing something. outright. I'll tell you something. After three years away from the show, I can't claim to have the same, <laughs> the same <laughs> traits. I'm afraid. <laughs> moving nicely there, and uh, yeah, very nice, good, nice walking animal. Yeah, takes her place. Callagel livestock, Callagel Sky. Um, our next effort to come and meet the judge. Yeah. Judge has made it known in the judge's notes in the catalogue that he is looking for uh, a practical animal, an animal that's. Uh, well fleshed, but also one that uh, walks well and catches the eye. Something that is uh, commercially valuable as well as valuable to the pedigree breeder. So um, keep keep an eye out for a for the judge picking out the. These limousine heifers that are on display in this particular class. I think the limousine, as I alluded to, the Belgian Blues have changed their strategy in terms of breeding. They have bred for uh, better locomotion, not quite such uh, an excessive back ends. And the the most expensive part of, uh, of animals as uh, killed as of today is the loin. And I do believe that a lot of these limousine heifers, they have perhaps the limousine breed has concentrated on breeding uh, more for the loin and perhaps the back end a little bit as well. So. These, these limousine heifers here on display have not got excessive back ends by any stretch of imagination, have they? They're, perhaps I should say that they'd be definitely U confirmation, but probably they could even be R confirmation. So, uh, but they look to have got very, very good loins on these animals. And uh, as the judge is feeling there, that is the loin, and that is where the most expensive cuts are. It's where the sirloins and the ribeyes come from, That's isn't it? That's quite right. You're yes. quite right. English language commentary is available on this programme and on our main ring webcast. Depending on your device, either press the red button or use the audio selection option. Any problems, please contact the S4C viewers hotline. The details are on the screen. Ma pethau poeth i fyrin ynghylch y defed gyda thancam poriaeth gwrwaith y defed penfrith y bryniau Cymru. Bethau and we're back in the sheep ring and uh, as we featured earlier on we've seen the uh, uh, Roberts family successful with the 
you and the Ram Lam. So, uh, they're back in front of the judge again. And I believe this is the overall male championship. That's right, yes. So, that should feature Ram Lam, Yerlin Ram, and the senior, senior Ram. Ram. So, made his decision and. Uh, Thomas and Steve, what did you do with the breed and what did you do with it? I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. And indeed, um, Thomas John Roberts is here with the um, senior ram, I believe, that has taken. Uh, it's the yearling ram. What's the uh, yearling ram, is it? I, Oh, I think indeed. so. I'm not too sure, but it is from Thomas John Roberts. Also takes a reserve with the Ram Lam. And then... So the young man that was out celebrating last night didn't select the right one to handle <laughs> to get today. the championship, did he? Not today. No. Or maybe he was avoiding another interview with Zaynia. Oh, with fair Zainier. enough, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> To be fair, they are champion and reserve of their breed. They couldn't have had any more aspirations of doing any better Absolutely and they come no. down to the show. No, and very similar to the badger faces we saw earlier. Uh, the judge has picked a type, doesn't he? These two are very much yes, of the same, yes, indeed. the same type. And, uh, Good promotion for these. I'm sure that they sell breeding sheep from the flock and they must have a very good flock to be able to produce a champion and a reserve champion in the Royal Welsh show so uh, and I'm sure in their breed society sales up there in mid Wales they will be short of advertising it and here comes the females well, I'm here, I'm over. Claude and Vauri, Daily Robert. The family have uh, done well in the females, as we've seen him doing well before in the U, so uh, we'll have to look for more shepherds now to hold the, <laughs> hold the stock. And uh, this champion then will come back later on in the week for the. Uh, Hill Breed Championship into Breeds, and uh, it'll all culminate at the end of the week with the overall Sheep Championship. Are sure we can and help Oh, so Oh, this is a little bit of uh, conflict. The father and son there, and uh, the son. Winning out, he was the one that wanted to buy the ram. Very well to them as a family.
Well done, Manny. You ready? Welcome back on this warm and sunny afternoon at the Royal Welsh Showground in San Elwith, and it's straight back to the cattle ring, and we'll join Gerald and Will. Well, yes, back to this young heifer class, and uh, we were talking about the quality that was in front uh, in front of the judge before we we left the ring, Gerald, and uh, he has uh, he has got his hands full here. Yes, indeed. Uh, attractive animals, very attractive, and. Uh, Good locomotion on these uh, young limousine heifers, so uh, it'll be his decision on what he sees as going to be a future breeding cow, and maybe produce an exceptional good bull or a very good female breeding line throughout the years. He thought... Well, Jonathan Watson runs a herd of 70 pedigree limousines of his own yeah. and uh, shows them and breeds them under the... Calagale livestock and Calagale sky, you know, hon. Under his own prefix, under the Tweeddale limousine prefix. And, uh, looks like he's... Well, we can do mine... Coming to some sort of conclusion, he's found a nice little spot at the top end of the ring. I don't know if you you know the area, but there's a great big tree just behind him, and I think he, he just he just walks back for a little a little cool down in the shade. So, uh, and I'm sure those limbs and enthusiasts who are watching this with eager anticipation are also appreciative of the uh, corner of the ring that they. They're in, yeah. Look at that. He hasn't made his final decision yet. He's still deliberating and casting his professional eye over them once again. This is what it comes down to, as I said, all those months, weeks, days exactly. of work. It's one man's opinion. And we'll shortly find out what that opinion is. We've talked a lot about the confirmation, but of course he'll be looking for breed character as well. Oh. Oh, he's made a decision and it looks like as if it's Carlo Gale Livestock and number 3139. Carlo Gale Sky. Oh, well done. Well done to them. What a tremendous effort. Don't forget, there's more than one way to follow our coverage here from the Royal Welsh. We're on the air from 9 until 5 on S4C, but you can also follow the main events from the main show rings on our website. Just go to s4c.cymru slash shoy. Right, from the cattle ring, we'll head over to the main ring and uh, rejoin Rachel Thomas. Mm. Thanks, Gareth. We've got a back view there of the hunter judges. And this looks like it's class 151, which is the four-year-old class. Um, six entries on the catalogue, two forward. And it looks like we've got a result, and that's Amy Tuff on the winner there, which is 1483. Devante Boy. Um, sadly, I don't have an owner's name, um, and not, I don't think it would be Amy's own horse, but um, for some reason there's a misprint in the catalogue and they haven't given us an owner's name. <laughs> and the second horse, Gweno Jones, Tinnawurn Maxen. So there's the winner of the four-year-olds, Devante Boy, and Amy Tuff riding from uh, Mallard's Reach, Equestrian in Pembrokeshire. So we'll come back later on for the rest of the hunt classes. Thank you, Rachel. As we can see, uh, Nia is uh, in the food halls, as is Leslie Griffiths, the Minister for Rural Affairs there, chatting away to some of the exhibitors. And uh, 
Andy. Mia has uh, joined David from uh, Fanon Morn or Anglesey Morn Distillery. And uh, they first came uh, to the show six years ago and uh, uh, Cowain, uh, the Cowain project. And uh, they've started with the, the spring water that uh, they have at their location and they've uh, been using that to do the variety of gins that you can see here. Um, they also produce spring water, of course, and uh, they also produce uh, their own whiskey as well. So there's quite a variety of, uh, of produce there. The whiskey takes three years. The vodka, on the other hand, only takes about a fortnight to produce. Uh, it's the gins that you can see on camera at the moment, which takes... Uh, uh, a, a rather longer time than the vodka, of course. Danny is just asking Danny, who's uh, David's friend, uh, for her reaction when she discovered that he was going to go into the distillery uh, industry. And there's obviously an awful lot of work gone into it. And he has just making the point that a couple of years ago, as I mentioned before, they were here under the Cowine project. Um, and they haven't had um, much of an opportunity, to be honest, to, uh, to visit several festivals in the recent years due to the, to the pandemic. Of course, they're located on the eastern coast of, of Anglesey uh, in a village called uh, Pentraith. As uh, Dav is uh, saying there, whenever, when, when the quality of the water is high in any location, as in Scotland, for example, it's ideal for, uh, for, for making whiskies as well. <laughs> Nia's just uh, making the point that David is obviously from Anglesey, as is uh, Nia, of course, but uh, Danny is uh, from over the bridge from Carnarvon. Yeah, David's just saying that uh, they've sold quite a, a few bottles uh, this morning already, many of them going back to the caravans on site around the, uh, the showground itself. You've got marmalade gin, uh, strawberry gin, uh, elderflower gin as well. There's quite a variety there. Raspberry is uh, is Danny's favourite. And there's smaller bottles as well. <laughs> as Dave is saying, it's the ideal size to put in your handbag if you're walking around the showground. And, and, he, and he is just making the point once again that it's um, encouraging to see a company who came here initially uh, under the Kowain banner, if you like, which is sponsored by the government, now coming here uh, on a standalone basis uh, as it is and obviously uh, having uh, quite a successful time of it.
Well, Chris and Orly. Welcome back once again to the showground in Llanelwedd. And without further ado, straight back to the cattle ring. Here's Gerald and Will. Well, there we have it, uh, Gerald. We're getting towards the business end of the day in the limousine classes. Uh, looks to me as if this is the female championship that's taking place. Oh. Yeah, we've seen uh, featured the cow there earlier on with a calf. We also featured on the end then. Uh, Right now, Lauder has already vanked, but even we are not just going to see the show, you know. And then we are, but I'm just sorry, I'd rather just see Arbeni go over there. We've seen did more perfection coming through her respective class on the mature heifers earlier on. That's Mr. Bart Simpson, who is the stockman for did more. Limousines exhibiting a powerful heifer. A little bit more difficult now. We were talking about the last class being peas in a pod. Of course, he's got to he's got to take size into consideration a little bit here, isn't it? Well, yes, as we've alluded to many times already, then that it's uh, it is uh, strength as they mature and. Uh, um, they develop more than a muscular, their muscles will develop and therefore a heifer perhaps when she was 10, 11 months old wouldn't have had seriously good confirmation but as she grows in strength and maturity then the confirmation gets a lot better so uh, but obviously uh, our judge has got cattle of all ages if he's got a large pedigree herd so he will be aware of, of how they mature throughout their life and there's another one that we've seen earlier, Frogmore Petunia. Chris White. Winner of her class. In milk with calf at foot and uh, calf enjoying his day in the sunshine too. Oh, ah, he's he <laughs> These heifers, oh, there we go. He's uh, pulled the Dinmore perfection for forward first. And that is, uh, it is the champion by the looks of it, is it? She is, is she? I, think he's, he's I was wondering, was he going to put a second one in, but he's given a little stroke. Tapped her out of, uh, out of the lineup without any. Oh, there comes the second place in her respective class to compete for the reserve female champion. Upper Freeth Tipper. So she joins the remaining prize winners so they can pick the reserve. So that's, that's quite right. That's, yeah, that's, quite, yeah. that's okay. quite right. A tree in, tree in. Well, she gets a wild card entry into the championship well, because, uh, yes, because the one that beaten her uh, has gone right. forward to win the championship. That's well, that right. makes a lot of sense. Yep. Quite right. And it's a mature heifer again, see, isn't it? You know, so um, it's, it always do, does appear that some of the more stronger animals do come forward. But there we go. He's gone for the cow. Frogmore. Christopher White, a Frogmore Petuna. Yeah, Frogmore Petuna. From Chris White. As the reserve female champion. And interesting to see that the uh, mature cow is a fraction smaller than the maiden heifer from the, the doors heard. But, uh, so we'll see. See more perfection later on. We will indeed. Well, we visited the sheep shearing shed earlier uh, this morning and we're back there again with the uh, wool handling competition. This is uh, the open competition and the second heat. So uh, most of the young ladies on, ex on, on show here have gained vast experience over the years in shearing terms to come forward here to compete at this level and as we can see there on the left of the shot then the shearing shed is a very very popular place 
creates a lot of buzz and excitement. We have three young ladies here competing and handling on two shearers each. So they can't hang about, they just can't wait for one. Two, they look after two shearers, so they'd have to make sure that the each individual shearer is looked after, can't come out from the, the porthole and step on a fleece that hasn't been removed, or she will be marked down for that. So she has to keep an eye, as we see, looking over her shoulder and witnessing what is going on behind her. Because while she deals with the action of putting the wool in the buckets, the off pieces or the off cuts into the bucket, she then roll in the fleece as you see her casting back and therefore she has to go over there and take that belly wool and that dirty wool away from the second shearer while she was in the process of wrapping the first fleece up so they have to have their wits about them and uh, they stated if the shearer comes out of the out of the pen with the next sheep and steps on the wool it would be a disaster and as they're handling the fleece uh, Gerald I mean, it's not every fleece that's going to be the same, so one might be easier to handle than another. Yes, I would think so, yes, but they are in full wool, mature sheep here, so it should be quite consistent on how good they are, but if the shearer happened to uh, cut the fleece or something like that, well, as she is throwing the fleece on there, maybe it would come apart, so she has to, say, repair the situation. Interesting to see how the rules have changed and whatever, then I see her then uh, throwing the belly wool into the fleece so the belly wool now has become part and parcel of the completed fleece whereas years ago then the belly wool was excluded and would have gone with the small wools as they call so yeah. and there are she has to leave the board as clean as uh, as she can and uh, obviously this this lady here or the second competitor there is a little bit behind at the moment because there is another fleece left on the on the board. Uh, the, the three competing in this particular heat are Mena Breeze, who's in shot at the moment, uh, Priam Pennington in the middle, and Rosie Keenan. And, and Mena Breeze seems to be way ahead of the other two. I guess she's uh, obviously judged, as I said. I'm not too sure on the uh, on the tunes of the marking of of the uh, whether it's board or efficiency in rolling the fleeces but every fleece after she's finished now will have to be will be inspected and if it uh, if it does happen to fall apart or whatever well then obviously she'll be downpointed for that so it's quite a complicated affair and as we see competitors have been judged on their on their work and therefore she holds her hand up when she finishes so hopefully we'll come back and see some more later on yes indeed don't forget we're all over social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And uh, if you want all the relevant information, then visit the website, which is s4c.com. Right, let's uh, go back to the uh, main ring here at the showground. And here's Rachel Thomas once again. Thanks, Gareth. So we're back at the top end of the main ring now. And we're back to the lightweight hunters. Nine catalogued entries and four forward. Um, so so um, hunters bit thin on the ground this year, but Dieter uh, Hoy's not giving the Royal Welsh the qualifiers this time. Possibly that could be a reason for it. Um, and, uh, the ring is quite electric as well. So, uh, seems this year, maybe with all the fuel costs, people are willing to chase the Hoy's qualifiers and are saving themselves at other shows, which is a shame. But still, a great yeah. ring to ride in for the competitors that have come forwards. And uh, our two judges, Jody So and Jeanette Lafore. So uh, a bit about Jodie, Jodie, very experienced horseman, uh, multi-talented, uh, an amateur jump jockey, formerly uh, in the King's Troop. Um, obviously the King's Troop you'll see in the main ring later this later on giving two displays today a magnificent sight for anyone who hasn't seen it thoroughly recommend seeing the King's Troop. Uh, King's Troop Household Cavalry, amazing displays, and uh, Jody 
um, was in the King's Troop. Uh, he hails from um, living at the minute, running a yard in West Sussex with his wife. And he's invented dressage show jumped, an all round horsewoman, horseman. <laughs> he won't forgive me for saying that. So it looks like we've got a winner here. Yeah, it looks like they've left them as the initial pull in. So we've got um, Zara Owen there from Shropshire with our Hamers Snakes and Ladders. I think that horse has been here before, starting off in the in hand classes, um, if I remember rightly. Uh, bred by the owner by Amazing Jigsaw and out of Just in a Twist of Fate. So that horse has come down from uh, Shropshire. Zara, a regular here at the Royal Welsh, winning many classes. Um, as well as the Hunters, I've seen a show in Cobbs, Coloureds. Again, all round horsewoman and uh, producer of horses. And it looks like in second place we've got number 1496, which is Karen Burroughs' Redwood Surprise. And the rider there, Sophie Curry, uh, based down in uh, Neath, South Wales. Sophie having a good season, another young producer based in Wales with uh, different types of horses, and also she produces ponies. And there we've got Katie Staniland in third with LGH Flash Chance. Katie um, hails from Worcestershire. And again, then uh, another Welsh based horse in fourth, Stradihanna. Uh, with the Lewis family's mare there. I believe that mare has been here before as a small hunter, obviously now being shown as a lightweight, and I think she's also been here in the hunter breeding classes. Last time I saw you at the Royal Welsh Show, it was in the uh, main ring parade, and she had a foal on her. So nice to see that she's coming back out under saddle. And an added bonus with a mare, bring her out under saddle, have a foal, and then come back um <laughs> great benefit of having mares i know they can be a bit of a nightmare <laughs> to show but i think if you get a good mare um you know they're great to see out so there we see lightweight hunter minna zara owen riding our hamers snakes and ladders with karen bowen's redwood surprise in second <laughs>
Welcome back to the uh, showground, and uh, we'll head off to the sheep ring. Here's Gerald and Emma. We have featured this uh, hill speckle, and we are there now for the overall winner of it. And I'm not a betting person, like uh, Ems, but uh, I think it could stay within the <laughs> Roberts family. It, yeah. It'd be quite an upset if it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> But anyway, we feature in the Ram and the you. Lovely pair, aren't they? Oh, they, to be fair, they've got get, an exceptional, yes. flock of, exceptional flock of sheep, to be yep. fair. Absolutely. We'll, we'll see now. We can see it was the father who took it in the, yes. in the Ram, and the son has picked the Ram. So it'll be interesting to see how the... Uh, Judge will, uh, will go this time. It's a funny thing. It's a funny thing that in the show in uh, show in world, and uh, we have uh, seen before that the uh, female pig took the pig championship, and mm. we've seen like uh, we, I'm confident to say that the, the limousine society, the limousine, and, and it can be the year of males and females, you know. And I don't yeah. know why it's not planned or it, it's nothing, but um, this is a lovely. Lovely you, and in my opinion, she's quite stylish, isn't she? Very stylish, sometimes very stylish for the breed, yes, very yes. stylish. But it's not our decision. No. Just. I think it's probably maybe a bit late for checking the teeth well, now. Uh, you were <laughs> taking the words out of my mouth, Emma. You're a little bit Gerald. more controversial than me, <laughs> like, it? but I was going to say that's a little bit late to be looking in there. But uh, you've seen them a couple of times yeah, now, yeah, and, 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 and they should yeah. should still be right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And teeth are all important. There is oh. no you could have the prettiest looking sheep, but if the teeth are wrong, they won't be able to feed right. And, That's quite right. And, and it, it, it's one of the most well, I'd say up there with the most important thing. Well, for a hill breed especially. Especially because they're going to, to be... survive on harsh grass. Gra yeah, grazing on tough fodder. This yes. is a hill breed. Um, yeah. What a little finger. Oh, oh. I'm wrong. Oh, I proved wrong. It's yes. the ram that's taking it. So the son uh, hedged his bets the, the right way that, today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, lovely. What a wonderful day for this family. <laughs> and for the breed. Yeah. And taking the reserve there as well. The judge looked like he's thoroughly enjoyed his day in the ring. The breed, ah, oh, wonderful. Very proud family moment. With the pocketfuls of. Uh, Rosettes and cards. Yes, to be fair, the Roberts family have had an exceptional good morning. In oh, the, there we go. And they have they the are. reserve male yeah. champion there as well. Yeah. Uh, or the female, sorry, is it? I yeah. See as well. I wonder if, we'll, if, if, if this will be the three now we see coming back out in the well, group that, competition. That's interesting. That's yeah, um, it will the be. society. Yeah. Uh, the, Hill Society will decide and uh, will take a bit of beating, won't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the highlights of the show, of course, is the uh, Lloyd Family Award, which is uh, awarded to uh, one of the uh, Welsh Hill and Upland breeds. And I'm uh, very certain that uh, we will be seeing some of these sheep back out for that competition. Well... Here we go on the mum out there as well. And, uh, I'm sure she is probably uh, they're doing uh, most of the background work. You might have been feeding them, isn't she? Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, mainly they're just reiterating what we're saying. How as a group, they they match each other and complement each other, and certainly a very strong uh, style of sheep there in the hill speckle. 
Dat mag jij de bodem houden, Gim. Tada. Well, my pressure on my ice, ma. I can't believe we pressure. Well, there's a uh, bird's eye view of uh, the showground, and the YFC area can be seen just in the background with that uh, purple tree. That's where Aaron is at the moment, and he's with uh, Anna Jones, who is the marketing and uh, communications officer of the YFC. And uh, Anna's just saying that the, all the members have been really looking forward to the show. There's been a lot of preparations behind the scenes. And it is, it's like the highlight of the year. It's the end of the season, as it were, as it were. There's a lot of competitions going on, a lot of new competitions, of course, and the, the um, Young People's Village. And uh, Aaron is actually appearing there on uh, Wednesday evening. But it's um, after three years' absence, what changes have there been during that period? Well, uh, there's still an awful lot of competitions going on. There's uh, quite a few new competitions. There's uh, tomorrow evening, for the first time ever, there'll be a, a women's sevens rugby competition. Uh, I'll be at half past five tomorrow night. Uh, and what, what they did initially was get the the girls together from all the different counties to see how much interest there would be in uh, holding a, a, a competition of that nature. And uh, the response was, was very, very positive. Hence the reason they're holding that competition tomorrow night. Um, Aaron's just mentioning that the fact that uh, the Young People's Village is on a smaller scale this year than it has been in the past. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, people wanted, uh, or the members kind of thought that it would be good to uh, do it on a smaller scale, to go back to basics, uh, as it were. And of course, uh, everybody's looking forward uh, to the rest of the week ahead. Uh, and as a former member, you know, they're saying it, it, it's uh, it, it, it's good to be back. And uh, <laughs> and, uh, well, as, as Anna just said, regardless of how old you are, you never stop being a, a member of the uh, Young Farmers uh, uh, Young Farmers Club. It's a, it's a, the good thing about the movement, and it's also nice to see the older generation giving advice to the younger generation coming through and Anna's just saying that they're very very fortunate as to the number of volunteers uh, they have and, and and so many people who still want to take part and be part of the movement it, it's a, it just shows how special we are as a movement will you have any time to relax yes I'm hoping to be able to do that maybe towards the end of the of the show I'm enjoying myself anyway and that's that's the most important thing don't forget that you can uh, watch the coverage on the on the website from eight o'clock in the morning when the, the horses will be appearing in the main ring and there is English language commentary available on that service as well. And of course, we're here on the main coverage between nine o'clock and five o'clock each day. And on the website, well, go and view and you can pick and choose what you want to see. It's uh, s4c.cymru slash shoy. Right, let's get back to that main ring now and uh, join Rachel once again. So we've gone back over to 153, which is the middleweight hunters. This time, eight catalogued entries. Um, we'll just hopefully come out. And we're looking at five forward in this. Out of the catalogue date. So for anyone who doesn't know at home, the middleweights are capable of carrying over 12 tons seven 
and up to 14 stone. So uh, eight entries is good catalogued entries for non hoys qualifier. Um, I've seen it quite a few shows this year. The middles have had quite good class numbers, to be fair. So we've got Jody Soul and Janetta Lafour so there, our judges. Janetta from Newmarket and Suffolk, um, editor of the show in Journal magazine. Formerly had uh, many hunters herself. Jody Soul from Sussex. Uh, Jody still riding as an amateur jockey as well as producing show horses. And it looks like the win has gone there to Victoria Piper and her own Cryofall Quicksilver. So there's Irish draft breeding in this. Quite a lot of the middle and heavies, um, from what I see, are influenced by Irish drafts. And you'll get some warm blood crosses in the middles as well, but the heavies, who we'll see later, hopefully, uh, predominantly seem to be dominated by Irish drafts. And um, the winner there by Pembroke Royal Blue, one of the draft studs down in West Wales, stand in the Pembroke Stallions. I believe this horse has been to Horse of the Year show in the search of the star series with Victoria. Victoria from uh, Lampwick Major in Glamorgan. And I believe the second horse, so I can't quite see the number, is um, Kate Griffiths' Green Hall Commander, but that's Amy Tuff riding. Um, the Green Hall horses, Irish bred horses, uh, very well known over in Ireland. Um, lots of Dublin show champions with the Green Hall prefix, and that horse is by Island Commander. Obviously, been bought over there and come over, and now down with uh, Amy down at Malad's Reach in Pembrokeshire. Now, I'm afraid that we can't get the number on the third horse and we're struggling to see on our monitors. But uh, good temperament on the middleweights there. So, Kaya Fall Quicksilver there and Victoria Piper enjoying her moment under the Royal Welsh Grandstand. I uh, think possibly a first visit for Victoria here, so I know she'll be delighted with that. And uh, the Green Old Commander in second, ridden by Amy Tuff. So we'll come back for the heavies later.
Welcome back to a very, very warm and sunny Royal Welsh Showground here at Llanelwedd. We'll head off to the cattle ring and it's welcome back, Gerald and Will. Well, Gerald, this is it then. Uh, we've been following the limousines most of the morning and uh, as we head towards uh, top of the day, here we are watching the limousine championship, the very best of the limousines at the 2022 Royal Welsh Show. And uh, here we are, Heifer and the Bull in front of us. Yeah, we featured um, more Perfection on a couple of occasions, but this is actually our first glance at the overall male champion. Yeah, we haven't really followed the males all morning, but... Uh, and he is owned by the Atkinson Steel Fabrication Limited. And he was winner of the section then, Bull, born, born on or before 30th of June 2019. So he was probably on the ground, uh, Will, when the last Royal Welsh show was held, but I yep. wouldn't go as far as he was probably not exhibited. So, uh, Upper Freud Power. Bred by Thomas Evans, and as you said, uh, it's the Thor Atkinson Steel Fabrications Limited that have their name on the ticket here at the Royal Welsh Show. And what do you fancy? Is it the heifer or is it the bull? Two very strong animals to. Uh, I fancy the heifer delicious. myself, then, to be fair, then. Uh, yes, very correct animal, very well made. It's an exceptional bull, and take nothing from him either, but uh, I think. Uh, Seriously, seriously good top line on this heifer. Very, very good top line. Well, I think I'm going to go against you on this one, Jonathan. I very are, rarely then, do that. So we'll, we'll make it a little bit of fun, don't we? There we are, not a problem at all. Not a problem. I've got, a, I've got an eye on that bull. and. Uh, oh, he is an outstanding animal. An outstanding animal to represent the breed in any final lineup in any show. There's very few faults I can see on that well, bull, really. Well, that's fair news, to be fair. A powerful animal. Very. Yeah. When I say very few, I can't find any, if I'm <laughs> honest. But, uh, <laughs> oh, you'd find a few, I'm sure. No perfect animal. Morgowir, come into Buer. He certainly got his work cut out here as our uh, as our judge. Mr. Paul Dawes down there in Hereford is an exceptional large herd of pedigree limousine cattle and has done exceptionally well over the years in the major shows throughout the country. I'm just reminding you of the man with a very difficult decision in the middle of the ring is Mr. Jonathan Watson. From Bowsden Moor, Berwick and Tweed. Enjoys coming down to the Royal Welsh. I'm not sure what he's going to say at the end of this class, though. He's, uh, he's going to be. It is his day and it is his decision, and it'll be written in history. Whichever animal wins. We are not going to have a live wait. My more are Benny can do it. My Castadlin Dayang Rataro. The bull. Uh, maybe if I was to make any sort of negative comment, and I don't want to be negative in any shape or form, maybe a little heavier through the front than you might like to see. A mature see. animal like that, yeah, and Anna being a working animal would just tendency to go that way slightly. Yes, he's they, they, they hunt, hunt, he's very front heavy and very strong up front. We'll lose a little bit of his hind quarter, the older. Once you get beyond the point of age, then. But, um, oh, well, oh. what do I know? Oh, well, here we are. Oh, a dairy it. man meeting me on the beef. I think oh, that's the, fir that's the dear, first time dear. in over 10 years, I think. <laughs> I don't know, I've got one right over <laughs> you. So. <laughs> well done, you. Well, Steel Fabrication Limited win the overall championship in the Rawwell Show. Yeah, that's some, uh, that's some feat. I won't forget that one in, uh, in quite a while. And no. uh, nice to see uh, another Welsh bred animal. Taking the uh, yeah, well, fair enough. Yes, we taking the, the reserve male champion will come forward now. 
Stephen O'Kane and Ethan Gosset. And this is Thea Hughes with Pabo Super Spice. Morning, smart Taro This young bull was born between the first of June, uh, first of January, sorry, and the thirty-first of March, twenty twenty-one. So he will come up against in more perfection. A great one for the future, but I think I'm with you on this one, though, Gerald. Oh. I think, I think, I think, I think. <laughs> hey, you haven't asked me yet. You haven't asked me yet. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a job to beat that effort. Well, you she, will. She, I personally think yes, but uh, she's just a little bit more mature, isn't she? And yes, she is. A oh, good top line in that young animal there, mind to be fair. Oh no, he's gone for the heifer. It's a, it's second place I got. Second yeah. place I got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah nice, uh, nice to see it. Yeah. When Haley shave an arm, don't Oh, he bought a buy a diggly, a diggly, mine Haley. So, upper, upper Freud Power, the name of our champion. And a lot of smiles. A lot of smiles around the ring there. But two, two, two. Wonderful, wonderful oh, animals to represent the breed in anywhere in the world. Indeed, isn't it? And I look forward to those. I mean, we've yeah. got the pairs and we've got the group of yeah. five, and I'm sure we'll see these animals back out in the ring yeah. before the end of the week again. Yeah, yeah. Thor Atkinson. And we're not glist to glist because he's got a very good breed. And it's an SS and a third part figure. A Govin event. Oh, then Credit Budaki Rubif, he's going to die. Young man, it is. Stetson. Yeah, so certainly a strong American uh, yeah, connection, yeah. <laughs> connection here, isn't it? And, uh, a real nice rich red, isn't he? The bull is a real rich. He is. Nice he red. Is. Good he example is. for no. the Limousine Society. And uh, indeed. Good luck I, later in the show. I've enjoyed that. Yeah, well, Nia is in the, uh, the floral arts and the horticulture section. Ruanta. Sean, and she's uh, with Sean Davis on the, the show council. And uh, this is probably the first uh, location that she visits. And so uh, my So you. Yeah. So this is um. It's not a competition we always see in, in, in the shows, but it's called a parve uh, arrangement. So it's kind of doing like a tapestry with plant material, um, which is why it's not like lots of long stems. The flowers are, are cut quite short. And I really like the way this one's been displayed in between two planks of wood then. And then all the different textures that's been created, all those little uh, look that does look like tapestry is is um foliage is, is leaves then that have been put in little loops or even weaved and uh, yeah that's that's beautiful so this is a different way of exhibiting it it's at upright and the other ones you can see then are down flat um, well with it being standing up as it is it possibly stands out a little bit yes, more yes definitely it? yeah you get you get more of the effect of it so just just a little uh, bit more information then. There, there, there's a, there is an overall theme for the whole of the show, and this year's theme is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And then with each class, then there is a a, a title. Contrast bell, your erinium thistles, and my hunan rubesi than Asia. So this one's like a seaside uh, seascape, as you can see. There's a lot of driftwood with nets. Um, the Eryngium then, which is also known as Sea Holly, which is quite uh, apt as well. They're all very intricate, aren't they? Yeah, there's a lot of work that goes yes, into it and a lot of planning as well. These would have all have been uh, created yesterday uh, at the show and judged uh, today then. So they would have come here with the raw materials as they were and then yes. put, put it all together... Every, yesterday on yes, site everything has to okay. be uh, arranged on site then you can't come with your uh, arrangement already done yeah. and this one then these are floor standing uh, exhibits uh, with the title being then the platinum uh, jubilee and i think the exhibits are quite self-explanatory as well yes 
also uh, Delith Price. Yeah, uh, this one is quite notably Delith Price. She has quite a style. Uh, she always didn't exhibits at the Royal Welsh Show does very well at the Winter Fair as well and uh, I think anybody who follows floral art would could pick her work out uh, from a distance then it, uh, it's, she, she does have a style all of her own and yeah, always ma- immaculately presented uh, these pedestal exhibits large floor standing exhibits you had a chance to wonder on the uh, not yet no because when we came in this morning then right. the, the the tent would have been closed for uh, for judging then and uh, by now it's open to the public and they will have had all their uh, all the judging is done and you can see which the winners are right. and Delith Price and are taking first in this uh, in this competition yeah this one was the uh, uh, front page headlines. Yeah, another in yard and her goil heaved. Mohidi Divnathio, blood are hiles if sun flowers are for sunod melin hin manunagor and our hair with. I heard the word Ukraine mentioned there, and you can tell immediately by 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 the colours that. Uh, oh, there we are. Yes. Confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Front page story. It's an exhibit to be staged on a white painted 75 centimetre cube. And (laughs) this one's quite interesting. The story of the monkey pox. Oh, right. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But this this was quite a tropical exhibit then. And uh, I think quite uh, suited to the, the weather we're having at the moment as well. And fair Absolutely. play to all the exhibitors who have got everything looking so fresh because it will be warm uh, in that t- uh, marquee. And one of the rules stipulates that the exhibit must be turgid, must last for the whole of the flower show. That's quite a challenge in itself when you consider the temperatures that we're yes, experiencing absolutely. here at the moment. Absolutely. Quite a spectacle, isn't it? Yes, and there's lots, lots more classes, so hopefully we'll get to see some more of them later on. No doubt.
Well done, Marky. Oh, the... Welcome back to the Royal Welsh Showground in Llanelwedd. First afternoon of the opening day. And we're heading for the sheep ring. So here's Gerald and Emma. Yes, it's the U lamb class in the Badger Face Welsh Mountain, Torthy. And there is an exceptional large entry of U lambs in this M. Yes, you can see from the catalogue entries, it's 39 entries, which is absolutely fantastic for the breed, isn't it? Must must be one of the most uh, well-supported breeds at the show this year. And I, not, I haven't checked out all the entry numbers for all the different breeds, but... I would go as far as to say you're probably yes, correct. But, yes, uh, And if you put is... the Torwen with them as well, uh, yes, but indeed, then that's, yeah. maybe that's cheating a little bit. Yes, indeed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gosh, what a spectacle to see all these out oh, now. Oh, indeed it is. Looks like the judge has been doing a bit of lining up there. Can, do you think uh, we've got different... Uh... Well, I don't know, to be honest with you. I suppose he's trying to keep him in a uh, in a in uh, an order then so he doesn't go running around him second time, perhaps, <laughs> then, you know. But uh, what a job for him to judge 39 uh, of these. Uh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, goodness gracious, yes. Yes. <laughs> And very, very sweet little lambs, these ewe lambs. They're, oh. they're, they're a hill breed. They, they wouldn't have been born very early in the year. So they're not as powerful as some others, uh, 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 other breeds we've seen. So they still they still look like lambs, don't they? Oh, they are baby lambs. Yes, indeed, they're baby lambs. But as I stated before, now he um, is looking down the front like that, but you know, the, he, he, he hasn't looked right throughout but if he had to tip every single lamb like these on on uh, and inspect that line that goes right throughout then uh, he'd be in for a long time wouldn't yes, he but uh, absolutely oh there we go it's quite interesting there he's just check. checking for horn buds because within the breed uh breed points then uh, the ewes should not have any kind of uh, horn buds uh, showing the, the the males have horns but not the females and uh, as we explained earlier on in the early classes this morning, Gerald, the tor, the badger face, then D being black, but they are a white sheep. So the tor, the, the black, alludes to uh, the stripe uh, that runs from their chin all the way under the belly and at the breeches as well. So it is a bit confusing because Torvi, you think it might be a black sheep, yes, indeed, but is yeah. it actually a white sheep? But yeah. it's, it's it's the yeah. break in the wool uh, that refers to the black. Then very consistent these lambs, aren't they? You know, uh, well, they yes. have to be consistent, obviously. But yes. uh, this, it, it, you know, we 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 see classes of uh, of different animals with a lot of variation and that like these. If you let these go, I'm sure there'd be a lot of cats and they wouldn't recognise their own no, lamb, perhaps, you no. know. <laughs> Because they are very, very similar, aren't they? Uh, yes. And in, in in my opinion, it's it's very good because like it really obviously it makes the judge work very yeah. hard to to achieve his results. But uh, I'm sure he's going to feel a lot of lambs and different types of lambs along the way, and perhaps it'll just come down at the confirmation or the there looks to be a fair bit of meat actually on that on particular some, yeah, lamb. And she, he she looks as if he's to be a bit more mature, yes, doesn't he? He's pulling them forward, so. Uh, She's just got a slightly bigger bag or bigger bucket, perhaps, than uh, <laughs> some of the others, you know. So, oh gosh, there's quite a line up there. It looks no, like he's pulling them word, forward, yes, but indeed, uh, yeah. as, uh, he's he's really earning his uh, yes, he is indeed, his lunch yeah. today, isn't he? Yes, he is. So, even I, I, out of this class of 39, to be brought forward to that light lineup is quite an achievement, isn't Fair it? Dues, yes. There's a lot of lambs going out of there. Uh, yeah. Once glance, and <laughs> he's not waiting for the no, hammer to hang around. No, 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 no. <laughs> Giving no. a lift back in on this yeah. hot weather. But uh, we'll, we'll come back to this class again, I'm sure, uh, just to see uh, how the judge has uh, whittled this class down even further. Right, back to the sheep shearing shed and uh, it's the open wool handling competition. This is heat number four between Robin Charlton, Samantha Allen and Hilary Bond-Harding. Yes, and as we've seen previously, then uh, three young ladies are trying their best to, to impress the judges. The shearers actually then they are, they are shearing two sheep apiece. Then um, they would try and accommodate the girls a little bit because I mean they could blast the wool off and have two piled fleeces up 
and the one could be a lot slower, so it would be just a general glance down the board to see uh, how uh, how my mate is here next door to me, to not to put too much pressure on each individual handler. And obviously, if uh, if the Shearer makes a lot of second cuts and a lot of uh, mess in Shearer and the Sheep, well, then obviously it creates a lot of more work for the wool handler. And the canal are in a breed. Samantha Allen, all Zelan, the wheel and the third one are a tackle. So are a come on. He gives again in on a one of the three girls have individual little handheld boards, as you can see, for the short work and then for the longer work. Then they would have a longer handle on their board to be able to reach to the far end of the far end of the board. Uh, uh, Hilary Bond Harding closest to the camera. Samantha Allen in the middle, and this is uh, Robin Charlton tidying up as she goes. Quite a, quite a lot of mess, uh, actually, isn't she? Then uh, she's doing her best, and obviously, she thinks so. Hopefully, we'll come back and see the final uh, later. Yeah. Don't forget, there is an app available, the official Royal Welsh Society's app. It's uh, available free of charge and you can download it by visiting Google Play or the App Store. Right. Back to the main ring, and uh, it's welcome back, Rachel Thomas. Thanks, Gareth. So we're back now with the Ridden D's, big class. So uh, taking a little bit of time to get through it. And it's uh, 144, which is the Cobb May class. A good entry of 39. And there we see Richard Telford, the ride judge, nearing completion of his ride duties. Just giving a mark to uh, his steward there, Edwin Prosser. And it looks like he's just ridden the last one. So I've given you a bit of background about Richard being an all-round horseman. Nice to see him in his safety helmet. Uh, I think it's quite important these days. Uh, a lot of shows are enforcing the safety helmet rule. And uh, some societies make you judge and I think it's good for a ride judge to wear to wear them it's, uh, it's all too easy to have a very simple accident and after all you only have the one head it's my opinion anyway so there's the D maze so uh, Richard's just ridden the last and his confirmation judge Les Shaw from Stafford uh, looks like he's finished the confirmation section interestingly enough with uh, Les Shaw also uh, an experienced all-round horseman um, he's done it all from pony club competitions eventing uh, cross-country show jumping and hunting so interestingly enough both judges have a good ridden background, which is uh, makes things, in my opinion, a bit easier. I know one time I judged the riddens here and my co-judge um, didn't ride himself and uh, openly admitted that he wasn't really um, into the riding side of it. So, yeah, good to talk, good to discuss with your co-judge then, especially when one of you is more riding-based, as in those days I came off the hunter panel to judge these classes. But today we've got two judges in front of us, both experienced um, all-round horse people and experienced riders. So it'll be interesting to see what result they come up with. Obviously, we haven't seen the whole class unless you're watching it on the live feed, and then you would have seen a lot of the rides that Richard's had. Um, I have to confess that it is different being inside 
the ring to be in standing on the outside. I think Showin's had a lot of poor publicity of late, especially on social media. And I think we all need to be a bit mindful of the damage social media can do. Uh, all societies have social media policies. And I think you have to be careful and, uh, you know, be wary of what you're posting. Um, there are two sides to every story, remember? And, you know, we're here for someone's subjective view on the day. And um, we all pay to be judged by one person or two people in the case today. And uh, we don't all like the same things. It's subjective. And if you judge on your own, you could get one result. If you judge with a different co-judge, a different result, you could then judge the same set of forces with a different co-judge and get a slightly different result. And that's my experience of it anyway. And sometimes horses look to be going well from outside the ring, but they don't actually give you that feel when you ride them yourself. Therefore, I think a ride judge's job is really hard. And um, some people do criticize them, but it's not an easy task. And the feel you get inside that ring on a horse can be different to what people see on the outside. So um, most ride judges are used to riding different types of horses and many different horses, whereas maybe competitors only ride the odd one or two and their perception of what they like is totally different to a judge's. Um, we've got some great ride judges here today and equally great confirmation judges. Rich is a great rider, <laughs> looks to have given them all a nice ride. And we have a result. So it looks like, again, it's the ringside stud from Cardiff. And this time it's uh, Kate's sister, and this is Alex William with ring. Alex Williams with ringside top dollar, bred by um, the stud themselves, by Lenarth, Prince of Wales. So there we are, two sisters there, her sister won the Gelding class, and Alex has now won the May class with homebred animals, which is a great advert for their stud. Top dollar, see the Minda he heavy. Again, we are struggling to see numbers. Yeah, 1428, I thought so. Just for you to know, the second is Nicola Harrison with a Mice Munich and Oil mare. So Alex enjoying her lap of honour there. And we'll see both William's sisters in the Ridden Welsh Championship a little bit later on. Right, from the main ring, we'll head off to the sheep ring. Here's Gerald and Emma. Yes, we're back in the ULAM section, and uh, Mr. Malcolm Ellis, Evan, sorry, has whittled them down to. Still quite a few well, there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to be good in count. No, uh, there's no. a lot of lambs available yet. Yes, indeed. Yes. And uh, fair play to all the exhibitors here today out there in the sunshine. And. Uh, all looking very uh, smart and the sheep all very well turned out. I like that little you who seems to be in second place at the moment. Oh, indeed, and here we go. She's and the sweet. winner is number 4489, Sean Jeffries. Very sweet little you, Lam, isn't she? Very pretty indeed. Second prize there. The Joseph, he swen just on the road here from Bilth Wells. And to, to, you know, to come top out of 39 entries. You know, that's, that's absolutely oh, it's a tremendous, tremendous achievement on his own, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And very good for the breed to see so many out oh, indeed, yes. in the show this year. Well, I can cry the break, my Sean Jeffries. He now put in the iron. Well, my dear, good. The man, tradition can damn it, yeah, it's heavy. See on. Yeah, it's a good word, really. You wish you should go in. Yeah. On the end, he can show your bending. So yeah, just over the moon. 
Oh, bless him. Very pleased with the result. No, I'm just saying that, uh, I mean, was asking, was his plan to sell her or to keep her for breeding? And this one's a keeper, he said. Look out of the this, Abby, you should have won. Did you know all the way to the show you could be thought? Well, look, that he and a pick up breath of heaven. Welcome back to the uh, Royal Welsh Showground. We'll go uh, to the cattle ring, and this time we'll be looking at the beef short-horn cattle. Here's Gerald and Will. Well, there we are, Gerald. Uh, just see in the back of the shot there, the, the beef short-horns coming in for their championship. And, uh, the native breed. Yeah, and one that's uh, gained a lot of popularity, I would say, in the last ten years. Yes, indeed. Uh, Quality of quality of the eating is featured in a lot of our native breed cattle now, and uh, is more talked about and more marketed now than as was of many years ago when the continental beef would grow very quickly. And most commercial hill and commercial circle of farmers, I should say, changed their trends and bought numerous crossing bulls. But to be fair to the short horn, the Welsh blacks, the Aberdeens, and Herefords and that have stuck to, yep. and as you say, their popularity has gained quite a lot. 
Yeah. So it's the bull class that we're looking at, uh, judged by uh, Mr. Barrett, who has come over all the way from Norfolk, and having been to the Norfolk show a few weeks ago, uh, that's, a, that's a big journey, I, I can tell you. It's as far as a far west as to as far east as you can go in the UK, I think. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, fair comment. Um, Especially from you from the bottom of Pembroke. It yeah. is, it is, yeah. it is, yeah. So uh, um, well done to that man for making it over this, uh, this far. But he's, um, he, he's a, he's a well-established uh, judge and uh, has uh, just returned from competing at the Royal Norfolk uh, at the end of June uh, where he took the short horn heifer championship on the reserve in the interbreed so he knows a good short horn animal when he sees one Gerald yes indeed um, born an animal is born on or before the 31st of December 2020 this class so and looking at the size uh, in our shot there of the two bulls Surely a little bit more than 12 months, perhaps a difference in between them two, isn't there? Yeah. It does leave an open window to the bull could be actually seven or eight year old and, uh, and his counterpart by the side might just have only scraped his second birthday, isn't he? Uh, so maturity, we have talked many times about maturity. And well, it, it'll take a very good little one to beat a very good big one, I well, guess. There you go, it? then, there you go. Yeah. Tremendous top line on that the uh, larger bull there, tremendous yeah. and you can see the loin on the top then, it is exceptional good to be fair right, I'll give you first pick this time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'd have a struggle to go past the big bull well there we go Yeah, struggle was very kind of you Gerald but, uh, we are looking at headlined Partners, and the bull's name is Din Syria Horatio. Horatio. Well, has, has Horatio come to the top? The judge looks as if he may well have made his decision. And yep, yeah. that's 2 0 to me then, Gerald, is it? There yeah, you go, 2 0. It's a long old show, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> wouldn't want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> no, but, uh, no, but no. But he no. is a wonderful bull. And I guess yeah. the short on breed has grown. In not only in popularity but in size as well because yes, indeed, we, would, yeah. we wouldn't have seen a short owner that size if we were 20, 30 years ago. No, indeed, you? you wouldn't have. No, no. Well, all breeds of sheep, cattle, and whatever have had to up their game and the genetics of their animals to keep up with the modern markets. And to be fair, they have, you would say, risen to the occasion. And a quick handshake, and I guess they're uh, keen to get back in the shed for a drink of water, aren't they? Yes, they're, uh, indeed, yeah. There he is, Dunsire Horatio. A very square bull, isn't he? Yes, indeed. That's a big bull in any, any standards, isn't it? Uh, we seen the limousine earlier on, taking the limousine supreme championship, which was a large animal, and... Uh, if this is goes on to take the overall short horn championship, then the short horn will have a large animal forward too. We, but we'll have to wait and see. We will wait and see. Well, we're back in the uh, floral art section. And uh, the eyes with Mavanwi Alexander. And she's uh, stewarding here for the first time, I believe. Yes, and a big thank you to all the stewards in the show, really. They, they put in such an awful lot of work, and uh, they'd have been here yesterday while all the floral artists were creating these fabulous exhibits and helping them out. Um, and they really do make things work. Um, not sure what the name. I think of it's the stargazing was the theme. I'm not sure. If ah, I, yes, if I've yes, uh, very much on. looks like it. Uh, it would have been an, a, a modern exhibit. You see some of the uh, arrangements with a lot of uh, flowers and foliage. But these modern or contemporary exhibits, then, uh, very different, using a lot less floral material uh, and a lot more modern in their design as well. Yes, I'm just saying here how choosing the different kind of uh, materials, because 
even the silvery bits, uh, not the little bits, but the bigger ones, that's a, that's a dried allium head that's been sprayed. So it is actually plant material. Right. It was right. a fl flower, yes. Yes. And even though that looks, I would say, like a twig which has been with glitter on. So it is still mostly floral uh, material then. Well, yeah, well, then I have a power with the grammar. He knew you were going well and boise gown. I can boy dot. I just bear mentioning the, the, the standard that's been achieved here, but for somebody who's just starting, then the local shows would be the ideal place to to exhibit your. Oh, uh, absolutely. And even, you know, your young farmers' competitions, they have floral art as well, and they will be competing up here as well for the Wales final. So that's that, those are the places to start and give it a go. So, 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 do we even, um, do we even disco bubble and they will be on an avrail, but ruin and call it lavna? Ever a hot yamak syndic with. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. We'll be leaving the floral art for the time being. But uh, no doubt we will be returning there in the not too distant future. And uh, don't forget as well, if you uh, want to keep up to date with what's going on at the Royal Welsh, well, we're all, all over social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And of course, you can visit our website, s4c.com. Well, we have a lot of people who are living in the world. We have a lot of people who are living in the world. We have a lot of people who are living in the world. We have a lot of the young farmers uh, area. She is uh, vice chairman of the um, competitions. And she's just saying that uh, she's quite busy, but she's uh, obviously enjoying herself here at the show. Yes, yeah, so they're just uh, they're looking at the uh, club exhibit competition. So, as we the room we used to call it in Pembrokeshire, I think every county has a different nickname for this uh, competition, <laughs> and it was always a competition that you wanted to come second in, so that you'd get almost maximum points for your for your YFC club, but you didn't have to bring it all the way up here <laughs> to Bill Wells. <laughs> Because it is quite an, an effort to create these fabulous exhibits. They have to bring all the materials up with them and they would have been set up here, uh, I think, either yes, well, very first thing this, this morning. So this has all happened uh, by YFC members this morning. I think the theme this year is your Welsh water and we can, we can see, obviously, written at the top there, so it kind of gives it away a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we could see the different takes on them, like we've seen tourism there, and obviously we're seeing agriculture here with the uh, the stock water bowl and then your milking machine and and the washing up that hasn't been done. <laughs> Oh, that's, well, Aaron's just uh, touched on what you said earlier on. Um, all the materials are brought up, so it's a bit of a bit of a challenge to put them all together once you've arrived here at the showground. It is, but then for, for for everybody who's competing up here, it is you know it's the best week for them. They they've won at their counties and they get to come up here to the Royal Welsh and if they win, you know it's the Welsh winner then. And and, and there's a real great if you are coming up to the show try and go over to the uh, YFC enclosure. They've got entertainment going on all day and there's always a buzz and some excitement there and uh, it's, it's worth a visit. Oh, here we are. The exhibit that's uh, taken the first prize. Good. <laughs> oh, she's quite modest. Aaron saying it was an excellent piece of work and she said, yes, it's, it's quite good. And I can see that they've got the running water there. It's always uh, a, a bit of a... Uh, if you can get something either moving or fr a bit of movement on your exhibit like that. So there's a bit of technical wizardry going on behind the scenes there somewhere. And touching on a touch of uh, Welsh history there as well, all the, the Welsh rural landscape on the left. And we saw where the water and the tap was with the Liverpool water supply. And, of course, um, what happened in... Uh, to Erin back in the 60s, so they a lot of theme, different themes going on there. 
Eleni Melaledi. Dwi'n bod yn dathlu, ac yn byg bach gormon i'r ddŵr. Ond achos mae yna waith cael y dŵr yma weithio, achos heb ddŵr, dy segon ddim wedi gweithio nhw'n sôl. Na sa? Oedd i ddim yn gweithio mor prawn ddoi o'r gwbl. Ond mae yna'n mesio'n nhw wedi gweithio, dwi'n gweld un wer ffermydd, mae mae'r hamnau. Ia, dan dyn, Aaron's just touching on the fact that these would have been names of of farms that existed in the, the Bala area back in the 60s. There we are. Well, as you can see, it's a very sunny day here in uh, Llanelwedd, and it's, uh, it's getting warmer hour by hour. It was very fresh here this morning, but the temperature has risen during the course of the day. Its uh, temperatures of 34 degrees have been recorded in Wales today. And uh, here in Llanelweth, it's around 30, 31. So there is an amber warning in existence here in Wales. And that uh, will be the case tomorrow as well. Tonight, it's going to be a dry day, a dry evening rather, and... Uh, even at 5 o'clock in the morning, the temperatures will uh, get up to 21 in Cardiff, 19 degrees Celsius here in Llanelwedd. So it uh, might be a very difficult uh, evening to get some sleep. Quite uncomfortable evening ahead. Tomorrow morning, it'll be dry. There'll be plenty of sunshine. But as you can see, towards the, uh, the south-west coast of Wales, a few showers creeping in. And tomorrow afternoon, the temperatures could rise to uh, 36 degrees in uh, Newtown and uh, 32 degrees centigrade, just a, a bit to the south here in Llanelwedd. So the message, and it's an important one, if you are coming here to, the, uh, to visit the showground, then uh, please take care, bring plenty of water, bring some uh, sun cream, a hat, and try and stay in the shade best you can. Well, that's all for the time being. We will be back, of course, but we'll leave you now for the news headlines.
Rhawn da ar ddiwrnod agoriadol y sioi frenhinol yn Llanelwedd, mae'n yr ybydd amber am dywydd eithafol ar draws Cymru. Gyda disgwyl i'r tymheredd godin uwch na 40 grad Celsius mewn rhai ardaloedd yn Lloegr. Mae'r teithwyr rhelffordd hefyd yn cael eu rhybuddio i ddisgwyl oedi dros y dyddiau nesa oherwydd cyfyngiadau cyflymder yn ystod y tywydd poeth. Yn ôl network rail fe allai rhai teithiau yng Nghymru a Lloegr, gymryd ddwy waith yn hirach na'r arfer. Yn y cyfamser, ar faes y sioi fawr, mae arweinwyr amaith yn galw am fwy o gymorth i helpu ffermydd sy'n dioddef o gynnydd sylweddol mewn costau cynhyrchu. Mae Undeb Ymeithwyr Cymru yn honni bod gwledydd yr Undeb Ewropeaidd yn gwneud mwy i helpu ffermwyr nhw. Dyw llywodraeth pryden heb ymateb i gyhuddiad yr Undeb i bod yn ffurfio cytun debyn masnach gwan niweidiol a diwerth ar ôl Brexit. Mae'r ddadl fyw nesa ar gyfer arweinyddiaeth y Ceidwadwyr wedi chanslo ar ôl i'r darlledwr Sky News ddweud bod Rishi Sunak a Liz Truss wedi gwrthod cymryd rhan. Roedd na wrth daro cyson rhwng y ddau ymgeisydd yn ystod y ddadl fyw ar ITV neithiwr dros gynlluniau economaidd a'u perfformiad yn ei swyddi cabinet. Bydd y pump o ymgeiswyr sydd ar ôl yn yr as yn cael eu cytogi i bedwar heno yn y drydydd rownd o bleidleisiau. Mae cwest wedi clywed sut y gwnaeth bachgen yn ei arddegau a syrthiodd mewn i chwarel yn horfain farw o anafiadau niferus i'w ben a'u gorff. Cafodd y gwrandawiad i farwolaeth Myron John Davis oedd yn bymtheg oed i agor a'u o hirio y bor yma. Mae pris ti ar gyfer taledd yng Nghymru bellach wedi codi'n uwch na 240 mil o bynnoedd yn y tro cyntaf erioed. Yn ôl cymdeithas adeiladu'r Principality, mae prisiau blynyddol wedi cynyddu ychydig mwy na 100 ar gyfer taledd yn ystod ail chwarter y flwyddyn eleni. Yn 78 oed, bu farw'r cyn chwaraewr a hyfforddwr rygbi Gary Samuel. Chwaraewr yn safle'r mewnwr dros ysgolion Cymru, cair dydd a ffont y pridd, cyn troi i law at hyfforddi. Treuliodd gyfnod yn iwerddon hefyd yn ardal Balina. Roedd yn gyfranwr cyson ar y cyfryngau fel ail lais a dadan sorwr craff. A dyna'r bulletin am ddau o'r gloch. Sa'r esyll fydd yma gyda penawdau a toc yn saith o'r gloch tan hynny felly. Mae'n fawr i chi.
it gives me huge pleasure to announce that, that the 2022 Royal Welsh Show is officially open. <laughs> Yes, the Royal Welsh is back and the feature county, Clwyd, had to be very patient before hosting the show, but it's here and so are we on S4C until 5 o'clock. Well, what a wonderful sight. Bird's eye view of the showground here in Llanelwedd showing the best of what the agricultural industry has to offer. And uh, the highlight later on this afternoon, around four o'clock, would be uh, the Supreme Individual Championship of the Beef Breeds. That's to come uh, later on. But uh, as it happens, our first port of call is going to be the cattle ring, so let's join Gerald and Will. Yeah, thanks, Gareth. We've been keeping our eye carefully on those uh, cattle classes as the uh, afternoon goes on. And, yeah, we're starting to get a little bit excited for the Beef Championship a, a little bit later on, but a lot of work to be done in the cattle classes before we get to that. And here we are with a short on class. Yes, the bull born on or after the 1st of January 2021. And a good, <clears throat> good strong entry again to be uh, to be judged by a judge over from Norfolk, uh, Sandra Bar Barrett. Yeah, funny now, then the colours of colour scheme has changed slightly in this, and we have a wh white animal in this, and. Uh, and, uh, and just to confuse the commentators, they bring, uh, they bring yeah, these ones okay, in. Yeah, okay, yeah, fair comment, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if... They might get you, but they wouldn't <laughs> get me. Like, <laughs> nah, <you> know. <laughs> that I have no doubt. <laughs> oh. yeah. Now, I don't know if you know, Gerald, but this year's a very special year for the Beef Short on Society. Um, it's 200 years old. The, the herd book is 200 years old. Indeed, fair dues. They've, uh, Wouldn't it be very fitting if the beef short on goes on and does exceptionally well later on? And we've seen a very good animal earlier on, didn't we? Uh, Absolutely. So, yeah. They've had a very, um, they had a very good show up in Yorkshire last week, um, where they were trying to. And I don't know where they managed this. They were trying to have 200 short on animals exhibited at the show, and uh, I noticed. I think quite a few of them have made their way down to Llanelwedd because they, they have very strong classes here this yes, year yeah. as well. So well, uh, Yeah, yeah. As you alluded to before, the breed is getting stronger and uh, year on year it'll probably get stronger in the show ring. But in this particular class then we have seen from one extreme a uh, completely white animal to a completely red animal and then there's a crossbred. This is the Rhone, yeah. This. <laughs> All of them, of course, um, just as just as capable of being shown as as, as short horn animals. The, the colour, perhaps, not so important no, in no. the short horn breed. And when you do cross one of those deep red animals with a white one, this is what you get. It's, uh, well, we'd, you we'd call it a Rhone, wouldn't we? In your dairy world, then, in the uh, dairy short horn, is there such a colour scheme in that, or are they mixed up the same as the beef short horn? Very similar, well, very then. similar indeed. Um, we will witness them tomorrow. We might witness some of them tomorrow. I have no doubt we will. It's um, it's interesting. You picked it up a little earlier that it, it's the eating quality that has become the the point of difference, I guess, for uh, for the short horn. Or it's not much of a point of difference, I guess. When you're 200 years old, people should should know about it by now, I guess. But uh, it's yes. certainly become oh, the more native, highlighted over the last few few years. The native breed, then, is this marbling and it's the quality, the slow maturing beef has uh, played a key factor in the <coughs> both beef and sheep industry just of 
just of late because people are paying good money for meat well they would like to have something of exceptional good quality on their plates and taste factor and a maturity of the beef that they're eating is paid yes job for our judge to decide that mind there now isn't it which well, one would taste the best <laughs> it's a little bit difficult yeah <laughs> But within yourself, then you know with me, I, I, as you alluded to, and then I'd be job for me to decipher that that white bull would be a uh, would be a beef shirt on. It's it's, it's registered in my small brain that the the uh, their own animals are the, are of the significant breed, like or significant colour of the breed. Then you know. Uh, I guess if you. Uh, if you went online and uh, searched for short on, I'm uh, I'm sure that's exactly what, no, well, what you'd would, get, uh, yes. to be honest, Gerald. I but would the, think so, yes. The, 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 deep, the deep red and the white, of course, may be a bit more of an outlier in the in the breed, but nevertheless... No, still quality animals. A registered member of the family, as they say. Quite right. Quite right. 3241, uh, Headland Partners, Headland Rokaku. Showing, showing himself off quite nicely to the judge there. Standing up bright and square there. Great top line on that animal, Gerald. Yes, there is indeed, to be fair, yes. There we are, he's made the decision, and we have a, indeed, a roan animal that has secured first position. Rokaku is the winner. And we will feature him, hopefully, against the big dark red. Mature bull we've seen winning earlier on. So we'll have to come back and see what happens. Don't forget to uh, download the Royal Welsh Shows app. You can access it by going to Google Play or the App Store. And uh, for more information, visit our website, s4c.com slash shoy. Well, the heats in the open wool handling competition continue. This is heat number six, and there's some Welsh interest here. We've uh, a battle between Jane Harkness Bones, Gwenan Paiwai, and Fionn Jones. So, if I'm correct at maths, Gen Gareth, if this is heat six and three every heat, we have 18 competitors in this wool handling competition, so. They've had to find a lot of full wool sheep to be able to give these ladies every chance of securing their title of being Royal Welsh Show wool handling champion. All of them would uh, adhere to the same technique in rolling the fleece from outside in then. As you can see, it's the cut edge of the fleece that is has been shown on the outside. So all the uh, actual uh, rough edge of the wool uh, on the outside of the animal then is on the inside. So, and, and, and there is a technique to that throwing as well, isn't there? I mean, it's they would actually catch the uh, try their best when they take the wool off the off the uh, handlers. There, as you will see now, she will pull it forward to herself, try and catch the back legs tuck it into a ball into a into a body and then launch and pull back on the behind legs in what and looks like one easy movement but oh uh, it's tremendous easy you believe me <laughs> no there's hours and hours of practice gone into that to achieve that so that fleece lands correctly on that full length of the table and then therefore they gently roll it up and then pull it back towards themselves to create the finished product then so it would be judging as well then they'll have a look at the fleece they'll probably pick it up the judge and drop it on the floor and if it broke obviously it would be penalised if it held together when it's been thrown into the press or into the sack then obviously uh, 
They will pass that test. It's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of smalls, as they would say, coming off the fleece. Um, a lot of that, but little bits of that, would be down to the shearer has made them second cuts, as I alluded to before, or just a little bit that the fleece is falling apart now because, as I stated, then uh, these fleeces, there wouldn't be too many sheep left unshorn in, in the British Isles at the moment because they would be shearing from beginning of April to July and that it would be about the length of the season of sheep being shorn in this country. So I did mention it was an, uh, an open wool handling competition. We've got competitors here from New Zealand, and of course, previously we saw one competitor travel from from Chile to take part. Yes, it's a global occupation. Welcome back on this glorious afternoon at the Royal Well Showground in Llanelwedd. We're heading for the main ring, so we'll join Rachel Thomas. 
Thanks, Gareth. And we're back in the hunter section now. So we're now on with the heavyweights. Four catalogued entries. And uh, only two are forward. So uh, I'll try and get the number for you. So heavyweights capable of carrying over 14 stone. Um, Patrick's choice, there, please. Normally, uh, Angela Tucker, as Sophie Curry seen radar, but Kefillin, we see half the deal in a Kefillin, blew in a lot of Irish draft influence in the breeding of the heavyweights these days, and uh, also a lot of these heavyweight hunters do the Irish draft classes or the Irish draft sport horse classes, very popular class, full classes. And I fancy um, a lot of the heavyweights with that Irish draft influence of great temperaments, lovely to ride, um, very manly horses. So just to see the horse welfare, giving that horse a drink, as obviously in these temperatures today, but to be fair, everything is coping, there's plenty of water available, riders don't have to wear jackets, most people are choosing to wear jackets though. Um, and I think probably it actually protects you from the sun, especially with these modern lightweight jackets that you can buy these days. Um, welfare, obviously, a priority here. Um, that horse having a long drink, Jody Soul, your judge there. Um, he, um, coming from a racing background. And obviously, with the racing being off today, um, a lot of that to do with transporting horses in the over 30 degrees temperature as well as the uh, other obvious issues. But keeping these horses hydrated, keeping them cool, they'll be at the stable area to be um, cooled down with hoses. There's an area at the top there where they can be cooled. Uh, to, but to be fair, they're not really exerting themselves to a great degree if you see the horses aren't particularly galloping they're not sweating profusely in my opinion um, so as far as i can see at the minute there doesn't appear to be any welfare issues at all people you know they're their animals they they're taking the best care that they can and obviously riders need to be hydrated as well just checking the shoes there for the best shod horse competition. Uh, this is done over the whole of the hunter section. And during the championship, we'll get a result for that. And uh, we'll have a presentation. So the horse standing at the top of the line currently, the chestnut horse, is uh, Angela Tucker's Patrick's Choice. And that's been ridden by Sophie Curry from uh, Neath. Sophie produces horses from a yard in Neath. Um, Patrick's Choice, formerly shown by Robert Walker, one of the top hunter producers that the country has, and the horse was formerly owned by um, Jill Day, again, um, hailing from Swansea. And Angela's been bought the horse, I believe, by her husband, and he qualified a horse of the year show at three counties in the heavyweights. Now, I can't quite see a number on the other horse, but I am guessing that it's Kay Lewis's Straddy Poldark. Apologies if I've got that wrong, but I'm hoping we'll catch a glimpse of her number. So everyone's back on now, and it looks like they've stayed as they are. Patrick's Choice and Sophie Curry taking the heavyweight ticket there, and we'll see him back in the championship um, in a short time. No uh, recorded breeding on the catalogue, but I'm guessing there's some Irish draft influence in there. So there we are, Angela Tucker's Patrick's Choice, ridden by Sophie Curry. And uh, again, I think it could be Kay Lewis's Stradi Poldark taking the second spot there in the heavyweight hunters. So we'll see them in the championship a little bit later on.
Thanks, Rachel. And uh, he runs down at the forestry area. He's with uh, Oemirion. And having a gentle stroll down the forestry area. And uh, as uh, Aaron was saying, people don't usually uh, realise how important the Forestry Commission and the, the forestry industry, as it were, it's worth here in Wales about £670 million uh, to the economy. It's a very strong industry. And Aaron's talking, you know, there's a lot of talk these days of, of, of planting trees and here in Wales at the moment. And uh, the most important thing, of course, is to uh, work with the farmers. We've got to work hand in hand, as it were. As a, as a country, we import 80% of the wood that we use and in houses and in our gardens and uh, it's got to be sustainable so it's only by working together we, we can uh, succeed in, in that kind of venture Yes, it's, it, it's not a short-term uh, uh, job, it, it, it's it's a long-term job. Yes. Yeah, we're looking forward ahead to 25, maybe 30 years' time before we can uh, benefit from the COP. We've got to look now to make sure that we uh, secure the future of, uh, of the uh, industry. Yeah, stressing once again the importance of not clashing as two different industry um, that we have to uh, work hand in hand. Uh, you're not just asking how many opportunities are there to uh, work within the industry. It's an industry that's uh, is forward thinking. We have uh, machines, as you can see this morning, that uh, people can come and use them uh, on the simulators. They're worth about half a million pounds each, still a lot of money. But these machines are modern. You could be more or less working within, uh, within an, an office space, as it were, within one of these machines, and you could be anywhere in the country. And there's plenty of training programs available to uh, to give people the opportunity to familiarise themselves with uh, how these machines work. Aaron's uh, also uh, referring to the fact that also within this particular location uh, and the showground, the, the axemen are busy at it as well. So there's plenty to see if you were to come down here to the showground. Uh, to visit the show. Right, it's time for us to return to the sheep ring, and here's Gerald and Emma. And we're back in the class that we featured earlier on, and that male championship of the Tor the. It's the consists of the yearling ram, the senior ram, and the ram lamb. The three young men, Sean Jeffries, David Harris and Aaron Hemmings, all competing here at the moment. And, and um, At the moment, it's I don't really know which way it is around, well, actually. I, I was about to say, the, the two older rams are very, very similar, aren't they? I think, yes, indeed they are. Uh, uh, yeah. You'd almost think they were related, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes, indeed, you have to be fair. I think... Uh, the ram lamb is very sweet. Oh, uh, it's David Harris. Yeah. From Tiercher in just in Clandicent there has come on top. Very smart indeed. Very smart. And that ram lamb, nice as he was, he was just not mature enough no, against comment, these two no. older rams today. No, indeed, no. Bit of luck. We'll we'll see him again. And reserve goes to Aaron Hebbins from. 
Llan fynyr? Oh, I'm probably wrong then. It's uh, Sean Jeffries that has taken the... He picked the wrong one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was judging the man. I was you were, you were, you were. But uh, he, 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 yeah. yeah, he was obviously back Wish. in the Ram Lam, wasn't he? I should have known that. That uh, We've seen him taking first prize earlier on in the competition, didn't we? But we well, so that was the little ewe lamb oh, you had in that one, wasn't yes, it? Yes. Had, yes fair, so he's so had a fantastic show then, he? if he's got the Ram Lam and, and this Ram here and the ewe lamb. Yes, quite right. Yeah. A very, very busy man. Congratulations. Welcome back, and uh, we're heading straight for the main ring, and here's Rachel. So uh, we're back now in the hunter section, and now we're on to the championship. So we can see the four-year-old in front of us there, Devanti Boy, with Amy Tuff. The chestnut in front of the grandstand, Patrick's Choice, Sophie Curry, the heavyweight winner. The small winner, Carl Owen, with Ellistown Silver Crest. Hopefully, we'll catch the light in the middle. And there's the lightweight winner, the bay horse, snakes and ladders. 
Zara Owen and the other grey horses, the middleweight winner, Victoria Piper, Cryer Fall, Quicksilver. Um, I always find when people come back in a championship, they often, the pressure's gone, they've won their class and the pressure's off a bit, so I feel they sort of go in more relaxed and often a horse will go better in the championship than it did in this class. And on some occasions you, you're going to have less in the championship, obviously, than you may have had you had a last large class beforehand. So some horses go better then with more room. Um, I judged a class Hoy's qualifier not that long ago where our eventual champion was like it was a lovely horse but when he came in the championship it was it was a better horse again it really grew had more room more room to perform pressure was off and um, he came back in and, and sort of improved again on his class which at that level you'd think is impossible to do but you know, it's not Obviously, they've been in the ring once already, so now they're used to it. And they've settled down a bit more, coming back in under the grandstand. Grandstand should have filled a bit more by now. Um, and obviously, it's getting hotter, which would um, make them sort of a little bit quieter, much as us. But as you can see, none of the horses are sweating profusely. Uh, I mean, this bay horse in front of us here, not turned the hair. So uh, exhibitors know their horses. They know if certain animals will cope with it and certain won't. And now we've gone back to the shearing. <laughs> Um, I don't think we were supposed to go back there, but I'll hand you over to someone who knows more about it than I do. Well, we're in the final of the uh, fleece handling competition. We've got Kate Davis there from Wales, closest to the camera. The three ladies have upped the pace a little bit as we can see the speed in which they are getting around the wall. To be fair, as we featured many, many rounds to arrive at the final of this, whatever the outcome is, will be a tremendous achievement and a good on their CV of these young ladies. And you can hear in the background then the commentary of the of the uh, shearing commentators are up in the up in the game a little bit by getting the crowd involved and making these young ladies go faster. But as I alluded to before, just exactly the same as the shearing, it's not all about speed. It will help a little bit, but uh, it will be the judged on the same stead in as it has been all the way through the qualifying rounds. Even down to the fact that the way that she throws the fleece on the table, you can see the lady judge here. And I do believe because it has extended further than the length of the table that she will be penalised by a small fraction. And you can see the young lady here at the end here is finished and now is cleaning the board. She will then be judged, obviously, on all the wool that is being collected, these small bits and small wool and the buckets of the uh, buckets of the little small wool we see on the side. If there happen to be a little bit of muck in one of the buckets that shouldn't belong, then she will be judged according to that as well. So there we are. She deems that she'd finished. So as we can see, a little bit of wool left on the boards. They will still judge that to a certain degree and we come from there and we'll go back to the cattle ring and off to the Aberdeen Angus as we're going actually Gerald yes, yes indeed and the, I think it's the Angus championship if I'm uh, is that correct uh, if I'm correct yeah so um, yeah. yeah Mr Owen uh, Tunney I think it's Tunney it's T-U-N-N-E-Y if I've uh, pronounced it uh, incorrectly I apologise and oh the He's already made his decision, has he? Before I've introduced the judge. Attorney from Cuddington. 
Let's pull forward the ball, number 3195, which is Glimpton Farms Limited, Glimpton Riley. It was the first into the ring this morning. Glimpton Riley, senior bull. And uh, the cow. The cow is uh, obviously Glimpton Farms Pride Jean T127. So they take the first and the second award here at the Royal Welsh. The, yes, indeed they do. the champion and the reserve champion Angus. So we've seen a senior bull going forward to the overall championship again out of the breed. Well, it's quite interesting. I think if we look back, I would say the females do particularly well in, in, well, yes, in the shows. Well, yes, I did, but, I did uh, we, we, before that uh, females uh, always seem to, but it's the year of the mature males uh, so far. The Aberdeen Angus, another native breed that's grown in popularity over the last few years. Yes, indeed. And size. And indeed size as well. It's a fail of a meat, that bull, isn't he? He is. And now, song of the day, your tail. Obviously, being black is drawing a little bit of the heat, and the bull there is feeling a little bit of pressure of the, of the warm day. Well, we're back with uh, with Aaron Kerry Hoff keeping him company. And uh, I mentioned the axemen earlier on. Well, Single. Let's see how long they take to uh, to achieve the goal here. Crosscut saws. Combination of power and rhythm. And lubrication, I think, as well, <laughs> Gareth. Yes. I thought that came afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Goes far to say there isn't a lot of uh, judging marks on uh, on style or whatever. It's just the speed that he can actually saw that particular piece of wood off. I see my main job at Benig. That's going to be hard work in this weather. You would think so. I'm not sure I'd be that keen, even if I had an engine, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> if it went vroom vroom, you wouldn't be that keen. <laughs> you're, right, you're right, Gerald. <laughs> We're each to our individual sports, and the Welsh Axemen are proud ambassadors of Wales and representing our country. And probably travel most of the world in doing so and apparently according to what I've just picked up off the conversation here there's quite a few over from Europe competing this year as well well done Aaron's uh, just been asking how popular is it and, and just been explaining to him now we there's several clubs around the country and if you want to have a go. You can have a chat with Terry, and uh, he'd give you some uh, some tips. We'll be back there later on, no doubt. Wow, what a fabulous view! Let's uh, head to the main ring then. My Amy Tuff and. Uh, Here's Rachel. Kate Griffiths, Green Hawk Commander, and this is a dustbag. And we've gone back to the Hunter Championship and it's um, taken by the four-year-old. Uh, quite unusual, really, for a four-year-old to take a championship. And at some shows, the four-year-old actually doesn't go back into a championship. Um, but there are, well, they do. And this is Devante Boy. And uh, ridden by Amy Tuff. Uh, but I'm afraid I haven't been able to find out an owner's name. Adam and Ian live a Ben Campuriev Kinta and a Priv Gilch and a Shoy Venhinol and Nui Vila Daibig Dai. The reserve champion, the heavyweight. Uh, 
So Green Hole Commander has taken it, 1501. I think there could be a bit of switching around the numbers there, maybe. So Green Hole Commander, Irish bred horse taking the championship there. Coming up, we'll uh, see another final in the uh, shearing set. And of course, there's plenty to look forward to in the cattle ring. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to head to the sheep ring. So we'll join... Uh, Gerald and uh, Emma. We're back then for the overall championship of the. As you see, Tordi, and we see Sean Jeffries, who we featured earlier on with the Ram, and we see Joseph, Richard Joseph, with the champion you. So smart, you, isn't she? She is very nicely turned out, well balanced. Strong you. 
Very pretty you. He's uh, put himself in quite a difficult position, hasn't he? Yes, <laughs> indeed, two yeah. very nice yes, animals yes, yes, indeed. indeed. We featured this ram all the way through then. And yes. But a very pretty you then would take a lot of beating in this She is, she is. I, I think she's very smart, yeah. I have to say. It's easy enough for us to say, uh, Satya. I've had a competition with Will. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's beaten me 2 0 at the moment, so uh, yeah. Uh, I think we might agree on this one. I, I yeah. think the, the you was the. Uh, I, I tend to agree with you. Uh, smartest. Yeah. Oh. Oh, he's, he's making most of his moment in the ring, isn't he? I hope he doesn't bang the stick on the ground and break it. <laughs> he, keep, he keeps looking at that ram, doesn't he? Oh, he does, yes. Does he th- oh! Ah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the it was. It was. It was. I thought for a moment there though that she was going for the uh, for the ram. Oh, lovely, lovely sheep. Great example of the breed. Has to be the quietest badger face I think I've ever seen. I don't think it's the. I don't think it's the first show that she's ever been no. in now either. No. The Joseph family there, now keen showman. Adani, Taylor Joseph. Well, massive congratulations, Chrissy. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, yeah, over the moon. It's, and she's uh, been a winner before? Yep, she was a winner in the Spring Festival in Biltmore in May, so, yeah. And yeah. you've won the champion year before? And that alluded to before, just on the yeah. Loiney Farm down the road here in Keith uh, Wen. Keen Showman uh, doesn't miss too many shows throughout the year, but this is right. Because uh, they stand so well with you. Yeah, time and patience and knowing the sheep and making them feel comfortable. And uh, making them try and show himself off, and isn't it? So, so. And they're ready for everything then, because it's been yeah, so yeah. hot here today. But yeah. she was prepared. Yeah, she was. She behaved lovely for me. Yeah. What a showman! Well done, you. Congratulations. I was in a beard. Malcolm Evans. Well, Tilly Cal Grace, the driver in Harry. Very much Grace and Driver, and David after Briggs on Sunday with Mass. The uh, judge there, Malcolm Evans, now just saying that. Uh, it's been a tough day for him, but the sheep that have come to the top really did stand out for him. Uh, extremely close competition at the end. But uh, said he'd be happy to take either of them home. Man at the by the Gargal. English language commentary is available on this programme and on our main ring webcast. Depending on your device, either press the red button or use the audio selection option. Any problems, please contact the S4C viewers hotline. The details are on the screen. Well, we're back in the sheep shearing shed. It's the intermediate wool handling final and uh, three of them competing of course after going through the heat stage and uh, as you alluded to the intermediate then uh, this would be staged exactly the same as the shearing themselves then and uh, you go through stages if you win the intermediate you'll be then moved up into the seniors and obviously from the seniors to the open competition so so the uh, standard would be not a lot less, I can assure you. But these young ladies probably haven't been competing as much as they count as their counterparts, which have gone through to the open. And the shearers on the stage, as you can see, they're looking after two shearers each. So, quite a few fleeces to be able to manage. Lauren Morris in the middle. You can see the concentration on her face. Determination. Determination, yes, that's the right word. <laughs> and uh, even as she's folding everything, you know, as, as we know the, with the two shearers, one look over the shoulder to see just if to the other one's finished. The, yeah, just to check that uh, nobody's come out and step on the wool and obviously it's a shearer is the priority and 
keep him going. And the real face of your nod, Sam. The night of job more tactically, like more goes getting as he bosses bosses. Fleer Jones on the far side, and uh, Hannah Mockford closest to the camera as we look now. But that's uh, Lauren Morris once again. I think that's the last fleece for Fleer Jones. But it's not all about speed, though, is it? No, indeed. You can hear in the background the crowd and the commentator is trying to liven the situation, but they have to remain concentration just exactly the same as the Shearers do. Do not get carried away and make major errors. And uh, as you can see, she's quite a bit in front of the girl on the far end. But yeah. Yeah, that's Lauren Morris. Yeah. Shoot it down the portal would be in the best job, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can't be judged down there, can it? No. Well, Lauren Morris is uh, going to be the first one to finish. She's confident that she's finished. Hand up in the air. Well, the determination paid off for her. Fleer Jones is still tidying up. And Hannah Mockford. Hand up a second. Hope we come and, back uh, later and see the end of the results and hopefully, hopefully. we'll see the winners are. Well, Chris, I'm already having no luck on even in Engel. Well, there's plenty going on in the uh, sheep shearing sheds, but. Uh, Looks a bit more calm in the cattle ring, Jill. Yes, a little bit more sedate. But, uh, the competition just as intense. Uh, they're just uh, just hiding it a little better, I think, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Of course, we've got uh, various breeds in the ring currently, but one of the ones we'll be wanting to focus in on, I guess, will be the beef short on. She's in short at the moment. The judge, Miss Andrew Barrett, has been working studiously. See in the background there the long um, Highland cattle, they're quite a strong. Class, it looks in the background, but we are featuring, like you say, the. This is the female class, sure Gerald, yeah. yeah. In milk uh, or in calf and born before the 31st December 2019. A fleshy red cow with a calf there. Yeah. Been walked around. <laughs> Pardon? Do you speak Welsh? No. No, Tim and Shara come I'll let you know where you're from. Pardon? Where are you from? England. Whereabouts? In Essex. And who's going to win this class? Class. Which one's your favourite? Um, Probably the roan cow with the roan calf. Beautiful cow, isn't she? Yeah. Beautiful cow. Very strong class. Enjoy the Royal Welsh. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Right, well, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of well, there they are, Gerald. Uh, parading with some pace, I would say, considering the nice red coat. The temperature, yeah. Very nice red coat. Good. Good cow, and uh, look, she has a, a drop of milk on her as well, and exactly I think she's feeding that. that calf well. I think the judge has just listened to me too. I'm going to back this one. It's going to be 2 1 at the end of this class you're, now. You're, you're due a win now, Gerald. Oh, yes, you're due a win. It's 2 1 at the end of this class. Castle Mount Matrix Strawberry is the one that's taken Gerald's eye and he's pulled him in top of the class so far. A judge down from Norfolk, or across, I should say, from Norfolk, not down. Mr. Barrett of Southwoodton and Swinor. And as we mentioned a little earlier, 200 years old, the short horn breed this year. Very interesting to see the um, the breed books and that, all that, and the ancient uh, 
breeding and how much has come right through and, um, over the generations, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, my grandfather showed, showed uh, short horn cows here at the Royal Welsh. Um, well, maybe not on this particular site, but at the Royal Welsh. <laughs> Many, many years ago, dairy short horns, of course, so uh, yeah, yeah. It's certainly the predominant breed of its day. And most of them cows of that then would have had horns, I presume, wouldn't they? They weren't they horned in them days, would they? They'd no, be, you're right. You're right. But, uh, well, up against uh, your favourite strawberry is uh, Baird Edwards and Timbro Maple Gems Charlesbury. Peony Duchess. And that's the one currently in second place. But judges having a really good look at them. But just pushing the top of the top line there. What is he doing there, Judge? Just just looking I, to see how firm. Really, I'm not too sure to be honest with you. There was uh, see how firm she was over the well, back. No, he actually like as if he uh, highlighted that there was something slightly wrong or something with with her top line, but uh, maybe the young man on the outskirts, the little English boy, alluded to the fact that the the uh, Roan Heifer was going to win. Perhaps he's going to pip me to the post yet. He's teasing you now, Gerald, isn't he? He's teasing you now. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt he is. Yeah, no doubt he is. A nice, fleshy, well-made cow, that red cow, isn't she? She is indeed, yeah. Mm. Oh, it looks like as if uh, you're back I in the gained a bit of uh, momentum now. You're back in the game, Gerald. Uh, you're no back doubt, in the game. Yeah, Picked yeah, that no one out doubt. from the first minute that you saw her. So there we have it. Castle Mount Matrix Strawberry, owned by Evans and Price. So she will be featured against that big red strong bull we've seen for the championship. Can she go further in the show? That's the question. Can she add the cream to the strawberry, isn't well, it? I never know. Time will tell. Oh, Yorkshire, Am I Dali Thirwin in? Would you any shy of a street heavy? Am I Mimlan or E Benkam Puriath? A bit of God now, but I've been a taro. Bit heavy now, so we thought Pressy Bess Thirwin in our body and any female can turn out. I bet you had a Savilk man, I bet you are Johnny, if he see the Maggie, he never. Phil Pimpoy do it. You've been asking a few questions of the owners and finding out the history of the animal and where she's been and what she's won and where she's come from. But you're quite right, you. Yeah. Very, very good confirmation, good yeah. confirmation cow for a, uh, a short on. Anyway, we'll have to wait and come back and see if she does any good in the overall championship. We will indeed, Gerald.
And Welcome back on this the first afternoon of this year's Royal Welsh Show. We're heading straight for the main ring and uh, we'll join Rachel Thomas. So we've moved on now to the Ridden Cobb class. Um, obviously, for those of you familiar, these would normally have a ride judge, but it looks like they're out doing a show, so I can only assume that um, our ride judge, Alwyn Fradley, has possibly been struck down by COVID as he didn't do the Hunters. And... Um, so Jody Soul stepped in, but possibly Jody isn't on the cobbed panel. Uh, obviously, it's quite difficult to find ride judges these days, and not everyone is on the same panel. And this is an affiliated class to the British Show Horse Association. So uh, we have got judging confirmation section. Mr. Terry Sharmas from Colchester in Essex. Uh, Terry, very um, knowledgeable horseman, involved, heavily involved in racing and involved with thoroughbred sales. So just assessing them, do a show. Uh, he was a ride judge and I think injury has prevented him from carrying on, so more than capable of judging them from the floor. And I'm sure the competitors may be appreciated in the heat. So not something that some of them maybe were used to. I'm not really sure if they've had um, notification that they're not going to have a ride judge today. So we've had the first one out in front of you. So Amy Tuff now from Pembrokeshire doing her show. Now... And usually in the Royal Welsh, it's just a ridden cob class. Now, there are three sections in the cobs, lightweights, heavyweights and maxis. Now, your lightweights are under 15, one or 155 centimetres in the new money. And obviously your lightweight, less bone and your heavyweight, obviously a lot more bone will carry more, bo more weight. And then your maxis are anything really that's over 15, one. Maxis are a relatively new class. Um, lots of these have Irish draft influence and therefore they often go over height. So they're a mixture of horses in your lights, heavies and maxis. So hopefully we'll come back when this class reaches its conclusion. Well, we join uh, Nia in the handicraft section and she's joined by uh, Shinos Roberts who uh, has been one of the judges and uh, the theme for this particular section was discovery and they, that picture caused some confusion initially but they came to the conclusion that that bull had actually discovered the person who was taking the picture. Initially, they couldn't work out why it belonged in that particular section, but they came to that conclusion uh, in the end. Right, every part of that swan in this origami section has been folded and then put together. That is a, it's incredible, isn't it? Uh, Absolute, absolutely amazing. And the thing is with the, the Royal Welsh Handicrafts, uh, they change their classes every year, which really does keep things fresh. Uh, they're always bringing in new crafts as well. It's not just sort of knitting and crochet. Uh, it is something like the origami, which does make it uh, interesting. Dinosaur. I'm going to go back to the creative. 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 I'm going to go back to the
Wyrddiawn. Wyrddiawn. Achos y... Brogao. Brogao. Oh, this is a frog yeah. of any medium. Right. So we've got lots of different frogs. <laughs> <laughs> and a great variety of different crafts, which is interesting as well, but also quite hard for the judge, isn't it? Because how do you, uh, you know, judge a knitted frog against a painted frog, isn't it? This, although this is an, an embroidery item uh, I, with uh, fabrics and uh, stitching as well, which is uh, beautifully done as well. Yeah, and you're just referring to the fact that with that background as well, there's a, there's a certain depth to it as well. Yes, yes. But it's... Uh, Simon Meredith, who's won first prize in this particular category. <laughs> <laughs> a family of uh, three frogs there. Very different indeed. And they're off to the Royal Welsh Show, I, uh, by the look of it. They've got their uh, badges on. Yes. But it's the old uh, papier mache that's been used to create that. Yeah, she she is just referring to the fact that uh, it's been quite a high standard in the handicraft uh, section. It, it usually is, and but sometimes a certain class will capture the imagination, and you get a lot of entries. And uh, it certainly seems true with the with the frogs. Oh, it's a fabulous view of the showground from up above. And it's uh, back to the cattle ring we go and rejoin Gerald and uh, Will. Now then, we got a breed that have travelled a long way. Well, if it's uh, Highland cattle, if it's a if it's a warm day here, I tell you, it's a warm day for these cattle, isn't it? Uh, yes, Hi indeed, it is. Yes, uh, Highland cattle, are very uh, distinctive cattle, I guess, with their long-haired coats well, and uh, their their long horns. We see we have five heifers in this particular class, and a little bit of different colour coding, and the judge has made his decision before we have a. Have a look ourselves to cast our professional eye mm. over him. And our judge, a fully paid up member of a Scottish agricultural fraternity down from Argyll, it's Ian Mackay. Presenting uh, to number 3290, which is Seamfold Highlands. Synag Dub of Seam. Now then. They are very, very grand names. Now, I'm not sure I've said that right, Graham. <laughs> uh, and I certainly apologise to any listeners who, who are listening in to the commentary uh, up in Scotland if I've got it wrong. But well, I'm certainly uh, not going to try and correct you anyway. No. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, interesting to see then there's two black females and a grey female and two red females. And I did not realise, I thought there was black. Highlands, but I didn't realise that there was another colour other than red and black. But uh, in fact, there's only one real rich red Highland heifer there. But anyway, we featured that first class. Let's hope we come back and see how they get on in the, against their other counterparts. Well, from the cattle ring, we'll return to the main ring and rejoin Rachel Thomas. So we're back with the uh, ridden cobs. And we've got Terry Charm as the judge pulling them forward. Um, as we explained earlier, Terry Charm is judging this on his own. Um, no ride judge 
there's been a bit of chopping and changing around. Yeah, Terry Chalmers has judged all over the world, heavily involved with racing, owns several racehorses of his own. And um, funnily enough, his first pony was actually a Welsh section A, bought at the Land and Brothers sales, so he has got some uh, Welsh connections. So standing top of the Cobb class here, mixed Cobb class, this is including the weights and the maxis, is Mr Malcolm Dixon from uh, Caffili. And this horse is called Rooster Coburn. Uh, owned and ridden by Malcolm Dixon. And I can just see Amy Jane's in second place there with um, V Norbury's Cryer Fall Autumn Star. Possibly another one with some Irish draft influence. I believe the winner is of unknown breeding. Um, and this one today, ridden by Amy Tuff, I think normally would have been ridden by Zara Owen. She's possibly gone down for another class in the horse ring, but uh, I'm just guessing there. And in third place, I know that's Emma Edwards there. Just trying to find the name. Colour Me Blue. Emma Edwards from... Uh, Bridgend. Uh, so there's the winner there, Malcolm Dixon from Gaffili with Rooster Coburn, ridden cob winner. A Penderfyniad, Wyn Morris, a Mr. Terry Chalmers, and Plisha a Gynllid of a Hivid. Well, here's Aaron once again. He's still in the forest. He, uh, section. He's with Geraint Davis in uh, the stick-making section and he's uh, been a very busy man. And he's also been judging here as well during the course of the day. And we can see the red cards and the blue cards. And Geraint's just saying he's uh, he's been competing in the past, but this year he's uh, taken the respons responsibility of judging. He also teaches uh, since 2005 and uh, has been doing it ever since. He attended uh, the Grai campus in Llanelli. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this is the best of the best. And of course, there are different classes for different types of sticks as well. There's different types of horns as well, uh, Gareth, and yep. in terms of buffalo to sheep horn to cattle horns to everything, and uh, a lot of the black stick that we see as a champion. I'm not saying it is, but it could well be buffalo horn, and uh, they, they just give this distinct black right throughout, and then we get a lot of Jacob sheep and the supply horns, we'll have the black and white right throughout, and... Uh, not deemed what that particular stick is, but it's probably a, a shepherd's crook in a sense. But I'm saying it's a can be classed as a walking stick or a, or a, a company stick or the exceptional good quality. But it's the, it's the grain in the in the in the uh, stem that he's looking at. That would be a hazel stick. That would be, and it is called probably the trout. They call it a trout stick because of uh, of the colouring that is right throughout yes, it. And yes. I do cut a few sticks myself for uh, an elderly gentleman who lives not too far from ourselves, and he goes mad on that trout. And he's, he's very protective. Like, once I've cut the stick, I'm not allowed to abuse it in any form or fashion to break the bark and that. So. Well, that's a different type of stick, obviously, with a, a difference than the holly. It's, it's the holly uh, with, with the... Um, with the ram's horn on, I would think that yes. would be, and then obviously the carving and the 
Marquis. The other end, well, that would be basically uh, that isn't a shepherd's crook, is it? It's an ornamental stick because yes, you'd yeah, yeah. be gutted if you broke. Yeah, you broke would, after all the work that's I would involved. when I'm competing in dogs, I'd be swiping and swinging and uh, it wouldn't last. But uh, balance is a lot to do with it as well in terms of uh, Sierra on there lifting the stick up and down. I'm not too sure on where they say, but if it's very top heavy, they wouldn't like it. So there's a lot to consider, like. Yeah. yeah, you're on trying to strike a bargain, asking how much they'd cost, and the in fairness to Geraint, and he says, well, I can't tell you because they're not mine. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, well worth a visit if you come into the showground. <laughs> He's not going to get away with that. <laughs> Welcome back to the Royal Welsh Showground. We'll be with you for the next hour and a half or so. So let's uh, go over straight away to the cattle ring and join Gerald and Will. Yeah, great class of young female short horns for our judge, uh, Miss Andrew Bar Barrett, to uh, 
to cast his eyes over here, Gerald, and uh, a really, really strong class again, isn't it? I, I don't know where these short ones are coming from, but... Uh, well, the 200 is gaining fast now, look. I think you're right. I think most of them, most of them came from Yorkshire to Bilth Wells. Yeah. But, uh, but to be fair, this is an exceptional good class of quality, Havers, isn't it? No, the judge, in my opinion, will earn his stripes. Very, very nice efforts. High Sky Erin's Enchantment is the animal that we're looking at. Millie Hendy is the lady in charge. These heifers are born on or after the 1st of January 2021. So some of them could be in that 18 to 19 months old. They're very consistent size in this class too, isn't they? Yeah, yeah. Our favourite colour is at the top end at the moment. Judge is uh, busily working his way around. There's a slight breeze in the ring there, I guess, is uh, it's a little helpful, but... Uh, you see the tree in the background is blowing a little bit? It is, yeah. It just keeps the air moving a little. Yeah. Checking the firmness of each animal. Are we swapping? Ah, yes. Now then... A lot of movement going on there at the moment. Jeez. Jeez. Don't see too much of that in the Royal Welsh, actually. Most of the judges are of their opinion, and once they've selected their... They, we don't see a great deal of chopping and changing, but uh, to well, be I, fair... Well, I guess well, when you see them walking around, Gerald, yes, you yes. might make one opinion, but when yes. you actually handle them, of course, yes. one might be a little softer, one a little firmer. Yes, quite right. Stand a little bit better and Maybe not the, stand quite so good. If they've been well-groomed, sometimes you can hide the odd fault that the judge quite finds right. a little later on in the in the process. So, uh, he's well entitled to, to move them up as far or as down as far as he... Quite right. So desires. Quite right. So high sky in enchantment sitting at the top of the class at the moment. And I would say uh, there's a fairly good chance of staying there. Have the judges walked past a few times? It doesn't seem to be too concerned about the one at the head of the class. Well, yeah. The eyes of the concentration there, wasn't it, eh? Indeed. You could almost see the cogs inside his head moving. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. And, and again, yeah. Again. yeah. yeah. Well, I think I'd be quite confident if I was at the top end. I'm going to back that one myself. It's going to be 2-0 now or 2 all now it's going to be in a minute. I think you'll find I got to that one first this oh, time, Gerald. No, yes, no. yes. Uh, <laughs> you can share it with me. Oh, there it's you that go, time then. of the day. <laughs> we'll call that one a draw then, so Gerald. We'll call that one a draw, shall we? The judge calls for the red rosette. And indeed, it is Millie Hendy with High Sky Erin's Enchantment that takes this heifer class. Well done, Millie. A superbly turned out animal. We look forward to seeing that one a little later on. Well, we've seen plenty of excitement in the sheep shearing shed and uh, things are getting a bit more excited here as well because this is the one of the semi-finals of the Welsh Open Wool Handling. We just expect the speed to up slightly again and... Uh, these three ladies will be vying to get into the final. And to qualify for the Welsh Open uh, competition, 
They must have competed in a minimum of five out of the seven qualifying competitions with the, uh, the top five results counting. And of course, the, uh, the eventual winner will qualify to represent Wales at the 2023 Golden Shears World Championships. So there's quite a bit at stake. Yes, indeed. Uh, Golden Shears is in New Zealand in the bottom of the South Island. It's called Martin. Go there, you'll see excitement. It's quite fever pitching in mid Wales here, but if you get under the Golden Shears in Masterton there, it is very, very feverish and exciting. Yeah, and, the, and the lady in the second pen wasn't happy with something, not quite quite sure exactly what it was, but uh, she's lost a bit of time there. Quite interesting to see the lines on the board. Can you see on the board there? See the line that every bit is one side of the line is your smalls and one on the other line is is your opponent. This lady here appears to be uh, rolling this fleece quite a bit tighter than uh, a lot of her fellow competitors. Roll it tight, the more you get in the sack. Quite a significant difference in time with the lady up on stand one anyway. She is competing well, her task very quickly yeah, in comparison she, to the other. She looks as if she'd be the first to finish, but... Uh, well, as I alluded to before, it's not all down to that. No, exactly. But, uh, that will be stage one completed. Obviously, the three of them will be hoping that they might get through to the final, but uh, only the judges will know, and it'll be our scores will be added or deducted, whichever way you would want to address it. And but there will be a significant time difference between that first lady finishing and the third place lady here. Yeah. Sarah Rees who's in the middle. It looks as if she's going to finish. Yes, indeed. Second. Second. Right then, back we go to the uh, main ring, and here's Rachel once again. So we're back now in the uh, ridden section D, and we're on class 146, which is the ridden stallion class. So 30 entries in this. And we've got our judges, Les Shaw and Richard Telford. So They've had the initial pull in, and uh, Richard's off to get his hat. Um, I think these days, fashion, no one seems to mind these days. And everyone wears their safety hats, often even if the show or society doesn't require it which personally I think is a good thing after having a horse fall with me whilst ride judging. Um, you can have a simple accident at home and it only takes one simple accident. There's about 19 there out of the 30 forward. Um, some competitors obviously decided to stay away due to the heat, uh, but you know your horse. You can see plenty of buckets of water. They'll be cooled down in the stables. Um, riders don't have to wear jackets. Um, but obviously, you do need your arms covered from a safety point of view. 
Um, personally, I haven't seen anything excessively blowing from what we've seen on the monitors, and they will have been kept in the shade uh, before their class. They'd have been given a minimal amount of working in due to the heat, and uh, nothing, uh, everything looks in fine form. One thing we can't control is the British weather. And I'm afraid each individual competitor will have made a decision on whether or not to come and show. Some horses will stick it, some won't. Um, I mean, there are horses eventing this weekend and doing all sorts of other competitions. The best you can do is give them shade and plenty of water and keep them out in this for as minimum as possible. I know Richard Telford won't hang around in his judging. He will be as quick and efficient as is possible so as not to unduly keep the horses out any longer than they need to. As I say, he seems to be getting nice rides. Um, nothing seems to be struggling in the heat. So... You know, this happens once in a blue moon and possibly something we're going to have to get used to in years to come. Um, I know they regularly have shows in this heat in Australia, but obviously they're more conditioned to it and used to it, whereas we're not. Uh, I think maybe the media do like to make rather a song and dance about things and uh, I think sometimes they seem to scare manga people and I think so far everything looks like it's going okay I certainly remember coming to the Royal Welsh many years ago in extreme heat and uh, one year when I judged the D's I remember that it was horrendously hot um, I mean doing ride judging in the heat you'd hope I'd lose weight sadly it doesn't work that way so we'll come back with the result a bit later on well, don't forget, we're all over social media. If you need any information from this year's Royal Welsh on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And uh, it might be worth visiting our website as well, s4c.com. Right, from the main ring, let's head over straight away to the cattle ring and rejoin Gerald and Will. Yes, we're in the... Before short on class again, and we featured these quite a lot. Yeah, what have we got here? We've got a championship here now. Andrew Barrett. Well, I'm a little bit bemused, uh, <laughs> Will. Uh, I thought that the senior bull. Dark Bull won the championship, male championship, but it looks as if I've been proved wrong. Does that put me ahead of you or behind you? Well, no, I'm not, know, I'm not 100% sure. sure. No. I, think, I think maybe they've gone through the male and the female championships already and we're, we're down to... But yeah, you're right. I think you're, you are right. Never mind, never mind. Maybe he can't make it. So then the, the uh, second reserve has come forward then. Benin will your taru. But anyway, we have two fine animals and two roan animals that are representing the breed. Two younger animals now. And in the background then, the runners up in their prospective classes are in the wings waiting to come forward. To compete after the... Winner is male or female? Headland Rokaku. Ro I, I can't even say it anymore. The heat's getting to me as well, I think, Gerald. <laughs> Headland Rokaku is the bull. And of course, we. We just saw this heifer winning the female class, winning the, the heifer class. There we go. And it's the heifer that takes it. Championship. Millie Hendy, High Sky Erin's Enchantment. 
And that's uh, a popular win here at the Rollwell Show. Yes, indeed. And just in case you were wondering, it says in the catalogue, Gerald, that it's for sale as well. If you've got an iron for an animal to take home. Yes, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> I haven't got room in my truck on the way back. No. Uh, no. And that's great to see, isn't it? The, yes, uh, indeed. Uh, camaraderie amongst the competitors. And it's one we shared as well, isn't it? Uh, if I'm memory serves me correct. You're right. Well, there's my cow, though. Oh, she's, I, uh. So she's coming in now. So she must have stood reserve in the female section. I'm having a good look here now. I would think that she might take it as well, reserve perhaps. I'm not sure what he's judging there, giving a scratch on the head or just saying thanks for coming. Consolation, yeah, yeah. Could well be. Uh, when you come all the way from Norfolk, oh, you want to make sure go. you get it right, and he there has. Go, yeah. you, you've called it again, Gerald. Yeah, yeah, She's a very nice cow, in my opinion. She is. So both the females, champion and reserve champion. Well, it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting few hours watching those short ones coming through, and yes, uh, we'll indeed. see how they get on. Against the other breeds as the week progresses. Ice Sky Erin's enchantment. Short horn champion on the 200th year of the of the uh, beef short horn breed. That will go down in history, won't it? And uh, be remembered. Short horn champion winner of our show. Well, well, well. That'll do a, a, a good promotion for them, won't it? It will indeed. Mae'r het i ffwrdd a dyna chi'n sydd i gweithio yn hynod y galed yn ystod y dydd. Richard Telford yn beirniadu'r marchogaeth gyda'r cobie cymreig. So we've got the winner of the stallion class there, class 146. And it is David Gardner stallion, Cavill Bali, by Trevelyan Picasso, out of Screwfow Cherry. And it's ridden by Lily Burridge. So I think she's had two wins today, so good show for her so far. Uh, can't quite get the number on the second, I'm afraid. So there we go. There's your ridden stallion winner, David Gardner, Caffil Barley. Having a gallop under the stand. We'll come back later for the overall Welsh.
Angolia. Welcome back to the uh, showground in San Elwe. Then what is the hottest day of the year? No doubt here in Wales. We'll go quickly to the sheep ring and we'll join Gerald and Emma. Back to a breed that we haven't featured at all today so far in the Black Welsh Mountain. And, uh, little ram lambs. Yes, uh, similar to the uh, badger face that we featured earlier on, they do come under the umbrella of the uh, Welsh Mountain breed and a very popular breed in the show ring here. We usually feature quite a few of these in the winter fair, don't we? In the, uh, yes, they in have the done. Lamb they, they've done very well, haven't yes. they? They're an attractive little animal and with meat in the right places and a native breed and... And I think as well, they're quite a sort of good entry-level breed to get into showing. You see a lot of younger exhibitors with, with these uh, with these sheep. And uh, they've certainly grown in numbers um, with 20 entries in this class in the, uh, in the catalogue. Looks like the judge has done a little bit of... Uh, Whittling down already. The judges, Mr. Stephen Forsyth, the barn, Kevin Vedu, Sini Bridge. So we whittled it down to six ram lambs in this uh, uh, class today. And, uh, some strong lambs taking to the head of this class at the moment. Certainly have gone for a little bit more maturity uh, and strength uh, among this class, although these being ram lambs will, of course, been born this year. Yes, indeed, they'll be. A lot of people that keep the Black Welsh also keep keep uh, the Tarthys and the Tarwens. It's a... Uh, and a lot of these competitors, when they will be coming to the show, I'm quite confident to say that they'll have a few tall these, they'll have a few tall wens, and they'll have some blacks, uh, Welsh blacks, so or black Welsh, I should say. So. And there we have the winner there, number four, two, two, three. Uh, Mr. E. O. Williams. Four two two one in second place is Mr. D. Rowlands. Wow! Congratulations. Great, thank you very much. Aren't you fed up of winning all these red prizes? Oh, you never get fed up of a red one at the Royal Well. Why then? What's so special about it? It is the place. It is the place. There's no doubt about it. We rated this lamb at home, but now he's proved it. So. And that proof will help then when you sell him at sales and, and... Well, we bought his father last year. We've had a good run with his father. And now he's proved he can, he can throw the goods as well. So that'll definitely help, yeah. The father's definitely a keeper then. He's a keeper, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. definitely. Fantastic. Lovely to see Brilliant. you. Thank you very much. Take Thanks care. Thanks a lot. Ciao. Right, let's uh, leave the sheep ring and uh, return to the main ring and rejoin Rachel Thomas. Thanks, Gareth. So this is the Ridden Cobb Championship now. Coming back into the ring and uh, top side is finished, so they've given them a little bit more ring. So we've got uh, the two horses from the ringside stud. We've got ringside Zorba. The Geldin, ringside top dollar, the mayor, Caval Barley, the stallion. And uh, some of the seconds, I believe, have come back in. Yeah. I'm not sure if they've all come back in. So we've got uh, Les Shaw and Richard Telford, who must be absolutely boiling in this weather. Um, I know that uh, it isn't fun in there in the heat. I don't think it was quite as hot when I did it and I was young then. Not as easy when you're older. 
Divrunog Castle. Apologies if I've pronounced that incorrectly. Former Hoys winner. Just trotted under the grandstand. Ground looks nice. I know that they've watered. So hopefully they've got good ground conditions. Uh, one, uh, I think that's possibly the gelding that's boiling up there in the corner. Yeah, I think that's the gelding. That's didn't quite settle in that corner but looks to have settled now so ringside stud have got two homebreds in there a uh, great day for them uh, and actually both the gelding and the mare from the ringside stud look similar types to me um, so obviously now the championship should always be judged as a separate class and it's not a foregone conclusion that the winner of each class will become champion. Obviously, we all know things can go wrong and a second can come up. Or you could take the first and second from one of your classes as opposed to winners. Um, I think, you know, years ago, possibly people didn't judge it as a separate class, but certainly these days it's judged as a separate class. On uh, myself, I've managed to win a championship from a second or another horse beating me in one class and I won another class. And obviously, as a judge, I've also done the same where we fetched a second up because possibly the winners haven't performed as well in the championship. Gives riders incentive to ride, not just go in and think it's a foregone conclusion. So customary gallop now. Under the grandstand. I think there's probably quite a lot of people hiding in the grandstand today. Not as many up on the bank as is usual. Not surprising in these temperatures. So I'm hoping that we will actually get a result for you and uh, we don't cut elsewhere. So there's the stallion Caval Bali coming along. Oh, sorry, we've cut away now. No. I think we'll just get a glance of the stallion coming under the grandstand. Yeah, Richard Telford. And Les Shaw, I'm thinking they would be of similar mindsets, both being experienced in all equestrian ridden spheres. And I'm afraid, I don't think we're going to get the result. I think we're going to cut elsewhere, but hopefully we'll come back later on. Yes, we will be back, hopefully, for a result. In the meantime, let's join Nian, who's uh, still in the arts and crafts and the home craft section. She's with Manon Skirm. And uh, we did catch a glimpse earlier on of the, uh, the swan, <clears throat> which was an item of origami. Um, and uh, Manon is responsible for making that swan. And he was asking, how do you go about doing something like that? Is it easy? All you have to do is fold the papers. Well, I don't think it's quite as easy as that. And uh, uh, Manon is explaining that uh, about, well, a while ago, she was in hospital for a period of four months after some bleeding on the brain, and uh, her daughter brought her some paper and they ended up folding the paper and that's how basically she got into the origami initially and uh, by the time she'd left Rookwood in Cardiff there were an awful lot of swans uh, on the on the window but um, um, this particular swan is to thank all the key workers for all their hard work prior to during the pandemic and post-pandemic as well 
She obviously appreciates the hard work that they've done. And, uh, yeah, it, it, basically, yeah, it's the classical um, swan. Looks elegant, of course, on the water. But underneath, um, it's paddling as fast as it can. So, and Manan was just explaining that prior to her accident, she was... Uh, a doctor in the community herself. Um, yeah. And she's just saying, I'm, st I'm still here. She's also been uh, competing in several other competitions. Um, she had to retire after leaving uh, the hospital for more than one reason. So she's... Uh, um, taking up uh, handicraft as a as a hobby, she's been knitting more. She's been doing more origami, and because she has to look down when she's uh, uh, when she's walking, just to make sure that that her, her feet are working properly, she started collecting glass off the beaches. It uh, obviously helps the environment, and uh, she uses the glass then to create. Uh, different things herself. And as Nia is saying, I'm so, so glad that we had a chance to have a chat, especially to have the uh, the story behind the uh, the origami swan. Man at a website says Snagargal. English language commentary is available on this program and on our main ring webcast. Depending on your device, either press the red button or use the audio selection option. Any problems, please contact the S4C viewers hotline. The details are on the screen. Well, the last time we were in the main ring, we felt perhaps that a decision was imminent. Let's see. Let's rejoin Rachel. So, as promised, we've come back to give you the result of the Ridden D Championship. Just... Uh, I think they're lining them up into class order. So they've got the first and second from each of the three classes in front of us. Mammoth task here for today for Les Shaw, but luckily he is in a light suit. So hopefully he's not too warm. And Richard Telford. Richard Telford being used to um, riding lots of different types of horses, obviously, every day. Um, worked with horses all his life, so I'm sure it's no... Mean feat to him, but uh, in this heat, something that we're not used to. So it looks like we've got a result, and the champion is the mayor. Ringside top dollar. So this is Alex Williams from the ringside stud down in St. Melons near Cardiff. So two in the championship, but they've taken champion. Yep. Uh, homebred horse there. Oh, kiss for the judge. And there we are, the reserve has come forward. The stallion has taken the reserve. That's David Gardner's Cavill Barley. So both cobs owned and based in Wales. So uh, nice to see the champion and reserve stay in within the in the Principality. Yeah. And again, these, you know, these horses have been in oh, this morning and the mare actually looks particularly fresh. Doesn't look phased by the heat at all. So good to see um, that the work that goes on behind the scenes is paying off. So there we go. Ridden D, <coughs> ringside top dollar, and Alex Williams from St. Melons near Cardiff takes the Ridden D championship. Nice to see a day for the females. Ladies ruling the day in the main ring, 2022 Royal Welsh Show.
Angolia. Welcome back. And we're heading straight for the sheep ring. And we'll join Gerald and Emma. Thank you very much, Gareth. Yes, we've got a change of breed now again. Uh, still with the native breed of Britain, uh, but we've come a little bit down from the hills uh, and down to the Suffolk sheep then. So uh, a very different uh, type of sheep then. Uh, called, we'll call them lowland or a terminal sire breed then. They are bred for meat and uh, a Suffolk uh, sheep then very prolific uh, throughout the UK flock then um, and uh, we're joining the ram lambs then so these would have been born in 2022 believe it or not because they're a tremendous size already and really do power over the uh, the hill breeds that we saw earlier on today so these are Tremendously well grown animals indeed. Hard to believe that they're just still babies. And good to see good numbers out in this class. Um, they have fallen in numbers that shows over the years, possibly to your Charolais and Texels then, but uh, we have seen them come to the fore in the interbreed competitions many times in the Royal Welsh here, Gerald. Oh, yes, here. Yeah. I call this a fact a classic show sheep, isn't it? It's got length, strength, bone, yeah. you know, everything. It is an attractive animal, and with this... With the dye that they put on and the dip I was that they about put on to say, said, no. it's the first time we've seen the fake tan out at the show this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the sheep, anyway. In the sheep, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but to be fair, then, the Suffolk has been up against it because this was the dominant terminal sire Absolutely. of crossbred lambs in this particular country. But the introduction of the continental breeds mm. has knocked the numbers of, of uh, Suffolk rams being produced for, for meat now greatly, but... Is a stalwart or a, say, die-hard people have kept with their breed and they suit certain parts of the country. Herefordshire then is probably as strong in Suffolk as any county which is only just down the road. Like so. and, and, and you go to any commercial breeding ewe sale, you'll see a lot of black-faced crossbred ewes. So the, you know, the, the Suffolk has, still has its place in... Uh, the the UK commercial flocks. Yes, it? indeed it has. Oh. I do believe I do believe that um, it has become a little bit stronger because there is this sort of uh, mindset in a lot of people that the uh, Suffolk crossbred you will last outlast yes, the yes, continent yes, across you. So yes. <laughs> therefore, we've got these Suffolk cross mules and we've got Suffolk cross speckle. The black faced you is, is a very popular very popular yeah. cross. Yeah, and and so Suffolk Cross Chiviet U was very popular. That nice brown speckly face they used yeah. to produce. So, but and I think personally then the Suffolk, there is obviously there's plenty of room in the world for every breed, but Suffolk, I think, will, won't diminish any more. In fact, it might just get a little I bit stronger. So. Well, good to see the uh, ram lambs then having a run around the ring here. And important as well, because they're such a heavy, strong breed, it's important to see them walking freely like this so that they, they have got correct locomotion oh, as yes, well, it isn't is. it? It's so easy for these breeds to be pushed too much and they, they lose that uh, ability to... To walk to, correctly. Well, well, yes, to put it bluntly, yes. yes. And then they won't last and you, no. you don't want to be breeding that into your animals. No. And we see our judge has travelled a long way, uh, Mr. William Fleming, Harley <laughs> Hill, Cross Ford, Carl Luke, Lanarkshire. But these are strong sheep, mind, aren't they? Very, very length. Look at the length oh, of them and, and, and the bone. Un un unbelievable, isn't yeah. it? Unbelievable. Yeah. But, uh, it's a good quality class of sheep, isn't it? Uh, yeah, especially now he's made his selection of uh, six here. Um, they are really quite similar, really, yeah, in size right. and stature and making... Uh, Making the most of the warm weather here at the Royal Welsh Show. <laughs> I tell you, nothing. Love Island's got nothing on uh, the sheep ring here. Moving swiftly on. Uh, we join Aaron with uh, Gary Davis. And. Uh, who, uh, well, owns J. Davis and Son. He's, uh, he is the third generation uh, in the business. His sons, Oshel and Evan, have 
part of the business as well. So they would be the fourth generation when they grow up. But it's a company that was established 75 years ago and have been uh, coming to the Royal Welsh for the last 35 years. These particular models here are special dollars, special editions rather. The original colour being uh, grey. Well, Aaron's just asking how, how did the business start? Well, the business started with Jack Davis, Gary's grandfather, and he was uh, he went to went to buy uh, machines at the uh, at uh, auctions and brought them to West Wales to sell, and that was. Uh, 75 years, and uh, Jack was followed by uh, Gary's father, and only uh, selling machines to do with pasture. And then, all right, yeah, yeah. Since then, Gary has taken over, and uh, Aaron's just referring to the two sons as well. And Aaron's saying, well, uh, selling anything to any farmers uh, can't be easy, but uh, you've already had some success today. And uh, Aaron's just referring to the fact that uh, Gary's father passed away a month ago, and uh, in memory of his father, that's uh, why this particular tractor is being exhibited on the stand during uh, the Royal Welsh. And uh, it's also there to celebrate the fact that uh, the business has been going for uh, 75 years. Right, we're back in the sheep shearing shed and it's uh, we're back in the open wool handling competition the second semi-final three young ladies that are desperate to get through to the final later on but only three out of the semi-final will go through well, from what I understand, we have a, a Welsh lady, an English lady, and a New Zealand lady competing against each other here. So, uh, an international flavour once again. And you could just see as she's tying everything up there, a quick glance to see if the next fleece was ready. <laughs> An international flavour, as you said, that's the norm in the shearing world. And the Welshmen are travelling to New Zealand to shear, and throughout the winter period, because it will be summer out there, and then some New Zealanders are travelling to this country to shear in our summer because it's winter out over there. So uh, you can earn a lucrative living as long as your body can take it. And, uh, you believe me, your body gets to the point when it can't quite take it. I and, can imagine. Uh, uh, so but make the most of it, and when you're young and fit and strong. Fantastic way to see the big wide world, isn't it? Yes, it is indeed. I was very fortunate myself. I was spent two years there, and uh, a fantastic country, and met some lovely people. And but you have to work, and uh, and then obviously if you're willing to work and learn then probably New Zealand is the place to learn to shear. And I'm quite proud to say is that's where I learned to shear correctly then. And there's a, quite a lure of young farmers that leave home for the first time and go to the southern islands. And uh, realistically, you do learn when you're on a stay-out shed, as they call, and uh, out away from, from the life staying in quarters on these massive stations with thousands and thousands of sheep and you live, breathe and eat sheep then for days and days and days and uh, but then if you're willing to work the reward is there and as I say to learn and if you have aspirations of of uh, doing well on this particular competition like uh, young ladies in the, in the world or whether you're a shearer yourself then instead you're in good stead because you will learn correctly because wool is a was a major commodity and uh, which New Zealand produced, so they had to have their wool shown correctly, presented correctly, and sold correctly. So, um, whereas perhaps in this country it's only a 
um, small, well, being very, very small percentage of of the income of of sheep farmers in this country. We are assured this year that maybe we will receive a bit more bonus, but um, it hasn't been a great. Whereas New Zealand probably wool was at one stage uh, more valuable than the, the animals that it came off, then, and uh, hence they kept them breeds of of uh, fine wooled animals and cut in a very, very long staple of wool. So there we are, the first lady is completed. And the second lady is completed, and this time it is a very close semi-final. Hopefully we'll come back later and see the final. With any luck. Well, now we turn our attention to the cattle ring and the Supreme Individual Championship Thank beef you. breeds. The animal that I would take home is the Charolais. Oh, my God, you have a cemento. Three breeds. Well, three breeds have dominated this championship for quite a while. But the continental breeds haven't always had things their own way. Well, this is the highlight of all the competitions on the opening day of the Royal Welsh, the Supreme Individual Championship of the Beef Breeds. So let's join Gerald and Will. Well, this is the moment then, Gerald. This is when we really find out uh, who's, who's on the money today. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a hot and it's been a, a very exciting day's judging in the cattle ring. Um, we've watched a lot of quality animals go through, but uh, this is the moment. Which one of these breeds is going to take the interbreed championship here at the Royal Welsh? Yes, well, unfortunately for ourselves and uh, for us to give our opinion, we haven't featured every breed that's been, but like I do agree with you, and the animals that we have seen have been of an exceptional high standard. And obviously, everyone that is walking around the outskirts of this ring is representing their respective breed and, uh, and that they will be hoping that they will carry the banner forward for their breed for future bragging rights then. So, and uh, I'm pretty sure most of them by, by, by now in the day will be quite happy if, the, if it doesn't take too long to, 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 to come to a decision. And the, and the lady who does in fact have uh, the task of splitting these breeds is, of course, uh, Mrs. Rachel Wiley of uh, Morton in Marsh in Gloucestershire. And uh, she's no stranger to the Royal Well Show. And as judging most of the major shows, not just cattle but sheep and pigs as well. So she's uh, she's well used to pressure, b being the yeah, pressure. Used, used to being uh, used to the pressure and used to being the decision maker. She's judged all sections of the pigs at the Royal Well Show, um, and in the cattle she's judged the m &S beef breeder and the heifer interbreed and young handlers. So she's been working her way up to, uh, to the big job, and the big job here today is to pick out the interbreed champion at the Royal Welsh Show, and that is some sight. All the breeds represented in the cattle ring. An interesting scenario when we started this morning, Will, when we were alluding to the fact that uh, we thought that it was going to be a male-dominated so we've seen a few of the senior bulls coming through, but there's a lot of females on parade here and the younger bulls as well. So uh, she's got a wide selection to choose from. Yeah, the Welsh Blacks, of course, uh, as they traditionally do, leading, leading the cattle. We seen around this, the ring. We've seen this cow this morning. We did indeed. With calf at foot. Karen Olwyn, the 22nd. Owned and exhibited by the Jenkins family, Taylor Jenkins. 
Sori, i chi'n rhywun sydd wedi symud gyda'r amser, dros y blynyddoedd yn dwa wedi gorffod gyda. Ac mae peth ydy newid lot. Quite a lot of different uh, characteristics, obviously, you know, obviously they're all beef animals, but of confirmation and, uh, and uh, the way that a lot of these animals will walk. So, as you stated, and she's got a lot of points to look for in each individual animal, and obviously they don't look... A lot of the animals then would not no would even look like one another, would they? So you hardly have anything to compare to, uh, because every animal and every breed has got to be judged on its own on its own right. So, uh, but every exhibitor has come through and is representing their their particular breed, and they are the best in the show of their breed. So every single one of them will have high hopes. And of course, globally, this uh, breed in front of us now is one of the most popular, the, the Hereford, and easily recognisable by, uh, by its white head, known as whiteies sometimes throughout the world. I've called them called baldies before now as well, and no offence uh, meant in general at all. But, uh, <laughs> but here, here in Wales, they're definitely Herefords. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Here in Wales, they're definitely Herefords. Probably the most recognisable of them all, isn't it? With a white belly, white head, and... Yeah. Uh, large white, yeah. our middle white, exactly. uh, and he did. Uh, my partner, a few years ago, a few years ago, we seen the head of it dominate, didn't we, with that tremendous bull at that time, wasn't it? Uh, did indeed. Porton House Lilac Wine the First. He represents the Herefords, and now, of course, moving on to the first, the Continental Breeds, the Charolais. Big stretchy heifer there. Yes, very big indeed. Of course, uh, I'd say the Charolais probably one of the biggest breeds here in terms of the size and stature of the animal. They are designed to grow. When the first shallery bulls come into this country and put near every commercial suckle a cow man was buying a shallery bull because of, of the offspring sold off suckle calves at 8, 10 months old were gaining more weight and size and making more money than, than say, the rival Herefords and Aberdeens and what, but uh, the trends change and we alluded to the beef short horn have become a very popular breed now in recent times but here today it uh, doesn't count for nothing realistically because we have the best of every breed in the show in front of the lady judge here and she will not be interested in stats or nothing like that she will be judging what she thinks is the best animal on show well Dooley Paradise is the name of the animal that has been shown by Charlotte Bowden and that one Moves off, representing the Charolais breed. It's, it's like the Eurovision Song Contest, I feel, coming around through here. The different countries and different regions of Europe being uh, being represented. I hope you don't break into song, that's all I can say. <laughs> here we have the blonde Aquitaine. Powerful cow. She is indeed. She is a very powerful cow, Gerald. Yes, indeed, she is. We'll have to come back in a while. Brownhill Netta.
Welcome back to San Elwedd, and what a glorious day it's been here at the Royal Welsh Show. We're going to be with you for, for half an hour. We're off the air at five o'clock, and uh, we're in the middle, of course, of the Supreme Individual Championship beef breed, so let's return immediately to the cattle ring and hear from Gerald and Will. Uh, excitement building nicely now, Gerald, as the, uh, the big guns are coming in. It's the limousine breed. The limousine breed is, I wouldn't say it's dominated it, but it's uh, featured quite highly in, in many years. And of course, this limousine bull, we, we had the pleasure of seeing early on this morning, the uh, upper Freud Tower. And Tower is what this bull is all about. Yes, indeed, to be fair. We took a real fancy to him this morning. And of course, I guess um, animals can change, really, in, in, in the way they look from first thing in the morning to, to the afternoon, in a, on a day like today. I may be so, but I don't think these uh, stockmen would allow that to happen. They would uh, ensure that he's at his best to come out here to represent this breed now. And as you probably will say, there's not a hair in his body out of place. And he's walking very, very correctly for a big, large unit. I'm sure he will feature somewhere up amongst it. There's the limousine. We should be seeing the Simmental coming into shot. Yes, we have. So another continental breed, another European cousin that's uh, now well established here in, in Wales. Younger heifer this time. <laughs> She's a suntan Hereford, perhaps, is it? <laughs> or unsuntan Hereford, is it? I'm sure yeah. if you went back far enough, there'd be some similarity in the genetics. But, Somewhere uh, along the way. Don't try and tell anybody no. from those breed societies that. <laughs> That's what no, I indeed. would say. They... No, indeed, no. Indeed. It's funny that, they, well, it's not funny, actually. They obviously deserve to be there, but there is several young uh, maiden heifers of their breed society have come through to the Supreme Final. And this particular one, Gwilly Melody II. Very attractive, nice little heifer, isn't it? Won the young heifer class this morning. And uh, very correct. Yes, indeed. Here we go. Solway. The British Blues. Yeah. Solway. Correct me. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, um, sorry, I can't remember her individual title, but I do believe she's a Solway cow. Uh, Solway View Keisha. There we go. Oh, powerful cow. Very, very powerful coat. Read and exhibited by Kevin Watrett. Yeah, he had a good run in the Blues, I think, didn't he? He's, uh, yeah, Kevin Watrett to Melville Watrett. Did you say earlier on that this cow had been successful last week? I think you're right. I think we did. It was a judge, Rachel Wiley, having a knowledgeable eye across all of them but you're quite right Gerald isn't it you have to know the finer points of all the breeds right. when you're the interbreed judge it's, quite not, right. uh, it's not just expertise in your own breed but you, you really do need to know well we'll be back in the uh, cattle ring very shortly in the meantime let's go quickly to the sheep ring and here's uh, Gerald and Emma oh, we're back in the Suffolk Bam Lam class yes looks like he's been busy and pulled up a short list of six and he's uh, handing out the cards now with the uh, winner there number 6233 uh, John and Linos Griffiths and, uh, they are both the breeder and the exhibitor. And then 
a wedyn os wnawn ni edrych lawr yn rhestr yn ail, mae da ni Oliver Sparks o Gair Gwanaf uchaf Llantrys. Do you believe John Griffiths is a lecturer in Getley Ayer, I believe? Yes, I think you're right there, yes, and... Uh, Tremendous, well-grown ram lamb with him in first place. And a and a my and, uh, it's quite warm for the mount on the in the uh, show ring there today, so very, very well done to them. Well, can but uh, Mr. John and, uh, Griffiths and Jenged, no, Nigel. Mania's just going to have a quick chat with. Uh, yeah, he's very proud of his achievement. addictive cannabis, He was just saying that showing is more addictive than cannabis. So... <laughs> And he's just uh, saying that uh, he, um, this uh, Ramlam caught his eye from the start. Uh, and uh, his intention then is that uh, he will be sold and off to find some new ladies of his own. I'm sure of help. I'm I'm sure of help. I was just saying that uh, winning here at the Royal Welsh Show is uh, uh, such a privilege for them as a family and also help to uh, sell the um, at a later date. Well, right, let's get back to the cattle ring. Things are hotting up. Here's Gerald and Will again. We are going through the... Breeds individually, one by one, and this is Rachel Wiley will, as Will alluded, cast a professional eye over every animal. And I think we're about not too far off going around, and every animal will have been watched, walking and assessed underhand, so she will have probably, in her mind, have two or three animals that she would probably like to put together or four or five animals to put together out in the front so she can maybe compare a little bit more. She's still working through the numbers. Yes, I think, Gerald, she's here with the short ones. Yes. Yeah. We watched uh, the short one championship uh, not that long ago. Our cameraman certainly likes the Welsh back anyway. I, I think you're right. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of nationalistic bias ah, there. Oh, no, yeah. oh, no. Anyway, yeah, we've, we've featured this heifer many times. And we have yeah. heard that she is a nice quality animal, whether uh, she is Mrs. Wiley's choice or not, we will find out. But. Uh, very, very nice animal. I said it earlier and I'm going to say it again. It is, it is absolutely months and weeks of, and days of preparation in this show, isn't it? And it, It's just really to show your animal off for just a few minutes to the judge. That's really all you get, isn't it? And uh, well, Who can make the most of it? Well, that's fair comment. Having said that, you know, they've made it through their individual breeds, which is a, which is a tremendous achievement, but they, everybody would have an aspiration of going that one step further, wouldn't they? And, uh, you know, as I say, to get out in the final lineup in the Raw World Show is a, an outstanding achievement, but uh, they would all be hoping to go that big step further, I should say, not the little step further. We have the Highland. Do you see the strength of the class of the Highland cattle, which we've seen down here? It'll be very interesting to see what strength they would be in their homeland up in the north of Scotland, wouldn't it? It would indeed. Lottie Seventh of Moskane. Do you know what? I love the way that these Highland cattle are named, isn't it? They, they, they sound so majestic and they, <laughs> they look they look the part as well, yes, don't they? Be eh? Yes, indeed. Annie Perkins steering the Highland exhibit around the ring. You wouldn't want to turn your back, would you? <laughs> You're quite right. 
it gets a bit warm, you've got somewhere to hang your coat, though, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> yeah, fair oh, um, in, yeah. Man, yeah. Man, uh, with you, but the last my problem. I believe it's the Salais. They're coming through next. First time that we have featured this then in the show. This is a strong, powerful cow. Indeed. Well made up. Bertie Fucken. Umbrella is the name of the cow. This is a breed uh, as a terminal dam then that has taken a great bit of strength out because they are easy care animals and uh, can be outwintered on some systems and a little bit harder perhaps than her continental sisters and uh, a lot of people say that you can put any terminal side you, you want on this particular cow and she will produce you a good commercial calf. Um, a very naturally fleshing cow, as we can see, she looks the part, to be fair. Indeed, it isn't, uh, it isn't an easy job, is it, is it no. splitting these? And uh, here come the Lincoln Reds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slightly smaller animal, but uh, nevertheless, uh, very correct. And the Lincoln Red caused us a few problems. Uh, was it a couple of years ago when she came? She did indeed. She came to the top, and uh, we were all looking at ourselves and thinking, well, it was such a minority breed here in the show. We didn't really know what was going on, but uh, they've announced, them, announced their arrival with, with tremendous presence and done very, very well. Well, the best, didn't they, on that particular show? And, uh, indeed. Jan Hilleider, shown today by Eichenhall Farms, representing the Lincoln Red breed. So they've all had their first examination. So it's up to Mrs. Wiley now to... What's taking her eye? Oh, she's striding across the ring with some purpose there, Gerald. Uh, yes, indeed. I don't think she's a, a lady who's going to uh, procrastinate for too long. Little smile. They led the rest of the cattle around the ring here on their home ground. So who's the defending champion? The cemental, are they? It's a long time since that competition, yeah, well, actually, I have is, to yes, say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've caught me out there, Gerald. Yeah, that's easy, that is. <laughs> well, can you weld? I think you might be right. Pick your first three, then. See how close we are.
Welcome back. And without further ado, straight back to the cattle ring. Here's Gerald and Will. Yeah, no time to lose, Gareth. Uh, she's getting the job done and uh, pulling forward her first pick of first pick of animals. And, uh, this is where you really got to start concentrating, Gerald, to work out. Uh, <laughs> so we which have is which? Blonde, Chalere, Limousine, South Devon. Short horn. Uh, beef short horn. Arsalers. Um, Arsalers. Yes, the Salers. Oh, the Lincoln Red is at the bottom end, isn't she? I think you're right. She is. You're right. Leaving behind the Hereford Cemental, Belgian Blue, Longhorn, Highland, and Park White. Well done, sir. So I believe now then, we'll narrow it down, we'll go... Limousine is probably up amongst it, but... Uh, Rachel Wiley, see that dusk. It's a good, strong Charlie Heffer as well. And South Devon. There's a lorry load of meat in that South Devon, isn't it? Well, one of the later animals that we watched parading around the ring. red. So now the next the next uh, stage of course is for her to have a second pick I guess and, and I pull forward. So, yes indeed. Big animals in terms of the limousine, blonde and chalery, aren't they? Very big powerful animals, so it's very difficult to look past them. Yes, uh, indeed, yes. Literally it's very difficult to look past them, isn't it? But, uh, um, for somebody like yourself. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> It's only Monday, Gerald. Oh, yeah, indeed, it's, it's only Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, a good look at that Lincoln Red. She's. Uh, yeah. I thought when yeah. when it paraded past, she sort of dismissed it quite quickly. But obviously, did, it had uh, taken, uh, it taken her eye and. Yes, uh, she's uh, she's quite decisive. There's, uh, Indeed. Oops, it's the blonde and the limousine that's going forward. And the short horn. So, we're down to the last and three. Lincoln Red, four. Last four, sorry, yes. yes. Two little efforts on the far end and they... And she's uh, she's grabbing the microphone. She uh, she's going to give us her adjudication, I think. And we'll uh, we'll find out what she has to say very shortly. And uh, so, where's your money at the moment, Gerald? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest with you, Will. I, uh, there's something of myself pulling towards the short horn and uh, Lincoln Red are two very sweet, nice heifers, or whether she will go down that particular end or whether she will go for the powerhouses or the, the blonde cow is a big cow. Big. The limousine will be probably my uh, choice. Here we have to listen to what the judge has to say. Actually, invited me to judge this prestigious award. Whoever wins it, um, it's a very hard job. And um, when you've got all these champions of all the breed, which are all really good specimens of the breeds, 
the people on the back line needn't worry, there isn't anything wrong. I'm judging today, not tomorrow or yesterday. So don't worry about it. I'm judging it in this terrible heat, I know. And I do understand how you cattle feel in this weather. And I will tap out my champion now. Well, Dynani, a bit of the Rachel Wiley. Well, short and sweet, she alluded to the fact that the weather is uh, making sure that... Uh, Decision time. Making sure that she's going to pick shortly. She's going down past the blonde, heading towards the limousin, having a good look at the back end of the limousin. One more look at the short horn. And now the Lincoln Red. One more walk, maybe across the front. Looking for just the smallest of faults that can allow one animal to be placed above the other. You can almost feel the anticipation in the crowd. All the power is in this lady's hands at the moment. <laughs> Indeed, right? yes. She goes around. And I think that's it. It's the blonde. The blonde, the blonde co. Brown Hill Netta. Thor Atkinson Steel Fabrications will be a very, very happy company tonight. They will indeed. And I do believe she's pulled a short on in second. Well, that's good news. We've followed those short horns all the way through yes, today. Have. And yes, uh, indeed, uh, you yeah. said it's a sweet little heifer. And to think it's the 200th birthday of the breed as well. That's a tremendous accolade here at the Royal Welsh Show. But uh, let's not take it away from the blonde. Bred by TM and J Hope. Brownhill Netta is the 2022 beef champion here at the Royal Welsh Show. A team will put ice in the teeth. You're a lawyer. Thor, can I grab you for a quick chat? What a, what a, what a feat! Yes, the auction last week. Well, straight down here to the Welsh, well, Welsh. Some fantastic animals here today. Absolutely brilliant animals. But yeah, we've done it. Not many people can do the double and can say they've done the double in the Yorkshire and the Welsh. It's teamwork. Stephen. He's right to be Helen, his dad, Barney, my son Frank. Everything. Frank, how do you feel, mate? Um, I'm brilliant. Brilliant feeling? Yeah. Emotional? No. Are you, are you emotional? Oh, yeah. 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 Stephen, I've got to pull you in. I've got to pull you in, mate. Uh, you've had a tough day. You've been showing various cattle for people, but, you know, what a cow. What can I say? Emotional day? Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. What's so special about this one? Oh, just the character of the heifer or the cow herself and the calf going forward. She just she just says a show cow. You know, and, and just the bond we have with the cow, Frank, the calf, just, yeah, everything. everything. Well, you're, you're a top team, there's no doubt about it. There'll be some celebrating in the cattle lines tonight. Yeah, whenever you get two cattle and an interbreed uh, and then get pulled the champion, like, it's just something else, isn't it? And I, I don't want to mention it, but um, I think your dad's got the bragging rights over you now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we don't need to go into that. <laughs> you were with a bull, Barney with a cow. Yes. Hey, team effort, Thank well you. done. Thank Thank you. You. Thank you. Well, well, after the excitement in the cattle ring, we're going to head over to the sheep ring before leaving you at five o'clock. So uh, let's uh, rejoin Gerald and Emma. So back in the uh, sheep ring with uh, yet another breed for today, uh, Gerald. We've got the Balwens there. Yes, indeed. Uh, first time we featured these throughout the show and I, and I do believe from what I can hear that the um, contributor it's her uncle that's one and it's me and his brother that's in second so there's a little bit of uh, fun in the ring for them 
We've seen a wide selection of breeds here today, Gerald. Yes, indeed. And uh, it's just the start of it, and uh, looking forward to seeing many more sheep here tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Funny enough, we should finish on the smallest breed in the show yes, today. Yes. And we'll feature some very large continental sheep, I'm sure, tomorrow. Yep. Absolutely. I think I think he's had enough now. He said, <laughs> "Come on." Yeah. Let, time's let, time. Let, time's let's time. get back in. Let's yeah. get back in. Fantastic. Talking of breed characteristics, then they're supposed to have four white feet, all below the knee joint, and over half a white tail, and the blaze is not supposed to be broken all the way between his ears right down to the point of his nose. I do know a little bit about Balvin. <laughs> we did keep a few at one time, but uh, they they like fences too much for my like, and yeah, my farm say, isn't fence good enough. So they, they look look very sweet, but uh, uh, wicked is the word. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. word for them. That's the polite word. <laughs> Yeah. And the exhibitor here, then, Mr. Jones, just saying how wonderful it is to be back at the show, to see people that he hasn't seen possibly for three years. And uh, I think that's the uh, best thing about being back here, not, not just winning the rosettes, but taking part and uh, seeing people. And he's saying just exactly the same as uh, you, Gerald, about how uh, mischievous they can be. Yeah, yes, indeed. I'm going to draw you out, I'm fucking well on a car, and I think well and ball when and just clearly on a high, and you're going to fun when, but I'm not. So, maybe I'm just saying that you often see the white blaze or the tail, and he said quite often you just see it going over the hill as well. Thank you very much, Gerald and Emma. Well, after winning at the Yorkshire, the blonde Brownhill netter came here to the Royal Welsh and won the uh, individual championship in the beef breeds. Fantastic achievement and it's been a fantastic opening day here at the Royal Welsh in Llanwell where it's been a challenging day on many levels. It's been a, a very hot day and of course tomorrow afternoon we will look forward uh, to the uh, team of five in the uh, the beef section as well and uh, just a reminder if you are coming here to visit the Royal Welsh Showground tomorrow then make sure you bring uh, plenty of water plenty of sun cream and uh, please take care because uh, we're expecting another hot day here at Llanelwedd Gerald and Emma quickly before we, uh, we leave Great to be back, and uh, what a day. <laughs> Exceptional, to be fair, then. We've witnessed some quality animals all day long, and an outstanding cow comes through at the end. So I'm personally looking forward to seeing some outstanding sheep again tomorrow, which will come through. Hopefully yes. the best sheep. Yeah, absolutely. Just fantastic to be back, just to see all the competing and all the different animals. Just a, such a pleasure. It's been brilliant. Well, picking more winners than Gerald today has been the highlight of my career, not just the highlight of the day, Gareth, but uh, what tremendous livestock we've seen all day. See if you can pick a few more tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Goodbye.